The dwarves stopped making adamantine artifact maces and started making pale metal maces. <laughs> I'm so sorry that you're not getting like, like silver <coughs> or platinum or something. All right, so for the VOD watchers chat room, can I get a high YouTube? And high VODs, or just say high VOD watchers, I don't know. This is mostly for me so that I know where to split the VOD. And to do more Caves of Cud in the future. I have a really hard time streaming Caves of Cud. Um, because if I do anything even remotely story related after like the first two dungeons, people just stop watching on Twitch altogether. Like I will literally do better on any other game. Because people are just like, I don't want to see story spoilers. It has like the RPG problem. So I don't really know how to make content for Cud because I don't particularly enjoy just sandboxing it. I like doing story, like the plotline playthroughs. Um, when it hits 1.0, I will make tutorials though, at least for the first few dungeons. I, it's not, it's never going to be as extensive as Dwarf Fortress because frankly, the audience isn't there. Um, unless it gets there, which I doubt it will be. But like to give you an idea, um, if I upload a tutorial for Dwarf Fortress with the exception of like the getting started guides I did for um, uh, Caves of Cud, like that, that part one video did quite well. I got like, I think 40,000 views or something. So I will definitely do like a, how to beat Red Rock, how to beat this dungeon, probably all the way up to Bethesda Susa is probably what I'll do. It's just like, how do you, how to beat this dungeon, how to beat this dungeon, how to beat that dungeon, how to beat that dungeon, how to build one or two, maybe three different types of characters and then pff, fucking call it. Cause, um, if I make a tutorial for Caves of Cod and I made a few over the years, um, since like over the last year since the popularity of Dwarf Fortress took off and my channel got a lot bigger, it gets about 10% of the views of an average Dwarf Fortress upload. So if I were to, if I make a Dwarf Fortress tutorial that gets 5,000 views over six months, if I make the same kind of content for Caves of Cud, it gets 10 to 25% of that traffic. And it's kind of painful. So it's, you know, here's the thing. Ma manic mannequin node if you follow the channel you can do this you can still burr even if you can't beer so I need to um I need to name uh buddy I think uh eek the real angry snail thank you very much for the third month welcome back good to have you one of these emotes is not like the other you can burr. Yeah, you can, it, also the beer and beers emojis both work. Um, hobo beer also works, which is literally a picture of my friend Hobo holding a beer. <laughs> um, a lot, the word beer works. Various different languages for the word beer works. Like, if we're just talking about, like, the repeating beers. Um, and also, you know, there's, I, I think, like... Co Carnage's beer. There, there's a bunch of other people's beer emotes work. Like, I want to say Quill 18 has like a mug emote that works. Finnish doesn't work. Finnish is a fake language that doesn't exist that was made up uh, because somebody wanted land rights or ocean fishing rights. Was it Japan's fishing rights? What's the fucking Finland doesn't exist conspiracy theory that's dumb? Anyway, birds aren't real. So, um, let's just read the dwarves that are alive and then I'll name that dwarf that I owe. Um, a devilish potato amethyst, uh, a a Antroarch, uh, Arendi, uh, Ashitol, and a silver falcon, Beforian, um, Big Bang A1, and Bonesaw, as well as Celestaris, Dominoc, and Iquisitippo, and, uh, Fallout Rain, and Federico Casper, and Gertha, as well as Clockworks, Lil Jaeger, Lyagushka, Napalm Sideburns, and Knickers, as well as Orange, and Are You Serious, Raging Cave, Stingray, and Telen Artho, True Freak, Ultra, Wet Pet, and Walnut and Zwari. It's based on Sweden, Sweden and Fish, Finland having less than 1% of the global population or a statistical outlier. Are you also in Finland? <laughs> Jeez, how many people here are from Finland? I, I, I didn't realize I had so many people from Finland watching me. But, no, F F Finland's lovely. I would actually love to visit Finland. There's a lot of places I would like to go in Finland. A lot of places I would like to go hiking in Finland, specifically. Oh, you're in Sweden. Oh, okay. Uh, Raging Cave, thank you very much for checking out a gift. First gift of the D of the day. <clears throat> 
Finland is nice. Yeah. I mean, there, there's definitely places I would like to go. Land of coffee drinkers. Isn't that like Earth? <laughs> With the exceptions of like Mormons. Um. All right. So Buddy wanted to be Angry Dwarf. This dwarf looks like a buddy. What do you think, chat? Literally most cough, coffee per capita. You know, when did you acquire this statistic? So actually, hold on, hold on a second. Most coffee drinkers or most actual coffee? Like in bulk? Because if it's the most actual coffee in bulk, I will state, that just means you're bad coffee drinkers. Because coffee gets stale and doesn't taste good when it gets stale. So yeah, you guys are bad coffee drinkers then. Well, I mean, that there you have it. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. Also, is this most coffee per person per capita or most coffee per capita? It's one giant coffee cup they all drink out of. Yeah, I mean, like I never have more than like a bag of coffee this big in my house because I drink it in a week and a half. Like I, I, I could buy them in like um, 250 gram, 500 gram, one, um, one kilo and three kilo bags. I buy the 250 gram and I drink 20 grams per day. The guy gets to uh, finish citizenship, do immigration copper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awful. Uh, well, I don't need to talk about the amount of caffeine I've drank in the past, so. Uh, this dwarf here is going to be Buddy. Buddy, does this work for you? And uh, most beater is next on the list. Okay. So uh, this dwarf <clears throat> is now Butty. Uh, Butty is satisfied after watching an, a performance and felt uh, afraid after experiencing trauma, and he saw a cave swallow man named Landspack die. Um, he, do, do you have any kills? You killed two goblins here, in fact. Um, are you, are you, you're not in the military. You may have previously, yeah, you were previously in the military, so that's why you're so upset. You have a pet bunny um, who is still alive, which is a minor miracle. I need to turn off the effect overlay. Takes a second. Um, and then jump back over to you. He finds a chaotic mess preferable to the boredom of harmonious living, is very trusting, and is, doesn't generally seek retribution for his past wrongs. He often feels envious of others and thinks that he is fairly important in the grand scheme of things. He has a calm demeanor after suffering a major injury in 514, and he has a noticeable lack of perseverance. He finds this troubling since he values perseverance. He is somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently from himself. Um, and he tends to avoid crowds and can easily fall in love or develop positive feelings. Often feels discouraged and is quick to anger. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't really care about anything anymore. He dreams of crafting a masterwork someday and personally believes that perseverance is one of the greatest qualities that somebody can have. Believes that acquisition of power for others is the ideal goal in life and worthy of the highest respect. Values honesty and doesn't see cooperation as valuable and doesn't think one way or another about leisure time. I think this dwarf should work their way into the law system for this fort because we do need to get a new captain of the guard soon. He likes iron, gray chalistoni, and guinea fowl leather and the color ochre. Bolts and goats for their eating habits and the words of the faded ash. The sight of the wondrous sister and when possible prefers to consume flying squirrel, horse cheese, and potato wine, and watermelons, and absolutely hates slugs. You have no ability to stand and you've got motor nerve damage. Uh, are you walking with a crutch? Yeah, you are. You're walking with a spore tree crutch. And uh, you kind of need some new clothes pretty soon, I think. But you are satisfied at work at the very least. Um, and you are currently going to go attend a meeting and yell at the mayor, probably. You have a legendary swords dwarf who turned out to be a necromancer going berserk in your fortress. Oh! Well then, <laughs> that seems unpleasant. You're friends with Walnut, so at least you have a friend in the fort. Um, Mouse Peter. What dwarf want you? Or I'll go look at your chat logs if you don't respond. A ground up coffee can get rancid too. Yeah, no, I mean, sometimes if I know that I have to get up really early, I will grind my coffee the night before. But like, I keep my coffee in an airtight container 
And I find that if it's in that airtight container for more than a month, it starts to go off in taste. Because Finland is not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, the, the, it's obviously just like a BS conspiracy theory about like Finland not being real because Finland is very much real, but I, I'm not going to lie, it, it amuses me. Kind of for the same reason that birds aren't real amuses me, you know? Oh, hey, they fixed the uh, scrolling now. You can scroll all the way to the bottom. Weaponsmith, Armorsmith, uh, Blacksmith, if Cheesemaker is not available. I do not have a Cheesemaker. Got two blacksmiths. I got several metalsmiths. I got lots of weaponsmiths. Do I have a legendary weaponsmith? I do not have a legendary weaponsmith. How about Kosoth? This dwarf. Does this look good to you? Competent weaponsmith? Dabbling brewer has butchered a thing once. Can I prove it though? If you really want to have this discussion, can we just, like, agree to be adults and not have this discussion? Because I don't want to sit here proving the existence of Finland. <laughs> like, can we just both acknowledge that this is a silly topic? So what's up with the Borderlands movie? I, I, isn't it still being made, apparently? I, I don't know. I, I heard they were making a Borderlands movie and then immediately realized I didn't care and stopped paying attention. So... Ah! I just got an eyelash in my shit. Looks fine, sweet. Let's roll. Mouse beater. Is this mouse beater the second? I don't think so. No. The question is where did mouse beater go? <laughs> right, it's this guy, isn't it? Um, you're naked. Ooh. Why are you? Why are you naked? <laughs> Sir, why are you naked? He's also short and incredibly fat. I... Likes the fresh air? I guess so. He is deliberately cruel to those unfortunate enough to be subject to his sadism after seeing a goblin die in 514. Uh, he is not readily moved by, natural, by art or natural beauty, and he... <laughs> Clearly. And he is conflicted by this as he values artwork and its creation. He is rarely jealous and he does not often feel lustful. He can occasionally lose focus on the matter at hand and has a sense of humor. Uh... Okay, maybe he's going to go get clothing. Um, he is a friendly individual and he lives a fast-paced life and occasionally overindulges and needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't really care about anything anymore, clearly. Uh, he personally views tranquility as one of the highest ideals and finds romance distasteful and does not care about fairness and is not does not particularly value art. Are you putting clothes on? There you go. Now he's clothed. Are you in the military? No, you're not. You don't even have like an excuse. I... Make this guy cop ASAP. I think that Mouse Beater might be our new captain of the guard. Because, like, part of the th air quotes theme of this fort is that I want to swap. Oh, no, shit, we need a hammerer. Chat, I have a question. Does Mouse Beater become the hammerer or the, new or the captain of the guard? Which job do, do we get? The hammerer? All right. Congratulations on your new form of employment, naked crazy man. He wants to practice a craft real bad, apparently. So I had a dwarf die. Um, the sad part about this dwarf dying is this dwarf was married to another dwarf. This dwarf ran in and saved his wife. Um, it was while I was, you know, cleaning out the caverns a little bit. And the unfortunate reality of this is I, I need to memorialize this dwarf now. <laughs> so let's, let's give this dwarf a memorial, shall we? Danathor, thank you very much for that tier one subscription. Greatly appreciate it. It, it really means a lot. Like, people who subscribe to this channel let me 
keep this job. So thank you very much for sticking around and continuing to support the channel. So this is the fortress for those of you who haven't seen it. It's primarily a deep cavern fort fort. A deep cavern fort, a fort. I said the word fort twice. It's a deep cavern fort. And uh, we are on the second cavern layer and we're currently building down to the third cavern layer. Um, and the third cavern layer right, right beneath it is where my tombs go. It's also where um, some of my temples are. It's also where my uh, forges are. It's where my gem encrusting industry is, uh, where apparently I'm encrusting all of the sandbags and a lot of furniture. Um, shout outs to the, this memorial that just got like completely encrusted. The slab reads in memory of Aiden, uh, born in 960, struck down by a goblin. I should probably place that. And, uh, we also have like our clear glass industry down here. So, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a, uh, we're doing good jobs. I think. Where is Aiden's tomb? I'm sure that you have one assigned. Do you not? Well, Huh. Interesting. Maybe they were um, not a member of my fort, so. Well, let's do that. We're also going to make some more slabs, I think, because <laughs> I'm running low on slabs, and I'm going to need more of them. Let's do Gabriel slabs. So I don't really know what my construction goals are for this fortress. All I know is that we are in the Magma Sea, and I do have a cavern right here, and I could easily get water down here. And I've been watching what a friend of the channel here, um, what, what, what was doing, UGDPY was doing with flooding hell, and I'm going, man, that looks fun. Like, that, that kind of looks like a lot of fun. What if we started flooding hell? You know? Like, what, what if we started flooding hell? So, I don't know. Maybe we start flooding hell. Or rather, like, you know, a lava sea, if not hell. Artifact pale metal battle axe. Ooh. Can demons drown? No. No, they're they they are immune to water. When the plans require slabs. Well, okay, so currently what we're doing is I'm trying to completely claim the caverns as mine. And the way I'm doing it is with this. I've got pressurized lava. I'm going to build a second one of these today so that I can clear the caverns more efficiently. Um, but basically, I can just pull a lever and flood the caverns with lava pretty effectively. I need another one a little further this way. Um, this one is okay, but it's not quite as efficient as I need it to be. I basically need one, like, up here, more or less, which I can do. I just It's going to be a little sketchy to connect it. So what I need to do is I need to stop this from pumping and um, then connect another tube to it. So we're gonna, we're, we're connecting another tube to the, to the lava system. The other thing that I need to do is not enough people have bedrooms, so I need to make more bedrooms. Do, no, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm saying hell in like place of the magma sea. I mean the magma sea. I kinda wanna flood the magma sea, but no, I, I don't really have much interest in opening up hell proper. But flooding the magma sea seems like fun. Why is there a giant cockatiel in my metal smith's forge? Well, wings are on the menu, dwarfs. Go get them. Wow, this squad is like, got slaughtered. I'm just gonna throw some dwarves into the military that have some skills in it. We're not gonna worry about it too, too much. Um, there is a very quick way to check if you have enough bedrooms. Hit Z on the keyboard, click on a bedroom, and then click on this button right here. It, if you're playing on the current main branch, it has this too, but it's slightly different looking UI. And if you scroll down, all of the dwarves that have a bedroom, it'll say that they have a bedroom. So I know that I need bedrooms for all of these dwarves. Do I know exactly the number? No, but I do know that all of these dwarves need bedrooms. Yeah, that's ex what, what I was saying, basically. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to here, and I'm going to pull all of these levers. 
Eh, actually, maybe maybe not the one that's like connected to the front door. So we'll we'll pull this one. We'll pull this one, and I will leave this one because this one is connected to my front door. And I kind of, you know, there's kind of a lot of my own dwarves here. I I kind of, you know, don't really want to go turn my own dwarves into splats. I feel like that'd be bad. So I'm walling off this part of the caverns right here so that I can ceiling, put, put a ceiling over top of this. Uh, specifically so that we can, you know, uh, d defend effectively against things that invade us. And the way we're going to defend is they walk into here and lava comes spewing out of here. And maybe I'll put a drawbridge there. I don't know. Probably not. That, that's, that seems too easy. Save the bird? Nah, the bird's dead. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm building. So, kind of plans for today is I need to build more lava pumps. I need to uh, construct more... Uh, I need to seal off the caverns in more places. I need to build more lava vents so I can vent lava into places by pulling a lever. And I need to um, unscrew up my military because my military is kind of screwed right now. Um, and uh, obviously, we need to make more gear. Uh, we need to make more steel shields. Uh, how many steel bars do I have currently? Steel bars, eight. Okay, how many bars do I have in general, actually? Uh, not many. Okay, well, let's, let's start making some iron. Actually, um, I'm a knight or yeah, 26 limonite. Let's do, oh, um, smelt limonite. 26, not 226, 26. And uh, why is there more attacking thingy sounds? That seems bad. Ah, okay. I mean, this is doing what I needed to do. I don't think that they're assaulting me though. Basically, I need to spill the lava out like right here. More or less. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to just start building it. could just take this stairwell, I think. Yes, let's take this stairwell. This is going to be dangerous to do without sacrificing a dwarf. But I think I can probably pull it off. Actually, if I do it from the layer above, it'll be safer. What if I do it this way? Let's do it this way. I'm gonna pause you, do this, go up to here. Go down here, which will bring me down to there. No, actually, I need to go down anyway, but we'll, we'll go straight over top to right here, and then I will channel down into here, is what I'm going to do. I ever played Aurora 4X? Yes, but I don't really have any interest in it. Why? It's one of those games that comes up every now and again. I've tried it, but it's not really for me. It's probably... Ooh. That's a slightly concerning place. Ah! There is a bat and a cave swallow person up here. You guys have to pick up equipment and get up here, please. I should also take them off of off-duty. Oh. Oh, sweet. Mace Dwarf laid to rest. That's fine. It's like, oh no, somebody's dying. 
Run an ad, so I will pause. Well, yeah, why do you ask Rockchill43? <laughs> Out of curiosity. Uh, let's give Hell a chill pill and more bring the, the Lava Sea into the um, Hydro homies, you know? You like your processed bag of pre-ground hazelnut vanilla coffee from Van Hoot. Hey, you know, if it works for you, that's okay. Doesn't cut it for me. <laughs> if you're just there for sugar and caffeine, I get it. I understand it. At least you're not drinking, like, pop. It's probably not much better, though. Also, having rocks is not more efficient than boulders, by the way. If you think that having rocks is more efficient than boulders, then I'm sorry you've been lied to. Uh, Max and Fett, thank you very much for the fourth month. Welcome back. You need to make a library for, for it, the Books of War or something, steal all the books. If you want to steal all the books, that's a cool way to do it. Like the, like an end of the world library is a fun thing to do. Um, also, if you make a really young world, then there's way more things for your scientists to discover and then you can write your own books, which is also fun. But boulder sized rocks, that's a very bold thing for you to say. Also going to just queue up some logging up here. I'm assuming they can get up here. Yeah, they can. Don't know where this cave swallow person went, but they were right here. What's up, Cashmere? How's things, dude? And Shutterbug as well. You know, I I judge people slightly for making Nespresso purely because of how crappy, like, the plastic containers that come with them are. Like, it's more of a, but why such much large amount of disposable plastic, goddamn, <laughs> thing and like if I mean if you want to drink it that's fine but at least get like the reusable cups is research a plan mechanic there is research in the game but it doesn't do anything in game do they do not want to have a tech tree in the game because they're they don't want to ruin the um open sandboxness of the game and that makes me very happy yes boulders convert to blocks at four to one and Block walls are smooth, meaning they are harder to climb than boulder walls, which are rough, not smooth. One who influences how long a book is when a dwarf writes it. Uh, dwarves are only capable of writing one page in game because it's not a mechanic in fortress mode. It's only a mechanic in legends. I think adventure mode. Dwarves can only write one page at a time. It's either like some bug that never got fixed, which I kind of doubt, or a limitation of the current system, and I think it's that. Which is why when books are copied in Fortress mode, they only come out as one page, even if the original was two pages. Yeah, which is why she makes scrolls. Returnable? Okay, but like realistically, how many people return them? <laughs> it's like that, 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 that's like saying that plastic water bottles are recyclable. Certainly, but how many of them end up in the landfill anyway? Like it's, I, I don't know. That's, it's just me being a snooty environmentalist at that point. It's, it's less about the quality of the coffee for me. Like at that point, if you're, if you're drinking like cheap coffee, like drink cheap coffee, that's fine. I'm not going to take that away from you. Like you, you are allowed to drink cheap coffee. Moses, the miner has been found dead. Ah, well on the bright side, I found the cave swallow person. On the other bright side, Orange seems to have killed it. The sad news is that Moses is dead. <laughs> Sorry, Moses. Go train, dwarves. We need you training. Uh-oh. Never mind. There's also a giant bat here. Just seeing teeth falling. It's like, this seems bad. There is a giant bat who is named... 
who actually killed Moses, as well as one of my ducks. Um, I'm waiting for my military to get over here. I have told them to go stand here. Part of the reason the fortress is lagging is just the number of um, cavern creatures around. And there it goes. The dwarves have managed to take it down. Hopefully there isn't too many injuries, but it doesn't seem to be. They just write in really, 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 really small print. Like, but yes, that is true. So if somehow one of your dwarves managed to write a book that's multiple chapters, which I've never seen that happen, but I believe it's possible. Um, yeah, it's all on one page. Kind of trying to keep track of the combat logs. I also need to make ash. All right, let's check on something else. Is the burrow on? The burrow is not on. Okay. Challenging friends to make the smallest legible handwriting. Interesting concept. One of those accordion books that just like stretch. I've never seen a book like that. Force of darkness that is vile has arrived. Where? I'm expecting it just to be thieves. Uh, that is somebody who was put in the prison, except I'm not actually releasing people from my prison. If you go into my prison, you, you stay here permanently. They were just passing, it's possible. Or there's a bunch of stealth thieves on my in my foot. There they are, see, told you. <laughs> told ya! Surprise! They're here to steal my children. They saw my military coming up the stairs. Also this guy. Speaking of probable criminals. This guy. Also, I need to start putting those uh, caged criminals on display. Are they scared of this? Who are they scared of? What? Anyway, they're giving my military time to get up here. These are just visitors, mostly. There we go. Get him, Dorfy. This is Stinthad, the hammer dwarf. Uh, who's running directly at the, the, the goblin in the old mine shaft and is beating the ever-living smack out of this goblin with his hammer. And a uh, goblin is now in multiple pieces. Other goblin thinks that they're going to make a, 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 a run for it, but doesn't realize that the military is all lined up and ready and waiting now. And uh, Slitted Hates is being chased down by uh, the very brave Unub uh, the Entangled Humility, um, who fortunately got this title by inflating their kill because they were standing next to a necromancer that was resurrecting a thief repeatedly. Um, same with, oh, this one didn't get to do that either. Uh, and, uh, they're, they're gonna stand here and, uh, eventually it'll attempt again to walk out and the dwarves will, um, okay, you know what? Let's just, let's speed this process up a little bit. Dwarves get into the mine shafts.
if if somebody says a word that sounds complicated and your response is it's it's, it's too complicated for my smooth brain, do yourself a massive favor, Danathor. And us all a lot of headache. Go play Call of Duty. That's a game that will be very, very, very easy to understand for your simple, smooth brain. Otherwise, open up your mind a little bit and assume that you can learn some simple concepts. Because it'll get you way further in life. <laughs> in general. <laughs> that or, like, might I suggest a cheese grater to, like, increase the wrinkle capacity. Don't actually cheese grate your head, please. My lawyer told me I had to tell you that. I don't have a lawyer. That was a lie. Um, the recruit slaps the goblin in the left upper leg with the flat of a battle axe, but the attack was deflected by a giant leather cloak. You have no idea what you are doing, do you, Mr. Re Mrs. Recruit? Burr doesn't know what she's doing. Uh, this axe lord, on the other hand, does know what he's doing. Um, and uh, hacks the thief in the lower leg with her steel battle axe, and the injured part is cloven asunder. Well, Rip Goblin, thanks for the f two free bags. And uh, we can claim these. Wait. And the, the rest of the dwarves are going, ah, as they get scarred because they just saw horrible things happen. Specifically, a goblin fly to pieces. However, Stintad here doesn't feel anything when joining an existing conflict. <laughs> he goes to clean up the blood. Well, at least somebody's being productive. But seriously, go play COD. If you think quantum stockpiles are too much, just, just go play Call of Duty. The best part about games like that, or like even better, Fortnite. That one doesn't even require enough brain capacity to figure out how to put a credit card into it because you can just go download it. They really want you to put the credit card into it, but you don't have to figure it out. Or, you know, a PayPal account or a Visa card or... Fork knife. That's how I eat dinner. This dwarf is stuck in here. I would just like you guys to know that. <laughs> um, well done there, dwarf. I drink soup. Please. I have a question. If, if, if you need a spoon to eat soup, then how the heck does everybody in Japan eat all of these lovely soups that they've come up with? Because... Chopstick? You can't believe it's still a thing? I almost made it into an official emote, actually. I almost, like, got Cooley to redraw that one. You don't like guns, you can play Ma You can play Plan Madden? Play Madden, you mean. And if you don't like a, a Hand Egg, then you can play uh, EAFC. Which I realize just means football, but is still, like, the most nonsensical name for a video game in existence, as far as I'm concerned. Drop by drop with chopsticks. You pick up bowl and go chug. Ironically, like, whenever, because I don't have a table in my apartment that I use, really, I do have a table. I have, a, I have like, a little card table that I use for, like, working on stuff and, like, projects. But because I don't use it very often, the actual result is I don't really eat soup with a spoon. I usually just drink it. Like, that's almost always how I, how, how I go about doing such things, as I drink soup. It's just more, it's just easier that way. <laughs> Less effort. Devilish Potato is felling trees for us. Which is also putting holes in my ceiling. So I'm going to start replacing these with clear glass very slowly. Although apparently I am out of clear glass. Um, am I doing anything with clear glass here? Am I, I'm making pearl ash. Okay, potash. Okay. Let's do... Oh, I can't type here. Let's just queue up 500 clear glass blocks and I'll make it eventually. What if soup too hot? Put soup down, wait too cool? Like, I have a little, like... The thing is, I, I, I have a little Ikea sectional that I chopped into pieces years ago. And I use it like 
like a sofa with storage underneath it, basically. And I have a little coffee table next to it, but it's not really at the right angle to eat food on comfortably, so I don't really eat food at it. Um, so I put food on it, and if soup is too hot, then I can't pick it up to begin with, so I just let it sit. Wait, add ice cube? Nah. I mean, the actual, like, galaxy brain thing would be to take some of the broth that you're using in that soup and put it into the freezer as ice cubes before you make the soup. Once all you have is the, you know, the broth. I, I mean, I do make my own broth, so that would be very easy. I will make coffee ice cubes in the summer for, to add to my iced coffee. Because why would I water down my iced coffee? I want coffee in my coffee, not water in my coffee. Unless I'm like, you know, making concentrated coffee, at which point then maybe. What if big chunks in soup? Fork. So, you know, you, you, you use big chunks, you, you eat the big chunks out of the soup with a fork, and then you eat the soup. Like, literally, that, that is how I eat soup. Ever had those soup dumplings? I've made soup dumplings. They're pretty difficult to make consistently. Good Charles is still our outpost liaison from the looks of things. Merit deserves reward. I come empowered to establish this colony as official land of our realm. Can you imagine the trade wagons? I'm going to take keep our distance from the homeland for right now. Because <laughs> I've seen what happens to every single mountain home we have is they get taken over and destroyed. Soup cooking stream. I've said this many times. There are parts of my life that are open to be made into content. My, at this point, my, my reading of horror stories, the occasional photo of a hike, I, not videos, but occasional photo of a hike, simply because the people I hike with don't want to be filmed. My dad doesn't like being filmed and I hike with my dad all the time. And my, my friend, uh, Kevin, absolutely does not want to be filmed and I hike with him all the time. So the occasional photo I will take and, um, than my gaming content. Uh, cooking is one of my hobbies, and my hobbies are for me, not for you. So I hate to break it to you, but no, uh, I will never do cooking streams because frankly, that is for me, that is my personal time, and not for you. Boundaries, they're healthy. Um, nah, I'm, I'm okay. Because dwarven dishes only have, like, have three ingredients and are, like, yeah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> like, if you actually look at the descriptions of dwarven dishes, it's like, eh. I mean, like, I guess I could make a roast. I've made roasts before, but it's not the sort of thing I eat frequently. I don't really just eat, like, pile of butchered meat ever. Like, that's not the kind of food that I like. So, nah, I'm good. It's like wonderfully minced butterfly brain. I mean, I've made like like stews with whiskey and stuff before, but he he okay, but like side sidebar here, right? Cuz you say roasted fish with honey sauce. I've made Baked salmon with honey glaze. Just delicious. Yeah, I don't really like eating organs. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do that in sausage. No issue there. But um, just as is, nah. I'm good. I've, made, I've put vodka in stew before. I've also made um, vodka pasta. Or specifically sauce. Okay, so I need to check my cloth supply because I'm feeling like my dwarves need some new clothes. We got 290 pigtail. Let's just do like 40 of the main clothing pieces. So we, in this fort, this is where he, you don't have pants. Okay, I'm, I'm sensing a problem here. Uh, okay, so let's say sock, shoe, tunic, dress, glove, trousers, hoods.
Tunic, trousers, sock, shoe, trousers, dress, tunic. What am I missing? Gloves, hood. Okay, so let's just do 45 of each. And I'm just going to make a bunch of clothing so shops somewhere. I do need a place to put a proper clothing industry. Because of how I was building this fort early on, I've kind of like made <laughs> constructing this fort way more difficult than it needs to be. This is one of the ugliest guild halls I've ever made. <laughs> this is my miner's guild. <laughs> it's just full of holes in the walls, but hey, it's high enough value, so... I also need doors. Armuk bless the will of Smith. Cheers, Sadara. Thank you very much for the seventh month. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Appreciate you greatly. It means a lot. Miners want to see cave. I was. I'm gonna give them windows. I'm just working on it. You know, it's it's funny that, like, I know this is sarcasm bomber, where you say how selfish of you to not um, hack off every bit of your life for the sake of your audience whims. I did for a while. <laughs> I really, really did. Like, there, there was a period of my life where I was doing a 24-hour stream once a week. Although that was partially out of necessity more than anything. Um, so, I, it's not healthy. And the reason I was doing that 24-hour stream once a week for clarity is um, I had, like, an average concurrent viewership of, like, 50, and I had to pay rent. <laughs> so it was like, gotta do what you gotta do. The mortality of flickers. Just to reside in Slap Rock. What the hell is that? Bunch of naked poets. You know what? I think I'm good. <laughs> we already have a performance troupe. I don't need more. Uh, we need to trade, though. I think they wanted cheese. Max and Fett, thank you very much for the five gift subs. Appreciate you. But yeah, back in that era, I, I, I've i gone back and like done the math a couple times. I was making, on average, like $1.50 an hour or something, if that. And that's like with streaming 12 hours a day-ish. Like 8 to 12 hours a day, almost 7 days a week. Average. Necromancer of Criminal Experiment. I can tell you for fact that it's not a member of that performance troop. Because I know what faction it's part of and they're a multi-time visitor and I'm waiting to arrest them. I also need to figure out where I'm putting my long-term captivity residents, which are the, um, the people who've committed enough crimes that they're still in prison. Uh, Sarpezen, thank you very much for that Prime subscription for a second month. Also, check your Prime subs, because Prime subs are going to be losing some value on my birthday, which I think is funny. They are getting uh, regional pricing, which is fair. I, that doesn't bother me, but it does bother me that they decided to do it on my goddamn birthday. Very disturbed by this. Uh, Sarpezen, seriously, thank you very much. And, uh, Cashmere Goat, thank you very much for the $10. And that is now a hype train here on Twitch. Appreciate you guys. Is a hype train doing Dwarf Fortress a hype minecart? I mean, that's why I I have minecarts on the top of it. And also minecart emotes. How's the crime, crime fort going? We actually have criminals in the crime fort now, which is great. I'm just trying to find stuff to sell. Mostly just looking for stuff to sell. Keeping the whip. 
Don't want the bow. Don't need those. Don't want those. Don't want those. I realize I could melt these, but I always say I'm going to melt them and then never do, so I'm just going to sell them. Uh, and I'll sell that. Uh, you'd have to look at the wiki. I do like honey stuff maybe once a year, said Nelf. Well, it's more of a prison fort, less of a crime fort, is maybe a better way to put it. What was the solution? A uh, stop dying? <laughs> I actually, honestly, I haven't changed much. Um, the moods naturally swing up if they have good amounts of food and drink. Um, and I s managed to stop dwarves from dying in front of other dwarves. <laughs> so that's helped a bit. In Dwarf Fortress? Uh, probably not a fair contest because in older versions of Dwarf Fortress, like they've, n people complain about like items being too valuable in this version and breaking the economy. Mate, you should have played version 47 if you think that because um, I had a screw, uh, a like a, a giant corkscrew that was mostly made of adamantine that was worth like four point something million. So... I mean, that glitch still exists in the game. Just put your craft store shops or any, like, mootable workshop in a guild hall, and they will they will do that. They will just infinitely gather resources until you delete the guild hall from where they are or remove the, the zone from where the workshop is. Yeah, like, I, I bought an entire dwarven caravan, like, endgame dwarven caravan with one artifact once. I, I did that with one meal once, too. What about since Steam launch? I don't pay that close enough attention to the value of items. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, I, I, I don't think I've had one above 50k. Maybe 60,000. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't pay that close attention. Although, I, I've, I have had, like, a few, like, god metal ones, which may have been higher. I, yeah, I don't know. I just don't pay that much attention. 400,000 roasts sitting in a stockpile. Look at you, Michelin star boy. <sighs> Still somehow cheaper than Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. I'm gonna buy that platinum and that silver. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't pay too much attention to the value of items. Uh, I'm gonna buy those three barrels and make some cheese. I'm gonna buy the pigtail cloth. And the pigtail cloth. I don't mind the bins either. Those are actually kind of useful. Although I'm going to need to immediately move my cloth stockpiles. I'm not going to buy those. Clicked on that out of, ha out of habit. Oh, I should start making glass crafts. That's what I should do. Like just green glass crafts. Now I did ask for paper. So I am going to buy the paper. I'm also going to buy their books. Sheet. Uh, oh, can't even afford it all. So this is some weirdly expensive sheet here. What the heck? Chat room, thank you very much for the hype train. Seven subscriptions and ten dollars in bits. Yesterday was excruciatingly slow, money wise. So I, I, I appreciate the I appreciate the hot start on the stream. Thanks, guys. Uh, I will trade. You don't know where to start? Um, chat, can somebody link my my the the the, the getting started guide that I have? <laughs> Uh, I have like 300 tutorials, if not more, at this point on my YouTube channel. Um, so that might be a place to start. The wiki's very good. Um, I would argue the wiki's probably better than my guides, but um, I'm in an ad break now, so I will wait. You're struggling to get your uh, broker uh, with your broker with a terrible appraisal skill? 
Uh, broker doesn't gain the skill based on overall amount traded. Broker gains skill by number of trades. So if you have low skill broker, uh, do lot like trade individual items. So like trade, um, I don't know, a craft for a piece of cloth and just like do that repeatedly on low value and then you'll have a very good trader. How many artifacts are you supposed to have? There is no specific thing that you are supposed to have in Dwarf Fortress. It's all entirely what you feel like doing. This is a sandbox that has no meta that is completely breakable if you decide to min-max things. Looking at the YouTube chat for a sec. But yeah, I, I have so many tutorials on my YouTube channel, so there's that. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want to learn to play Dwarf Fortress, the kind of easiest thing that you can do is join my discord or join the kitfox discord and whenever you need help just ask a question and someone will either link a tutorial link a wiki page or give you the answer this is um a game that is more obtuse than it is difficult people will tell you that this game is hard i disagree with that this game is obtuse because there's a lot of things about it that are weird also uh for some reason rebel rouser is gifting 10 memberships um, in my uh, YouTube chat. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, Joey Kaiser Nike, Sam, uh, Casey Keller, George uh, Westner, uh, Flavo, uh, Alavranga, uh, Brandon, Augie, Outsider, and Gongstein have all been gifted memberships. So if you would like to get a YouTube membership and you just heard your name called, jump over there and claim it. Your friend and I just discovered the game uh, this year, and it's kind of wild how far it's come. You need to remember that this is a game that, like, most of the history books say that it started development in 2003. Or, sorry, in 2006. That's when it became publicly available. This game kind of started development about three years earlier than that. So this game's kind of existed for 20 years now. In some format. You'd argue it's, it's hard to learn. It's not a hard game. Yeah, no, it, what I always say about Dwarf Fortress is it's obtuse. There, there, there's two things that you need to remember about this game when you're learning it for the first time. It's obtuse, not hard. Um, but learning Dwarf Fortress isn't like learning a normal video game. Most video games, especially modern video games, they give you a tutorial, they hold your hand, they caress you gently, they whisper sweet nothings into your ear and waste 19 hours of your time while you're still getting tutorial prompts 20 hours into the JRPG going, what the fuck, lightning? Anyway, um, uh, that wasn't to dig at Final Fantasy, that was just me stating that some games have really long tutorials. This game, the way it teaches you is, um, it throws you into the deep end and says, good luck, bitch. But the reason that that's a good thing is, at least in my opinion, is it's like learning a board game, right? And the way you learn a board game is you sit down and you look at all these pieces and you go, oh my God. Uh, but the way you learn the board game is you sit down with four friends and you read the manual, which is why it's actually great that you found this game with a friend because like you sit down and you read the manual and then you start playing and you realize, oh God, wait, wait, wait no, 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 we're doing this wrong. And then you, you, you throw everything out and you reset it up and you, you play again. And you're like, yeah, and then then you actually have fun the second and third time through, and then you then you realize you you missed one rule and you're scoring at the end game wrong. But that's okay because you're having fun, right? And then you play again, and by the fifth time you play the game with two new friends and you're explaining the basic rules to them, at that point you've realized you you know how to play the game. And that's how learning Dwarf Fortress usually is for at least that's how it was for me. Um, is it's it's a game that if you either have a person that you're learning it with or a Discord server, you'll have a much easier time learning it because it's much more like learning a board game than it is like, you know, learning a normal video game. Yeah, I mean, I still, I have 10,000 plus hours in this game and I still learn new things. So, you know, it is, it's a process. We're going to move my leather and my cloth up to here. You've known for the one of your best friends from online that you've known for five years to touch us down in the airport so you have a staycation together. Hell yeah, that's all that's fun. I I, I like learn meeting people from the internet. But I guess part of that is because I've never had a bad experience with it. I know plenty of people have, but it's all it's always fun when a viewer's in town and I get to go grab a beer with somebody, which I got to do this week. I meant gloves. 
Anybody who sees gloves around chat, I, I've met gloves now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's always fun meeting people who you've known in name and voice. I mean, you've met. <laughs> you've met. Expect 90 seconds of awkward. <laughs> we need Pearl Ash. Is there a reason I don't have Pearl Ash? Actually, here's a question. Why am I making potash? You don't need potash to make pearl ash. I hate pearl ash. <laughs> it's like the worst process in the video game because I always confuse everything. Okay, so to, to, to make potash, per pearl ash, it's created in a kiln. Yes, yes, yes. Requ oh, it does require one unit of potash. Okay, fine. We're making ash. Should be making potash. Oh, I see. I just haven't made it fast enough. I get it. Okay, I found the problem. Let's just make two more asheries. Let's just do that. Genuine statement. Le one of my least favorite materials to make in the game. He's forgetting fancy buckets covered in gems. I'm trying to get my ash in gear, okay? Calm down. Jeez. As long as you don't date over the internet? I've never dated anyone over the internet, so we're good. a pretty stark stance on Twitch isn't a dating website and I don't really go to other websites. <laughs> We're good. Although oddly enough, I know a surprisingly large number of streamers who've like ended up going out with their mods and stuff. I know one who married their mods, so. It does happen. My older sister met her husband on World of Warcraft. So yeah, one could say I know couples who've met online. What's my favorite in-game industry? Like my favorite one to do? Or my favorite one mechanically? Is pumping lava an industry? Probably any kind of lava powered forging. Like, if I can count that, any kind of lava-based forging, basically. I'm checking on... Speaking of lava, I'm checking on my... current pumping setup. So let's go all the way up to here. Let's just dump these boulders out of here. And let's go... Floodgate right here.
I've always wanted, I've always felt like I should, so responding to a thing from Bomber in YouTube chat, I've always felt like I should be into Paradox Grand Strategy games, but I've always found them just to be kind of painfully boring. And I don't really know why. But I always kind of have just found them to be really boring. So unfortunately, no, I've never really gotten into Paradox Grand Strategy games. It's like I tried, I never tried CK3, I tried CK2, and I tried Europa Universalis, and I tried Imperator Rome, that was the last one I tried, and which admittedly was terrible, I know. And uh, I tried um, Stellaris. The one I hated the most was Stellaris. I do not, or rather, I. it's a different game now entirely, but I, I back when that game launched, I didn't understand why people liked it. I like, um, oops. I like 4X games. An artifact was seen being stolen. I like 4X games, but I do not at all, even remotely, um, like streaming them. <laughs> I hate streaming them, actually. All right, so I've got Saiknung Memrut, which is being stolen. So is Nish stealing it? Is that what's going on here? Ah. Who is suspect that you know? Bax, the Goblin Dancer? Hmm. The goblin, my life. So what do you think? Should I just kill him? Are you friends with Nish? I kind of want his book, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right, um, well, let's do this. The captain of the guard is napping. How about the hammerer? Can you go do your can you go do the job? Maybe, maybe not. Nope. Well, you never will, Hyper, so. I recommend going and watching um I recommend going and watching like uh uh what uh Shen or somebody else play that. Since that's shut. And that's shut. Lock this. Lock the door. Where are you going to go exactly? So, yeah. Hate to break it to you, but you're never going to see it, so... Uh, they don't mix. Still in your inventory. Oh, passed it off. Ah. Found the culprit. It was seen being passed to a thief, so we do actually have witnesses now. Properly convict you. We 
We haven't done another interrogation just yet. Worried about what direction you're taking off the map. Guess there is a way off the map here. Tisk. I could send my military to kill him. But we're too busy chaining up our weaponsmith. I kind of was thinking that it would take longer for that to go through. Where are you from? Let's find out. Nomadic group of the... So you're probably hired by somebody to do this. Well, regardless, I need to block the route that this guy uses to get off the map, if he's able to get off the map here. Yep, okay. So I, I need to block this. Absolutely need to block this. That's a way for baddies to get in, too, which I don't like. Question is, can you even make it off the map this way? Where exactly are you going? Oops, wrong screen. Because the front door is shut up here. You said 4H. I said I like 4Xs. Interesting. The thing is, I don't like streaming 4Xs. And you want to know why I don't like streaming 4Xs? Because I will quote one of my moderators. Uh, the last time I tried streaming a 4X game, and also around the same time that I tried streaming Paradox games. Blind, I like your streams, and I like you. But dude, that shit is the most boring content you've ever created. And I think he's right. <laughs> so, no. I, I will never make content like that. I just, I have absolutely no interest. It's just not the type of content I like to make. Maybe CK2 made you appreciate Iron Man modes, uh, but I've played roguelikes my entire life, proper ones. So Iron Man modes are just, you know, a way of making a game that's not designed to be permadeath have permadeath, in my opinion. So... I'm glad that it did something for you that was a positive, but glad that you enjoy those games. I'm glad those games exist for the audience they have, but I feel like if I were to start streaming Paradox games now, two things would happen. One, I would just sit here and have to, like, agree, yeah, no, this business model sucks. Yeah, no, I fucking hate these patches. Yeah, no, we hate this game. Blah, 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 blah. By the way, you're min-maxing this game wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, we're waiting on a patch. Blah, 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 blah. And I just I don't fucking want to deal with that. I just don't fucking want to deal with that. More more no save coming. That is one of my favorite typos I've seen all day. Congrats. Yeah, no, I... I'm never going to stream Paradox games. If you want to deal with that shit, go deal with that shit yourself. I am okay. I think, like, if I started streaming Paradox games years ago and got into them in a way that worked for me that I enjoyed, I could see a world where I could have gotten into them, but the fact that Paradox is living long enough to become the villain, I just, I don't want to deal with that community. Considering, like, I tried playing a game I, or a, a franchise I do like, which is um, City Skylines 2 when that came out, and um, the entirety of the response I got was just like, people mad that I thought that the game was 
performing badly, being like, Why are you hating on games, small developer, blah, 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 which is not true. Uh, followed by, Bah, Blind is playing shitty developer game that nobody likes. Blah, I want this game die, please. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what, I... I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I don't play games I don't stream, really. Un unfortunately, like, I, I'm one of those people at this point now where I, I realize that there, there are streamers who... So, so basically, if, if you're asking me to play a game or talk about a game or play a type of game, you're basically, in, in, in this channel, um, coincidentally, you're more or less just asking me to stream it because I don't play games off stream. If it's not directly for work, I don't play it. Um, and I, that's just because I am in an... Maybe this will change in the future. I, I could see it changing in the future, potentially. I am in an era where if it isn't a game that I am currently streaming, there's no reason for me to play it because... I, I don't play games outside of stream, like at all. And that's, it's kind of sad in a way, because I used to do that a lot. Like it used to be a form of entertainment for me. But at this point, if I'm not streaming, like I like games, it's fun. Playing games is fun for clarity's sake here. But if I'm not streaming, there's absolutely no point for me to play it because I would rather do anything else with my time if I'm not streaming. Does that make me a pro player? Fucking I don't know, man. <laughs> but I've played games full time for a living since 2016. And there is the occasional game that I will finish on my own time because I really want to. And the stream doesn't like it. Uh, an ex a recent example of this was um, System Shock. Chat just stopped watching me play it at a point. Like, yeah, there was be someone in chat will be like, I was enjoying that, and I'm sure you probably were. But um, the majority of people stopped watching me play that. So I finished that on my own time. That was a lot of fun. Um, I finished uh, El Paso Elsewhere on my own time. But, um, you know. If I'm not streaming it, I generally don't play it. Hi, Master Siege Operator. Damn. Wondering if this dwarf would do well in any kind of military skill stuff. Not vain, tough. Not dutiful. Hmm. Dreams of a great work of art. Unfriendly and disagreeable. Does not often feel lustful. Tends to ask others for help. Wish I could put this dwarf into the military. Speaking of, I want to update your uniform. Well, I need more crossbows. There is a chance I am simply, I never made a boyer shop. <laughs> so let's just make 10 iron crossbows. I think I have a wooden crossbow job here somewhere. There it is. Yeah, I never made a boyer shop. We'll just make iron crossbows. What about you? Um. See, sacrifice is wasteful and doesn't care about fairness. Somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger. There you go. Well done, potato, salty tempest, and Lanix. You need all the good juju, so you're headed to your interview. Chat room, everybody wish Ranger Rick good luck. Please and thank you. Outpost liaison is sharing rumors. Ooh. Novice spirit dwarf, eh? Could be considered rude, rude and is brave. Finds those that deny their impulses somewhat stiff. Person is disgusted by tranquility and would have the world constantly churn with noise and activity. And respects the law. What 
about you. Likes a peaceful day. Novice Swords Dwarf. Oh, I was told to save the game, apparently. Whoops, my bad. Also, hey, Jam Jalopy. <laughs> Thanks for lurking, mate. And Moose Moose. I don't think I said hi to you either. Hello. What's up, dude? Yeah, but if you have a video game that you purchased on the internet, you have the internet, and thus you can just simply go to the wiki on the internet. First one is Total War. Man, I like to imagine a world where the only Total War game they ever made was Rome Total War 1 and, and uh, Medieval 2. And I played both of those, and I loved both of those, and they were both wonderful. And I ignore every other Total War game in existence. I mean, a manual would be redundant for this game because if they released a manual at launch, stuff has already changed. So you can't update a manual in real time. Unless we're talking about like, unless ebook manuals were a thing. Hey, Nasty Ninja, what's up, dude? Sometimes acts with little determination and confidence. He is, is in particular, he likes a little excitement now and again and is conflicted by this. He considers tranquility preferable to tumult. How about I put you into the less committed military stint, Thad? Also, Baka glass, glass redeemed a dwarf? You know, Baka, you need to yell at me if I miss these things. Chat room, you need to yell at me if I forget to name a dwarf. Jeez. Baka's here, I'll read this dwarf's description. <laughs> Ebook manual like Wikipedia? Sure, yes. I named the damn dwarf. Next time I see Baka pop up in chat, I'll read that dwarf's description. I mean, O could be yelling. But staring at me is probably better. Can handle stress, doesn't mind tumult. So what are these two squads? You're a crossbow squad and you're a melee squad. Get you guys on monthly orders. And let's get you guys on monthly orders. I don't think siege operating has any real use in particular because siege the the reason I don't think siege operating has any particular use whatsoever is siege operating uh aside from like you know just as a thing to train your dwarves to make them happy um is a mechanic that was designed for the a version of the game from 2007 before the game was 3D so to me siege operating has no real practical purpose like yeah you can use it but I would rather just use Mark's Dwarves. And the reason is, is you really have to build your entire defense around it if you want to use it, because they shoot in two dimensions. <laughs> and the biggest problem with them is you need your Dwarves who are siege operators to not run away in fear when they see an enemy, which most of them do. So it was a system that was designed before fear, and it was a system that was designed before they ran away from enemies like that. And it was a system that was designed when the game was two dimensions. So it's a system that I look at and I go, in the current game, it needs a complete rework. So is there any skills that are underrated in the game? Sure, probably. I think farming, I think planting is underrated uh, because most people, including myself, um, leave dwarves that, like just everybody plant, more or less. Um, harvesting is also pretty underrated because you get a higher 
yield if you have higher level planters and higher level harvesters. I don't think swimming is underrated. I think swimming is perfectly rated. Swimming just doesn't really have many ways of training it easily without like building some crazy contraptions, which I should probably do for funsies. I mean, I have a game that has a manual, right? Bomber. Um, I, I, have no, I have nothing against manuals. Manuals are great in theory. I think in a, in a game for games that are perpetually updated, they don't make much sense. Like this is a game that I purchased on Steam that came with a manual. And as you can see, I have 0.5 hours in it because I've spent like five hours, if not more, reading the 180 page manual that it comes with, which is, I don't even know how to find the link for it. It's in the files for the game. Um, this is a game that needs a manual, but this is also a game that isn't getting new content. It's getting compatibility and bug fix updates. That's it, right? Um, if it's a game that's getting content updates, then the manual is out of date, unless you can update the manual, at which point then it's a PDF. But at that point, why don't you just have a community wiki because it updates faster? Max and Fett, thanks for the five pack of gift subs. Appreciate you greatly. Ten total on the day. Thank you very much. You're telling me that I don't like something that is factually incorrect, dude. Trying to get caught up with YouTube chat here. Hold on. Oh, I see. You're telling Samuel they don't like something. You're not telling me. Uh, yeah, if, if, if you don't like having to look up guides for games, Samuel, go play different kinds of games. Because that's not how games are made these days. Like, I, I know that it's it's kind of shitty of me to just say, go fucking go play something else. But that is genuinely the way that I feel. Like, if you are living in a universe where you feel that all, like, games should have physical manuals or be, like, published with all-encompassing tutorials... Yeah, my, my genuine feeling is go play different kinds of games. I mean, sure, but that's not going to satisfy the people that are like, all games need comprehensive tutorials, right? Like, if I click on this, it'll tell me that it'll make steel bars. But is a player going to tell... Is a player who insists on everything having comprehensive tutorials or the build or ship with manuals, is a player who wants that going to tell me that that is an acceptable way of existing? No. No, it's not. Right? And it's, it's, it's like the people that go around and say that the UI for this game is terrible. Okay. Go play something else then. Because it's never going to satisfy you if you are unsatisfied by the existence of this. And that's a shame, because this game is excellent. But it also doesn't need to satisfy everybody. I don't live in that reality where a game needs to satisfy everybody. Maybe you do. I don't. I never have, and I don't think I ever will. I need quivers, too. We're gonna make 20 leather quivers. I don't know, I see people saying that the UI for this game is terrible all the time, so. But I, I also see angry people in my YouTube comments, so they're not exactly like representative of reality. Am I missing sand? What am I missing here? 
Nope, I've got sandbags. Okay, I've got tons of potash. I've got no pearl ash. Why am I not making pearl ash? What is, what is going on here? Okay, Gabriel, if you feel that way, and that is a deal breaker for you, then go play something else. Do I agree that it could be better? Absolutely. But if that is a deal breaker for you, go play something else. You've never seen those words used in the same sentence before. Because you are not in the majority of any video games player base if you are watching a Twitch stream, right? 700,000 or like more than that, like 850,000 people own Dwarf Fortress on Steam. 80,000 people follow streams on Twitch actively. All right? Like you, you like sure you can make fun of people in YouTube comments, absolutely. But you also need to remember that the people leaving comments on YouTube are a minority. You also need to remember that the people watching streams are a minority, and the people in Discords are a minority. You are in the enthusiast crowd, not the casual crowd, right? Also, Dwarf Fortress is never going to have guns because the developers have said they have absolutely no interest in researching guns. So, figured out my glass bottleneck. I had my pearl ash jobs <laughs> paused because I forgot to unpause them. Do you know if metal boats are supposed to be meltable? I don't know. I haven't tried melting metal bolts. I usually just sell them. <laughs> what do step ladders do? They let you uh, harvest fruit from trees, which means in this fort that has no surface trees, there is absolutely no practical purpose to having step ladders. You make a uh, gather fruit zone like this by clicking and dragging where there's trees on the surface. And then if you click this button right here, uh, gather fruit and trees, but make sure that you have enough step ladders that you have at least one step ladder per fruit, fu per fruit gatherer. And I would make sure that they don't end up in stockpiles. Otherwise you might end up with dwarves stuck in trees. They're a very, very, very useful tool. And I've fed entire forts before with nothing but step ladders and fruit from trees. Well, now you do not Calvin. Dwarf Fortress is supposed to be in a pre-gunpowder fantasy age, right? And Dwarf Fortress is also a game that is, in the future, planned to have things like fireballs you can throw. So it's a world that the developers are working towards where guns don't need to exist from the get-go. And I think that you need to remember that if you really would like guns in your video game, mod them in. Otherwise, it's not a real point. So uh, check that interrogation. We, I've been distracted for a bit. Also getting hungry. What the hell is going on? <laughs> it's weirdly early for me to get hungry. Attempted to make intimidating remarks in order to elicit information. Was caging in retrospect. Wow. Okay. Screwed that, screwed that up. At the very least, uh, I do know that elf did it because we saw it. Yeah, and uh, for in the case of the developers, the lack of interest in guns is almost more of a political thing than anything else. Okay, well, at least that's working again. And Legolas is better with a bow anyway than guns. The obsession with guns is... Um, 
something that I will, uh, and obsessions with guns is something I will never really get, but I'm also Canadian, so it's not a culturally important thing here. Sure, there are people who enjoy them, but it's, it's more of a niche fringe hobbyist thing or people who live in the wilderness thing. Isn't this the hammerer's office? Also, hmm. Mouse Peter's real happy. Need to figure out where to put long term prisoners. Turns into a story about them trying to take the gun from Mary and Pippin. Turns into a story about um, really sad people. All right, well, I've drained the lava that I can from this, so I've removed the high-speed flow pressure from it, which means I need to see, have I placed this yet? Yes, I have, okay. So what I need to do is I need to go over to here need to place another lever, because I have the foresight to leave space. I hate guns and they absolutely have no place in DF. Yes, but Liberals Crime Squad is a very, 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 very different game than Dwarf Fortress. Like a very different game than Dwarf Fortress. The stuff that Liberals Crime Crime Squad what Crime Squad has and does isn't relevant to what Dwarf Fortress is. Sure, when we get magic, nasty. You don't have to go to the wiki to figure out what mood dwarves need. And I say that because I didn't. I figured out what mooded dwarves need. They're relatively clear. If you think that you have to go to the wiki to do that, okay, I get it. But I hate to break it to you. You don't have to go to the wiki to figure out what mood dwarves need. What you do need to figure out is that uh, in order to figure out what mood dwarves need is you should probably have more or less one of everything in a fort. So that's a trading issue, right? Some of them can be kind of obtuse, sure. But I don't think that you have to succeed in every single thing that you do in a video game. I guess we just disagree on principle there. You believe that the player should be able to succeed everything the first time. I think that's ridiculous. So you're against failure. You're not against the structure of the video game. Also, I'm realizing that I've got traitors that can't escape because I never unlocked the front door. <laughs> Should probably open the front door again. Unmet need timeout user for saying dumb thing. Wow, need satisfied, fantastic. Yeah, and there's mods for that if you want that, said Nelf. Uh, yeah, I accidentally turned my fort into Hotel California for a moment there. You get an artifact or a berserk dwarf. I'm sure if you consider that a form of success. Well, I, I would argue instead of getting an artifact or a berserk dwarf, you get an artifact or comedy. Um, which I guess could be considered a win. Should probably wall this off. So, 
I guess I should just go through and forbid all these. Oh, I know. What I said was also a joke. It was very funny. Andre, what's up, dude? It's good to see you. I'm sorry if you didn't get the punchline. I, I did. So, it amused me. You'd love to see sappers? I think that would ruin the game currently. I think the game needs some very different mechanics in order for things that dig through walls to be a fun mechanic. Yeah, Neelix! Dude, it's been a minute. Hope you've been well. Thanks for the 12th month. Welcome back. Like... Enemies being able to dig is something that's been talked about as long as I've played this game. And I think that enemies should be able to dig at some point, but I think in order for enemies to be able to dig, I think the game needs to change a little bit. Definitely did get the, the punchline. I mean, I didn't ban him, I just timed him out. It's only 10 minutes. She can think about how hysterical his joke was and how funny my joke was. And when, when he's done thinking about it, then, you know. Everybody wins. Yeah, if nobody's been banned, and I'm not mad at anybody. A lot of people, I think, not over, overreact is the wrong word, overthink getting timed out on Twitch and need to remember that I come from an era, era of Twitch where fucking, I used to ban people as a joke. <laughs> um, I don't do that anymore, but I do time people out as jokes still. Hell yeah, Andre. Yeah, I see your comments every now and again. Time slot doesn't work out for everybody, and that's just how it is, unfortunately. For enemies to dig? <sighs> well, right now, if enemies could dig, there's no way to refill dirt. That is the main thing. Um, that would break the game for me. We need things like, okay, so ma magic is a thing that's coming to the game. Something like magical barriers. Because in a 3D game where stuff can dig, that with the way the enemy siege AI as well works currently, that wouldn't be fun in the slightest. Because what would happen is they'd be on the surface and then they'd just start digging. And... No, nobody's going to want to do that. Like, there's suddenly no reason to build walls. There's suddenly no reason to build a fortress because things start digging directly. To That's not fun. So we need a way to fix what they're doing, and also we'd need a way of preventing it for it to be fun. And uh, currently, it's something I would just immediately disable. Walls and floors are not possible to dig. See, I don't think that's a solution. Is that an elf? Like, I... I don't think that is a good thing to change in the game right now. And if you want that type of game, there are other games out there that have very unsatisfying, unpleasant gameplay that exists. And you can go play those games, right? Um, those are games that claim that losing is fun when losing really isn't fun. Losing is fun when you can control it. Losing isn't fun when you can't. So as somebody who's played this game for over a decade on and off, and as somebody who's played every single major iteration of the game, they've had stuff like what you're talking about before, and they were removed from the game in a lot of cases. I think what you need to realize is that... This isn't necessarily a game that is going to satisfy every single desire that you have. And I know that they've talked before about ways of letting goblins dig. And it's going to take time to get there. 
I have no idea why um, goblins can't destroy doors, if that's what you're asking about. If why enemies can't attack constructions, because this isn't a game that gives you direct control. And this isn't a game that gives you direct control. This is also a game that in the wider simulation, humans can't dig like dwarves can. Humans settlements are very shallow because they can't dig the way dwarves can. Right? Goblins can't. Humans can't. Elves can't dig at all. Right? I mean, if they're in a dwarven fort, they can be given a pick and you can make them dig because that's just how the game has to work mechanically. But elves can't and don't dig at all. I think that there are, people assume that this game is way more mechanically simple under the hood than it actually is. Digging is a unique dwarven trait already. At least to the level that dwarves can dig. And also, I think because you are assuming, us made, that the primary focus of this game is combat. It is a focus, but the primary focus of this game from the developer's perspective as I've spoken with them is the world generation and simulation side, not the combat. The combat is, or has always been a side focus outside of the depth of the actual combat itself. And by side focus, I mean the sieging, the mechanics of the sieging. It's very underdeveloped. We don't have proper siege engines, right? Yeah, exactly, Puppet. So I think what you need, yeah, it should, Hog Jockey. Um, there's also another mechanic that's been broken in this game for ages that hasn't been fixed because all of the development time is going into making adventure mode function, which is literally a second game running in the same game's engine. And that is cave adaptation. If you keep dwarves underground for a very, very, very long period of time, they're supposed to start vomiting and getting sick when they go up to the surface, which they don't do, and it bothers me. <laughs> that That's the thing. That, that bothers me more than doors not working, actually, is cave adaptation not working properly. But there's been points where cave adaptation has been controversial to the point where pe players have gotten so mad at the game that they've stopped playing for extended periods of time or refusing to update the game because of it. So I don't know. Since trolls are extinct, trolls are fixed in the patch that I'm playing currently, but I haven't been attacked by them yet still. Or rather, trolls are supposedly fixed, and I've seen screenshots of them being fixed, but I haven't been attacked by them still. So maybe I'm just settling in an area with not a lot of trolls, which is definitely possible, because I also just haven't seen any in the caverns. Oh, I need to set a place for you to train, don't I? Oh, jeez. Well, that was the wrong button. It's fine. Easy to set back up. That's a barracks, not a... Archery range? There you go. It hasn't worked since Premium came out. Because what happens is they walk outside and they instantly lose all cave adaptation stat. As for why? Shrug? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Dwarf Fortress doesn't even, like, Dwarf Fortress lit literally runs on free public libraries. I think, I, you know, I know people meme about Dwarf Fortress having ray tracing and running on UE5, but I think, like, the thing that you guys need to remember is Dwarf Fortress is, e even, like, in, in a joking sense, Dwarf Fortress has always been a very, 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 very budget game running on a very, 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 very tight budget. And because of that... None of that shit was ever a priority. Like, the, the priority for this game was make it run on as many systems as possible, and it does that. C++, Gabriel. Originally, it was C, though, because C++ didn't exist when they started. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Tarn's exact quote, too. Tarn loves to describe his work as shitty, which which makes me want to pull my hair out. 
Because simply put, it's not. <laughs> and uh, describing your work as shitty just makes people parrot it, par parrot it and call it shitty, which just makes people value it less. It used to be able to, up until premium. Well, maybe not a microwave, but it used to be able to run in terminal up until premium. The UI kind of borked that a bit. Oh, I thought I memorialized you. Did I not queue that up and place it? I guess I never placed it. No, oh well, let's go place that. Sorry, Zontir. I have a question. Clockworks. Just because I'm opposed to it, why why do you bring it up willingly? Would it be feasible? Fuck me, I hope not. <laughs> is the simple version. Like there was a there was a day where the the guy who ruined Rimworld and by that I made ri the Rimworld toolkit for Twitch was in my chat and um he said he was going to try and then came back like 6 months later and said fuck that shit. So um there is a DF hack script where you can preset lists of names to be thrown into legends or as migrants. Uh, so maybe you could tie something into DF hack. Um, but fuck off. That's all I have to say. Stop trying to ruin video games. For streamers, anyway. People have done it, hog, like at least a, three or four times. And. N there was once where it took off briefly on the subreddit and had about 15 viewers. Um, I've never seen one of those carry more than an average of two since. Uh, somebody had one at the launch of Premium that mostly worked and uh, nobody watched it. I, I rated it once kind of because I felt bad for it um, and it never sat at more than a couple, a couple viewers. Decent, cul distinct cultures. Do you ever read descriptions of dwarves because they have ge like genetics? Uh, do you ever read the description of the religions? Do you ever read about the gods? Do you ever look into the personalities of the leaders and look at what they do? It has distinct cultures and different settlements. It is not clear to the player how to find those cultures or settlements. I could not disagree with that statement more. Ectomorph. The problem is it doesn't show you how to find it. You wish the equipment was more varied? The thing is, it kind of is to a degree. It's just it pisses people off whenever it happens to them. <laughs> like, I had a faction recently that just straight up couldn't make high boots. Any marks was available? Sure. Uh, we got Besmer, Ingush, Saigon, Sokzul, Lycott, or Manam. Who do you want? Let's name one. You want to see civs with scimitars? That's a human thing, and lots of human civs have scimitars. And also, no, Dwarf Fortress will never get a tech tree the way you want it. How to ruin a video game immediately like this, that's like this, is give you a tech tree. The, the reason Dwarf Fortress is an interesting video game for me, and one of the reasons I've liked it as long as I have, is regardless of where I'm settling and what I'm doing, I can dig down to the lava and build lava forges and immediately start making steel. I can build a tower and put a windmill on it and start, like, grinding flower if I want. I am limited by my knowledge, not by the tech tree of the game. And the moment you lock a game behind a tech tree, you force the player to have to do things in a specific order. The worst part of Dwarf Fortress is if you're forced to do things in a specific order, which is part of the reason I don't really like playing Hunted Biomes, to be honest. All right, let's read this Dwarf's description. And chess. Whoop. Hen chest is now a mark store.
is frequently depressed after seeing an elf's dead body. He can be very single-minded and forms only fleeting and rare emotional bonds with others. He finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding and he is often cheerful. He has a greedy streak and he often is nervous. And he does not easily hate or develop negative feelings. He can handle stress and tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. He is very humble and when he's trying to remember something, he usually starts tapping his feet. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and likes working outdoors and only grumbles mildly at crappy weather. He doesn't really care about anything anymore. He dreams of creating a great work of art, personally disdains sacrifice, values knowledge, and has a harmon and values in a harmonious existence. He likes zinc and violet and larch wood and kiwi tooth and the color plum, picks and robes and the words of the fated ash, the god of death. Of course, he worships the god of death and is a member of one of the three religions that worships it, which is the fated faith. And, uh, his best friend is currently a ghost. Um. Hmm. Well then, I should deal with that. <laughs> you see, this is why people think Dwarf Fortress doesn't have varied cultures, Gabriel. It's because the players assume that every single faction in this game is identical. They assume that every single dwarf hates all elves, and they assume that every single elf hates all dwarves, and they assume that every single goblin hates everybody, and are all green, which half, more than half of them are gray, in fact, not green. And because people are very surface level with the amount of information they are willing to digest about a game like this. I mean, sure, but you could also argue that if you played adventure mode a lot, you'd notice things like every faction has different sculptures, different carvings. They put their images and flags on things. They encrust gems and create images with those gems on things, and that varies drastically from faction to faction. Art changes drastically from faction to faction. Materials that are available to different faction changes from faction to faction. Sure, do they all use the pretty templated weapons, armor? Yes. They all wear breastplates. They all wear, they all have uh, the same basic swords. Yes, they all use bows and arrows, but the images and materials that are available to them vary wildly from faction to faction, right? Like I had a faction for a while that had no access to iron in Dwarf Fortress. Maybe you're setting your materials too high. That could be a problem potentially, because if, you're, if you leave the materials on the default setting, they're everywhere. So everybody has access to everything. Maybe you need to lower the material availability because then you'll get attacked by humans wearing bronze and goblins using iron and dwarves who don't have access to steel, so they're using copper and silver. Maybe that's what you're saying? I don't think that having a tech tree fixes a game. A tech tree is a band-aid on a bad simulation game. And does this game need more and could this game be better? Absolutely. fucking lootly I a thousand percent agree. But I don't think that's what we're talking about. To a degree. At least not half the time. And if that's not, if that is what we're talking about, that it could be better in the future. Absolutely. But for what it is right now, you just need to look deeper. I shut up about it technically, have a tech, technically having a tech tree. It has the knowledge tech tree. Yes. But that's not what we're talking about. People are talking about mechanics and buildable things. So if we're going to be like, well, actually, yes, no, you're, you are correct. It does have a knowledge tech tree, but nobody looks at this screen. <laughs> which is unfortunate. So, considering, like, um, in, in chat here, Ek Ektemhoff specifically stated they're not talking about immaterial things. So, that's not the tech tree that we're talking about. I mean, I, I do too. I love this tree. This is one of my favorite parts of the game, actually. The Flutes of Tweeting is, uh, is a poetic form, uh, which originates in the Leap of Routes. The rules of the form are applied by poets to produce individual poems, which can be recited. Obviously. I mean, you can still do that. Right here. She's short and skinny. You can read her hair color. 
different factions have different dominant skin tones. If you go to an island that is completely separate, like one of the neatest things I ever did in adventure mode was I started as an elf on an island full of dwarves that had no metal whatsoever. But there was also no like creatures on the island that would actively kill them. So they didn't go extinct. So it was just like, if, if that dwarven faction was on the mainland, they would have died to humans or elves. And I started as an elf on this island and just wandered around and looked at what they'd built. They didn't, there was no fortresses. Their only fortress didn't go deeper than dirt because they had no pickaxes. They had no anvils. They had no way of doing anything, but they were there and they were generated and they were existing and they were farming. Sure, like Japan, why not? But like, another interesting thing is like goblins where their demon leader dies super early because they have no direction. So a goblin takes over and it's whatever that goblin's personality is. Most goblins are cruel and will just attack things because that's what their ethics are. But you, I ended up with a faction that was almost completely assimilated with dwarves. And so a dwarf became king of the goblins and that dwarf became allied with a dwarven faction. And so I never went to war with those goblins, right? Like it's, you, you need to, did they obtain the first anvil? Uh, let's not worry. They didn't, I didn't see any mining or any of that sort. So I think like what you need to realize is that there's a lot of things that Dwarf Fortress does that it doesn't tell the player at all. And that is a problem. And Dwarf Fortress needs to surface that more. But when somebody says Dwarf Fortress needs a tech tree and more buildings that some factions have that some factions don't have. I understand why you feel that way and why you want that. And that can be something that you want and that could be something that you mod into the game or that could be something that you could talk about. But I think you're coming at a problem that exists in the game from the wrong direction. I think Dwarf Fortress needs to give the player more tools to find the cultures in the game that already exist. Because adding a tech tree isn't gonna do that. And also Myths and Magic and the Myth Generator it's going to do a lot of that because what that's going to end up doing is it's going to end up making the worlds drastically different from world to world, which I have no idea how that's going to be surfaced in the game, but. I'm pretty sure you can do that already with modding in regards to blueprint sieves. I've had that several times, yeah, Zwari. And it's usually because they don't have a demonic leader. It's happened a number of times. You know, the last time I spoke with Tarn, he asked about how we would, f or I, I think he did this after like the interview was over, but he asked about how I would feel about pressing, pressing escape. And then, you know, how you have save, return to title menu, save and continue playing, retire fortress for the time being, abandon fortress, quit. What's what if there was one like right around here? that just said quit to legends. And then when you click that button, just a return to game button, you would have to wait for this save, this quick save screen to go through. You'd have to wait for this save. Then you would have to wait for it to load legends. So for me, it would be like, in this particular world, it would probably be about a two minute load screen. And that's his concern is he's worried that people wouldn't be okay with that two minute load screen. But based on the number of people that have been asking for it, he's caving, guys, keep asking. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> keep asking. I started to value the graphics a lot more because they gave you really handy hints for world building. You see, here's the, here's the, the the reason old players would disagree with you. You're not wrong, and and also that is you are a type of person, right, Minicnoid? So your your statement is a thousand percent valid. The reason old players will disagree with you and people who played the game in ASCII will disagree with you is ASCII forces you to do something that this version of the game doesn't. ASCII forces you to in in adventure mode. Um, also, I... Okay, no, I did name that. I was about to say, shit, I missed a dwarf. No, I didn't. Um, ASCII forces you to click on a dwarf, okay? Click on the health button. Click on the description button. Although in ASCII, it was K 
KPL, K, KPZ, no, K, KPZ, enter, no, KP enter Z, one of the two. I, I could probably, I could figure it out in about 10 seconds if I was running that version of the game. Here, actually, you know what? Fuck it. Um, give, give me like two seconds. That was Teams. I never intentionally launched Teams. Where's my desktop? There's my desktop. Uh, version 47, uh, Dwarf Fortress. Yes, scroll down, press enter. Hopefully it doesn't crash. No, I don't want it in full screen mode. Ah! Uh, start playing. Oh, geez. Um, continue. No, not Arch Crystal. Uh, sure. Why not this fort? I think it might actually be V. Hm. It's trying to load a tile set that it can't. Well, it's trying. We'll see. I can't remember how I have this save file set up, so... But I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that there's two tile sets printing on screen right now. Let's give it a moment. Ah, there it is. Um, so, this is a, a tile set that I don't actually like playing with that much, but was recording for reasons. Um, so, you hit uh, V, uh, P, Z, enter. And this would give you all the information about Dwarf. Same number of buttons, approximately. I mean, this, the, in, the, in this version, you uh, click, click, click. Yeah, three, it's three, three buttons. So instead of um, V, P, Z, enter. But the reason some people like the older version is it forces you, even with this graphical tile set, to look at things. Look at the description of things. What is that thing? Right? So if you're playing in ASCII, you have to hit enter on that and look at it. This is day site. Okay, well, it says it's day site up there, so that's not super helpful. But, like... In this version of the game, I never have a moment where I go, what the fuck, what is that? Yeah, getting to the health screen's a bit quicker. I wouldn't say it's necessarily easier. The same information is available in 47. But you can get to the health screen quicker, yeah. And also, there is a DF hack screen that a lot of people remember as a health screen that isn't the actual health screen. I think, like, like I said, the, the, as a, as a long-term player of this game, what new players stumble upon is fortress mode in this version of the game, and probably adventure mode when it comes to this tile set, lacks a specific necessity that older versions of the game had. And this is going to sound extraordinarily weird. And this is also why you get some clashing between the old player base and the new player base. Admittedly, the old player base is very small. And that is uh, also part of the reason why some people who were part of that old player base have just dropped the game entirely. Okay? And that is curiosity. Older versions of the game allow for, or force the player, rather, to be curious. This version of the game doesn't as much. And what I mean by that is... When a demon spawns in older versions of the game, it's an and symbol. You don't know what it does. You don't know what it looks like. And you'll get 50 of them, and they're all different colors, and they're all and symbols. And you go, oh God, what do I do? I can't pick them apart, so you pause. You hit K, and you select it. And this is what Ektimhoff says. Reading about different cultures is fun a few times. Okay, sure. But if uh, there is to be an advanced specialization in tech, special, no. There, if there was an incentive for you to focus on something that changes the gameplay, it would always be fun. There is something that's focused for you, incentive for you to, that changes the gameplay. It's called science and tech, like building stuff, like powered stuff. I think what you, okay, what you're saying things that are unique, right? I think kind of what the game is working towards with this mechanic that you're talking about, which doesn't exist, is myths and magic, right? Because every single world is going to have unique magic tech. That is the point of the myths generator that they're working on. I think you want a different game. 
I think you like the tech that Dwarf Fortress has. I think you like the procedural generation that Dwarf Fortress has. This, this is almost a... You're actually not wrong, Gabriel. This is a this is a very interesting... That's fine. Typos are fine. Um, as long as I can decipher it, and I'm pretty used to that these days. I have to deal with diamonds sometimes. Presmi, thank you very much for the 14th month. Welcome back. I think what you need to realize is that The way the game is right now, if reading don't do it for you, you gotta wait until there is a major content shift, until there is a major content update. Because I, unless you are primarily settling on undead biomes and near necromancer towers where necromancers exper where necromancer experiments attack you which does give you pretty dramatic shifts in the kind of content you have to deal with threats wise because there's like what 14 different kinds of possible evil weather you could have to deal with um infinite uh various well maybe not infinite but massive variations in the types of necromancer experiments you could have to deal with if that doesn't do it for you I don't want a tech tree in this game, and I'm not alone. If you want threat variation, settle near necromancer towers in very evil areas. You clearly don't like everything about this game because you're complaining about the way the game gives you information and you are asking for a different video game. You're not asking for variety. You're asking for a different video game. You're asking about late game tech and removing things from the player's access is what you're asking for. If I'm understanding you correctly. If I'm not understanding you correctly, please tell me how I'm not understanding you correctly. Did I pull the sleeve? No, I didn't. Trying to open this up. So I can refill my well. Back up to maximum. All right, so I need to pull this. But here's the thing, you don't have to like everything about this game. And that's one of the reasons I like it is because the, the people who are making it aren't trying to make a game for everybody. I think when you try and make a game for everybody, you make a game for nobody. And this isn't trying to be a game for everybody, which is part of the reason I like it so much. If you're talking about wanting guided progression, th you're never going to get that in this game. If that's what you're talking about. Which I'm not even certain you are, because I'm having a hard time following, if I'm being honest. Sometimes hard to read or discover on it, but maybe that's just you. Also, a lot of, I think, the complaints that people are talking about, like what Tanker just said, is largely, in my opinion, solved by Legends mode. Uh, not Legends mode, Adventure mode. Like, a lot of your problems with not being able to find cool things. Even if, let's just say, you're somebody who doesn't like Legends mode mechanically, which plenty of people don't. In Legends, you are 100% free to just go and have a conversation with the Queen. Ask her about how she feels about, let's just say the ethics of murder. <laughs> um, and that'll give you a lot of information about how the faction works. It's not a reward for playing a certain way. It's a punishment for playing the game. That's, that's the difference that we have in like the feeling about what a tech tree is. It is a punishment for playing the game. The game punishes you for not having enough time to play the game. Right? That is what a tech tree is.
It's the game punishing you for not having time. <laughs> That's what a tech tree is. It's wasting the player's time, which should be rewarded with knowledge. So I'm, I'm coming at this from um, somebody who plays, or I guess played, I don't play as many of them these days, a lot of roguelikes, proper ones. The War Fortress comes from that lineage. You don't need to be rewarded for playing a video game. The reward that you get is the story that you've built in your head. Think about, like, the design concept of Dwarf Fortress is fantasy Mad Libs. As you play Adventure Mode Legend or read Legends Mode or play Fortress Mode, you meet characters, right? You learn about those characters ideally and you remember some of them ideally you the player not the game right the reward for doing well in a fortress is the ability to be like dude i found a faction that had a gorlak queen and we rescued her successfully from the fortress that she was being held captive in. Once she arrived with her group of refugees, we built up a huge defense and fought off a thousand goblins. During that battle, we lost most of our soldiers and it was a horrific. So we sent out a small party to start a new fort. And then before that fortress was able to get up to power, unfortunately, an army of 2000 goblins attacked my fortress. And now we're trying to get vengeance. That is what's happening in this fortress right now. That is my reward for my gameplay. You want a cannon. We're playing a different video game, if that's what you want. And that's okay. There are games for that. It's called RimWorld, right? 5,000 goblins. I, I'm pretty sure it was actually 2,000. In it was like 1,800 or something, but I need to go look at the VOD again. But Right? So we're, we're playing a different game. I'm playing fantasy Mad Libs story building in my brain. You want a cannon. I'm just saying, can you might not want a cannon. You, you might want, uh, I, I don't know, uh, 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 um, windmills that are bigger. To which I have to say, cool. Wait for patches. But even then, I will be shocked if there's ever a reality. Like, I, I know Tarn wants to, like, have that mundane slider, right? Where you can slide the slider all the way down to all the way mundane, and it won't even generate you dwarves because there won't be any magical creatures whatsoever, all the way up to massive magic where the world won't be playable, but you can read the legends because the world just becomes a writhing mass of eyeballs and, like, weird Cthulhu tentacles. Right? Like, this is a game for a, that is designed by a very specific person for a very specific type of person. And if that's not for you, that's okay. But I think what you want from this game is something that the modding community can potentially provide for you and not something that the game's development direction is going to provide for you. Because that's not the direction that they're developing in. Oh, hi. I do, in fact, have Twitch. I'm also streaming on YouTube, believe it or not, on the YouTube channel that I have primarily. So I do stream on YouTube. I just don't it, don't promote it as much. Hi, YouTube chat. I see you. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. <laughs> um, hmm. You want your dwarves to drink milk. You know what's funny? Go to your Raws, uh, control F milk, and then add the tag drinkable liquid fun fact you could also do this to lava i wouldn't recommend it your dwarves might explode into fire if you run out of booze or will explode into fire when you run when you run out of booze <laughs> like and subscribe yeah i mean rimworld wouldn't exist without dwarf fortress and rimworld's popularity is largely largely owed to the mythic popularity of Dwarf Fortress and the memes of Dwarf Fortress. But it's a very different game. It's a game made for an audience that didn't like Dwarf Fortress, which is why I don't like RimWorld that much. It's fine. I've played it a lot. I never want to play it again. Yep. Well, one of the 
no, they, the first real influx of success that RimWorld had was on the DF forums, yes. Um, the first mention of RimWorld was on, like, Ludian's forums. <laughs> and Tynan's Twitter. Also, we've got this lava flowing, which is what I need. Sweet. So I can now go up to here to where that water is, which is right here. And I can go to here and I can pull this lever. It's pumping again. I mean, so RimWorld is a game that has more or less everything that Ektimhoff here is asking for mechanically in Dwarf Fortress. Very restricted endgame mechanics. Some of them are even locked behind DLCs, if that's your cup of tea. Um, specific tech trees to work towards, because you consider that a reward. Every time I... Back when I used to force myself to play that game, because it was the only game that people would watch me play at the time, I would mod the tech tree out of the game. <laughs> right up until 1.0, when that kind of stopped really being an option because they made the game worse. Um, because that was the only way I felt that that game was fun for me. Because without modding the tech tree out of the game, I couldn't just decide one day that I wanted to build an endgame thing first, even though it would take me ten times as long. They're very different games. It's a different type of game for a different type of audience. You would not lock anything that exists in the game now. Sure. But you would lock things that are advanced. So... What is advanced in Dwarf Fortress? Is it minecarts or a minecart-like equivalent? Or is it the fact that I know that with a minecart, I can launch an item across the map? Or would you lock some sort of faster, better rollers? Because no, that's stupid. Why in the world would you suddenly break the precedent of the game that of something that the game has always had? Besides, you don't want culture in Dwarf Fortress then. What you want is a tech, you want player controlled culture. That's not culture in Dwarf Fortress. I think another problem that you're stumbling into is that the player doesn't fucking matter in this game. In fact, the game openly mocks the player. When you go into Legends and look at a fortress that you've retired, it literally says, the fortress has regained consciousness after a period of sense of questionable judgment. The game is literally mocking your poor decisions and the way that you are ruining the game's existence. The game is a peaceful simulation that is doing its thing and killing each other, and the player jumps in and destroys it all. You already have an unfair advantage over the world because you are better at it than the world is. You can see more information than the world can. Right? So, you don't want culture in the game, you want a tech tree. You're complaining that the game doesn't have culture. If, in my opinion... What you're asking for was in the game, the way it would be implemented, and the way it probably would be implemented if it was in the game, is that one dwarven faction has access to a flying machine, whereas another dwarven faction has access to boats. And that would piss you off for a completely different reason. Because half of the chat would be playing right now, and they'd be like, Fuck me, why can't I make boats? In fact, this sort of stuff already does exist, because... Dwarves can't make whips. And almost every day, maybe almost, not quite every day, quite frequently, I will have people pop into my chat and be like, why can't I make whips? Nobody ever asks about fucking, like, uh, scimitars or masks. They ask about whips. High boots are also a 50-50, yeah. Some of this stuff exists, and all it does actively is annoy players. Because you can't access something. And gives a presentation, you'd lose it if you can make a cemetery. That would be neat. <laughs> it would be neat. But I think it would actually just piss most players off. <sighs> I think the equivalent of a tech tree in this game is your knowledge of the actual game mechanics. I've been talking about this for years. I actually said this earlier. Yeah, more, more or less the same thing um, about the knowledge of game mechanics. It's, it rewards game knowledge, not gameplay. 
Reading Legends in in in, uh, in New World, I thought it, and it was really things, but I found a place where there were two polar bears settled together, male and female, and they died together of old age. Aww. Oh, you mean like a, a bigger dictionary? Hands worst? No, I, I know what you mean. I, I do agree that it would be nice if they expanded the world. Anyway, I'm just going to read off what Ektimhoff said here. Uh, I, I would not lock everything that exists in the world game now, but uh, some new advanced stuff could be further, could be a further culture focus and it's just something to talk about in chat, not something I demand everyone to agree on. I don't think it's something to talk about in chat. The second you have technology that is accessible in one playthrough that isn't accessible in another playthrough, the player base of this game gets pissed. Neither are birds, but that's besides the point. Manicord. Oh, I'm, I'm reading the, the YouTube chat. Wanting a bigger dictionary. I agree. M more words in Dwarf Fortress would be great. Can you contact, say, whips from a human sieve through trading already? Oh, yeah. No, you can absolutely acquire items from humans. Totally. If you're trading with humans and you have royalty, which is also a mechanic that a lot of people say is bad and refuse to interact with. <laughs> Lol. Uh, if you have royalty in your fort... Um, then you, they will send a royal treasurer, and when they send, or, or, or not, is it the royal treasurer? It's either the royal treasurer or like the merchant's guild guy, whatever. Um, the person from the merchant's guild they send from the human civs, and the then then you can request items. Hi, YouTube. From Reinhardt. Yeah, you can, I mean, sure, arresting people will take their stuff too, certainly. Okay, actually, I need to go up. Because this is going to start dumping lava in a little bit. Oh, here it comes. This is what I've been working towards for the last little bit. Urban engineering. Requesting blade weed for green dye. I wish we could see colors of dye on clothing. Something else that I think will also help with this like issue that people have with this game, which we've been talking about, is the portraits. Because it's going to give you a much clearer sense of the number of skin tones in this game and the number of different clothing items. Um, I don't know. I I had a number of scholars debating about police for years and writing books about them in Long Death. Um, if you if you're asking, can they unlock equip equipment for the player? No. Can they discover equipment? I've never seen them debating it, but I've also never list looked at the full list of things that they can discuss and learn about on the wiki. Are we getting dwarf child sprites? They already exist. Fun fact: I've seen them. <laughs> It's just a matter of Tarn sitting down for five days and, like, writing them into the game with all the variations. And Putnam apparently doesn't know her way around the code, that part of the code, too well. So it's something that Tarn just needs to sit down and do. But Tarn is finishing adventure mode. It's something that would be nice, but isn't a priority. Yeah, there's astronomy that they can discover, certainly. Let the man cook. Yeah. Let the man cook and have a decent work-life balance. I, I, It's not something that bothers me that it's not in the game, but it, yeah, it would be nice. It certainly would be nice. That is true. Oh, I know why these aren't filling. I know why these aren't filling. I haven't pulled the levers and shut the rest of them. So I'm just dumping lava over here. That's why this is like, I'm sitting here going like, why isn't this filling? It's like perplexing me. It's because I'm dumping lava into this part of the caverns over here. Get these pulled, please. Thank you. 
It's also like causing the fort to lag pretty seriously. <laughs> Like, also, this is this is a game where most people... Like, I think if this game needs to work on something specifically, it's the, early, it's the new player onboarding. Because the number of streamers that I watched play this game, and, like, also how to discover exciting things. The number of streamers that I watched play this game in the first month that this game was out, who didn't even make it past the first, like, 30 minutes because they found the game boring, is downright depressing. Because they're just like, oh, nothing happened. I think it is pretty good. I, I do. I, I don't know how it could be better. They lack imagination. I don't disagree with that. But I think it's a thing that the game could be better at. Oh yeah, no, we we are uh, pumping lava to all the way up here into this little reservoir right here from here and then pouring it down into the into the fire. Certainly you 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 can absolutely enjoy the chill nature of this game. I also really like how chill it can be. But I think for people who don't want a chill game, I think it should be easier for them to learn how to find the exciting shit, which absolutely exists. It's just a matter of finding it, right? And knowing how to find it. Not everybody knows how to find it. Not everybody is willing to put in the work to find it, and I think that's a shame. And the caverns are certainly trying. It's just annoying as hell because the characters in the caverns fly. But hey, it's letting me burn these toads, so I guess that's good. There's also probably like, you know, a hundred things that want me dead right here. Totally. No, I mean, like, that's something that I think could absolutely be fixed. You know? Like, enemies showing... Well, the th you, you want to know why they always show up in one point in the game? There is a reason for it. Like, when I get attacked, enemies are coming from down here. Right? There's also a pretty big mountain... Like, not mountain, but, like, pretty big cliff right here in, like, the overworld. So, when they come up, they almost always come from the south. Because on the surface, there's only one real spot that they can show up. And that's like up here on the edge of this mound because they don't want to walk straight up. And this side is way smoother. So they always come from right here because it's the logical direction for them to come from. Why are we dumping lava into the caverns? Because there's annoying creatures that want me dead in the caverns. In fact, I need to dump more lava into the caverns. I need to make one for like right here. I could probably do that actually. But, all right, we got another spot to dump lava into the caverns from right here. Let's get to it. Uh oh, maybe not right there. One further over. Or, hmm. Can I do it? No, I can't do it in there. I can do it. Ah, let's do it right here. Eh, let's let's go the other way. Go up one. Over. Move up to right there. Over. We're trying to feed them fire. Yes. 
The guilds of principle. I don't need no more performance troops. That's fine. Somebody is fighting. Oh, I'm sure that's things catching fire. Hmm. Look how much lava is right there. Calarir, thank you very much for the second month. Welcome back. There's a few things that are bugged about domestication in the game in this version that are known bugs that Tarn is aware of that he hasn't fixed because adventure mode. <laughs> you know, I really... I, I feel bad for people listening to me talk because the number of times that I'm just like, that is a thing that they're working on, but haven't because adventure mode. Which is, I, I understand why, I, I, I rather, I can understand to a degree why there are people who've never played adventure mode or people who don't think adventure mode is important or don't care to learn why it's interesting, um, who are anno perpetually annoyed with this game because whenever they can think of a problem, there's some jackass on the internet who's just like, but adventure mode. <laughs> because like, I think a lot of people think about, you know, multiplayer modes in a game where it's like normal to just completely ignore a mode. Because they cry. They do cry. It does, in fact, make them cry. Unless they are tough. Uh, I don't know. I haven't uh, I haven't explored the lower cavern layers, really. I've only explored this one cavern layer, and I've just been getting cave swallow people in this one cavern layer. There's plenty of lizard people in the world, though, because they keep showing up as necromancers. Maybe the lizard people are just smarter than the, the cave bird people. Cave bird people are just having, you know... Smooth brain moments. The secret lizard people government? Kind of. They're all necromancers as well. You're looking forward to uh, adventure mode. You always found that the UI in adventure mode to be... Ex you know, it's, it's really funny. Some people found the fortress mode UI to be obtuse. Some people found the adventure mode UI to be obtuse. It's just like different people. You know what's ironic is I actually had a lizard man overlord in this fort for a minute. Curious, is there something just mass canceling somewhere? There might be something stuck somewhere. Let's find out. Nope. All right. Well then. Let's uh, check down here. This door, maybe? Are you making my game lag? Huh. Well, that's funny. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the 30 frames, you stupid necro experiment. That person? No, it's a zombie. Not a, not, not a, not a, a were creature. Friendly zombie necromancer experiment. What's a good way of automating food and drink production? I might be a bad person to ask because when this number goes below a thousand, I queue up 500 meals. And when this drink goes, when this number goes below a hundred, I queue up 500 drinks. And that's basically how I do it. Cause I don't think hitting like you on the keyboard or whatever, and then hitting this button and then hitting that and then typing in brew thing, type in the number like once every 30 minutes is a big hassle. Um, if you want to automate it, if you want to do it the easy way and you don't care about job cancellations occasionally, just go to your lavish meals and click this button and then click when number of unrotten prepared meals is less than, I don't know, a hundred. Um, and your number of unrotten cookable solid items is greater than, let's just say 50, because it probably will be. Um, 
and then just click this button once and then just say checked monthly and then set this number to like 100. They will, you know, just make meals. That is literally your your way to automate stuff in Door Fortress. Is just automates. Is just the, the the work order screen. Somebody was brawling under the influence. Who? Who dill? Oh, anyway, starting fist fight. Who are you starting a fist fight with? Ooh, you just punched somebody, or that, or you're vomiting. Yeah, I think you're vomiting because there's no combat lock. Door running around vomiting. Well, someone's had too many drinks. Resentful after top. <laughs> you toppled something. What did I wonder what you toppled? At least you feel resentful. Which means you might be okay with going to prison. There's also probably everybody reporting your crimes now. Vandalism? Ah, look at this. Interrogate 42 witnesses. Holy shit. Uh, and convict. Someone's going. Where, where in the world are you going? You know, uh, Clairvore, you, you want to know a secret? You want to know a real big secret? Announce no job cancellations? It's gone. Forever. It'll never be there ever again. What did he topple? I don't know, but I want to find it. Whoa! What do you have against Nil? Do you even know Nil? Why did you walk all the way down here to beat the shit out of Nil? <laughs> uh, I use DF hack. I type in um, tutori hide tutorials. I don't think there is a way in without DF hack to do it right now. Aside from just going through and clicking them. Did he steal a lover? I I have no idea. Loyalty cascades have not really been a thing since this version of the game came out. There still is a DF hack command to get rid of them, but... I mean, it gets rid of the icon, which is what Clairvore was talking about. I usually leave it up there because I actually find reading what the cancellations are kind of useful. Believe it or not. You've been living in fear of it? Um, the funny thing about loyalty cascades is they're kind of a sort of intended mechanic. Um, but there was a pretty heavy change made to the way... Um, dwarves respond to their friends getting murdered. Basically, like, they stop attack... They stop... They stop blaming... Uh, new so, unless you are in the... Mm, the only way to really cause in a loyalty cascade in the current version, because the only way I've done it, and I only did it once, um, is you have to tell your dwarves, as military dwarves, to attack your own dwarves while they're tantruming. If you do that, you might get a loyalty cascade because anybody who is a kindred spirit, like the maximum amount of um, happiness or um, ma maximum amount of relation without being a lover or a lover with somebody, it can cause their kindred spirits to go berserk. But I've only seen it happen once, and I haven't seen it cascade out of that. Um, loyalty cascades and tantrum spirals are both mostly a thing in the past of the past, which is why you have dwarves. What's the word? Explosively, like, or not explosively? Um, which is why you have dwarves. Um, I should probably check in on that lava. There seems to be an excessive amount of lava in the front porch. Um, which is why you have dwarves kind of uh, uh, brawling under the influence and uh, starting tavern brawls. That is a mechanic that was added because I 
don't... I am of the opinion, largely, that forts shouldn't be 100% safe. I think that if a, 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 a perfectly safe fort is a very boring fort. And that is just something that I feel. Um, and if you want to avoid tavern brawls, just don't assign a tavern keeper. It's, it's, it's that simple. That's what causes them. Is tavern keepers so don't have a tavern keeper which will keep your dwarves slightly less happy and will make acquiring drinks more of a pain but you know i mean wouldn't you want to clean yourself if you had somebody else's blood on you you are correct she wants a shower because she has blood in her teeth and in her eye Anyway, now she doesn't, but she does have water all over her now. She probably makes soap. Hey, at least she cleaned up her own. At least she cleaned up the blood that she washed off of herself. Probably convict her of some crimes. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, we're only in early winter. I just crashed the game. If you click Fortress Guard and click Convicts, it crashes the game. <laughs> in the beta branch. Rumble. Which was funny, because I thought that was fixed yesterday. Ninth of Moonstone, early winter. First of Moonstone, 20th of Timber. Oh, also, I think I'm only, like, a few days behind. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure when was the last save? Is 18 minutes ago was the last save of the game? Not that far back. I was pausing the game a lot. She did, in fact, bite him, yes. Cheers, Judo C. Yeah, it's weird because um, plants are, like, not fully developed at all. So does this be... Okay. I'm, we, we lost half a month. That's actually not that much time in game. I just need to start something else digging. Because most of the time has been me talking. Honestly. Let's go to about... I didn't know you're not the only one dying to werebeasts. Werebeasts are something that you learn to avoid. I kind of intentionally don't these days because I find avoiding them to be less fun than having to deal with them sometimes. But you can also just turn them off if you don't like them. This is going to cancel because of the, 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 the lava right here, but that's fine, I'll stick through it. Werebeasts are the riskiest enemies in DF. Yeah, they are one of the hardest to deal with enemies in DF. I also understand why people turn them off. It makes sense to me. Although, actually, we'll leave that one open for a bit. It's fine. I, I, f I feel like most people's first werebeast encounter, unless it manages to not get into the fortress, will kill their fortress. I forgot to name a dwarf after the last redeem. Shit, Reinhardt, what kind of dwarf do you want? Any dwarf before you go to sleep. Um... Reinhardt often feels filled with joy and is always in love with somebody and easily develops positive feelings, is an optimist and does not enjoy participating in physical confrontations and works to square this natural tendency with his respect to martial prowess. He does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity and he is conflicted by this. He values artwork and his creation. He has a sense of duty and he rarely feels discouraged. He can occasionally lose focus on the matter at hand and can sometimes... Uh, 
act without deliberation. He does not often feel lustful and takes uh, offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful and tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions and doesn't mind a little tumult and discord in day-to-day -day living. And when he gets exasperated, he often points and shakes his finger. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors at least for a time. At least I know how to fix the frame right now. Pause the game. It <laughs> Unlock the goddamn door. Um... He often feels filled with joy and is always in love with somebody and does not enjoy participating in physical confrontations. He works to spread his natural tendency with his respective martial prowess, and he uh, does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity, and he is conflicted by this as he values artwork in his creation. He has a sense of duty, and he rarely feels discouraged. Occasionally, he can lose focus on the matter at hand and can sometimes act without deliberation. He does not often feel lustful, and he takes offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful, and he tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions, and he doesn't tempt mind a little too much in discord and day-to-day -day living. Also, if somebody could like go back in the VOD, it's not too far back and clip that crash and give me a link that would be extraordinarily helpful uh this dwarf is the high urn which means they are a raised religious figure of the doctrine of asher ashes you were in fact a holy burial before that uh the holy burial is the lower rank uh, uh, within this particular religion um you worship the god of death uh, underneath the, the, the Doctrine of Ashes. You have a wife named Erish, and, uh... It's interesting. Unless I am just not seeing it. Oh, there, there's your deity. I was gonna say, you don't worship the deity, yet you're a part of this religion. How's that You do worship the deity. Um, yeah, you have many close friends. You could use some new clothing, but that's okay. And, uh, you're uneasy after being able to pray for too long. I think you're too busy. I'm actually gonna remove you from your tasks. But I'm also just going to give you orderlies, and we'll say hauler. Eh, maybe not hauling. We'll just give you orderlies as a as a task to do. There is a naked man in my tavern. Probably wants to join my fort. I'm going to say no. I'm also going to check my military gear. Okay, let's just update equipment. I need more shields. How much steel am I actually sitting on? Eight steel bars. So I can make eight steel shields. Um, let's just check bars. Iron. Okay. Uh, link the clip in chat, please. I'm I'm just gonna forward it to Putnam. Just be like, hey, heads up, this crashes game consistently. And was in game yesterday and is still in game today, so. Gonna say I know that there's more stuff I can mine up here. Oopsies, that's not what I wanted to do. I also saw some tetrahedrite yesterday while digging, and I need to figure out where that is. How's your dwarf doing? Let's check in. Give me a sec. I'm prospecting. Actually, let's go from over here and go down a layer. Uh, you need to set the... If you're playing on the experimental, you also need to set DF hack to the same experimental branch. DF hack also has separate branches.
and you turn off workshops taking orders, forbid the workshop. I'm in an ad break right now on Twitch, so just I'm pausing the game. But uh, looking at YouTube chat, yeah, forbid the workshop. Like, if you want a workshop to not take orders, forbid it. Literally just click forbid on the workshop. Like, um, if you want a specific workshop to not take orders, you can just go, um, where's the button? Thunk. See the material that's made out of? Forbid it. Just orders? Do you, if you want particular workshops making stuff, or if you want less workshops making a thing, if you go to here, you can type in a number here and it'll say the number of workshops that can do it. So if you want, say, only three workshops to be able, or three workshops to be able to make Pearl Ash for whatever reason, or maybe you only want two workshops to be able to collect sand, set it to that. And then the workshops that have less tasks actively on them will go do them. As an example, um, when I'm making glass, I have these up here that just do sand, and then these two don't do sand. So usually what I'll do is I'll pause the collect sand job on these ones, and then queue up collect sand, because there's just collect sand is sitting here paused, so it can they can never have collect sand assigned. Or rather, this one should have it paused. But um, I need to reassign this whole job. But when I queue up sand, I just pop down to these two workshops and forbid them. And then also, if you go to... Uh, a workshop, I could say, collect sand, um, 100, then go to this one, and then click, uh, collect sand, 1 or 10, I don't know, um, and then go to this one, and then click, uh, collect sand, um, oops, wrong, wrong button, uh, go to work orders, and then click, collect sand, and then give them a number. Could also do that. But you can only do that if you have a manager assigned. And then once this gets confirmed, it'll pop up here. It'll collect sand. I'm also running out of wood. I need to go hack down more trees. I'm gonna make the cavern creatures real happy with me. Whoa, I just saw blood moving. Probably because lava's pouring on it. <laughs> Um, I should probably stop that lava from flowing now. That's, that's, hmm. I do got to say that, um, I think this has worked. Pretty efficiently, at least for the most part in this area. What makes you say that? I mean... So it's warm on this side. No, there is no goblinite anywhere. There's no goblins down here. Well, I mean, there there has been goblinite in this fort. I burned them. They were all over here. They're not anymore. I, I did set them on fire when they came through, because I can set fire through here. Yeah, what Matt Cat's saying. Yeah, that, that all stuff you can do. How do I deal with agitated wildlife? Sharp objects? Um, I mean, if I settle somewhere that's going to have agitated wildlife, which is going to be um, a untamed wilds area, I just make sure that I build accordingly. Because what a it's more of a question of what agitates wildlife, not how do you deal with agitated wildlife, right? Because... Agitated wildlife in and of itself isn't that difficult to deal with. The problem is, is if you have agitated wildlife when you're not ready to deal with it. So what I make sure that I do is I don't allow, um, what's the word? I don't allow, um, my dwarves to do much on the surface until I have the materials that I need to be able to fight them. I don't need bone nor wood bolts, just yeah, maybe bone, but I don't need wood bolts. Those are also useful, yeah. Training anim training some of them as well. 
to fight back is also useful. There's plenty of ways to deal with them. But just don't agitate the surface until there is, like, a necessity to. Basically meaning, um... If you're playing on an untamed wild, untamed wilds biome where you're inevitably going to get agitated wildlife, don't, <laughs> don't, under any circumstances, damage the surface until you have at least a soldier, or some cage traps, or something to stop them. Uh, that's your browser settings, not Twitch. Uh, but, um, I think, or, or wait, actually, you're talking about, like, the def the default ones. Uh, you put, I, I put a space in between them sometimes. You probably do and don't realize it, Zwery. <laughs> Fucking idiot hack. What agitates wildlife? Building on the surface, digging on the surface, fishing, chopping down trees, harvesting plants. I think uh, trees are the most, like, damaging one when it comes to wildlife agitation. Same with digging, channeling. Basically, living on the surface agitates wildlife. I mean, that's not gonna make you like them more, Zwerry. Or them like you more, but I mean, it'll make it easier for you to gather the wood. <laughs> there was a bug in the very first version of the game. Oop, got a Goblin Snatcher here. Who's got quotes around their name, which means they've committed a crime here before. Ha! Ha! Criminal caught. Busted. I've seen screenshots. I haven't had them myself. Although I am getting a lot more beak dogs. But yeah, outside of screenshots on Reddit, I have not seen trolls specifically. Did I? Why is there two beds in that bedroom? <laughs> um. Captain of the Guard is less pissed off than he used to be, which is good. Finally giving him enough chains, I guess, helped. Your first ostrich chicks hatched? Sweet. You had a troll once? Hmm. I wrestled a bear once. I didn't actually. I just... It's a reference I had to make, and the five people in chat who understand that reference will go, Hey! I was going to say, I don't think those are war trainable unless you've modded your game, but... Love that band. They, they became a new band. Spirit Box, who every... Well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people who listen to Metal have heard of. Surface for agitated wildlife already got... Uh, I got already... Does, the one you got already, it's probably 10 years of constant fighting with freaking giant ravens. If you hide underground for a little bit and don't do anything on the surface, they will stop attacking you after a while. Just a heads up. Shoutouts to this the, this goblin who's got a wife and a lover. <laughs> this goblin's a player. This goblin's also trying to escape, and it's making my whole game lag. All right, so I'm going to convict you of your newest crime. And uh, apparently, Atu uh, convicted a silver falcon to do something. Or convinced a silver falcon to do something, so let's see. 
Uh, in the early winter of 516, uh, they 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 uh, confessed to espionage in 516. So since they got here the second time, they've already been convicted of their previous crime, which was uh, convincing another dwarf to steal something, which they didn't do successfully. Um, a silver falcon owned trumpets in order to have an agent in Slaprock uh, met with a silver falcon and they made a threat and the plan works. Um, they plotted to steal Vi's numbers under the influence of subject. Oh, you just beat the ever-living shit out of him. We're gonna go beat somebody else now. Hold on, gotta lock you in. <laughs> Sorry. What's uh, your full... Oop. Hold on. Let's quick save. We gotta be careful in this screen. It's only like one line of text you need to add to a text file to make them more trainable. You could look it up on the wiki pretty easily if you do want to make them into warbirds. But there's still nothing stopping you from like chaining them up outside and using them as, um, I don't know, in an intimidation tactic. I'd be pretty intimidated. You know, there's somebody on my Discord who's just saying who's pinging me so fucking much. I'm just going to do them a favor and kick them from my Discord server, I think. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they are complaining about the existence of my Discord server. So how about we just do everybody a favor and just get you out of my Discord server? Like, I think this is a, a problem with you in my Discord server, not a problem with my Discord server. Yeah, they, are, they just left. Well, that saves me the trouble. What's funny is, like, they posted this screenshot on my Discord server with 215 announcements. You know you can pro tip for anybody on Discord. If you're in a streamer's Discord, they're going to ping you about shit. Second thing, you can mute rooms on Discord. Literally just, like, right-click mute channel until I turn it back on, if, like, that bothers you. It's totally a non-issue. I ain't going to fucking automate the whole thing for, for you. Give me a second, Zori. <clears throat> I don't think I have too much to read, though, so this should be pretty quick. Uh, I do not, in fact, have anything to read. So I will scroll up a little bit and say, Blue-footed go blue goblins should confess their small selection of socks. Cave spiders are spiders from the caves. Mincot are dwarven instruments of dwarven... Got up. Yeah, just mute it. Like, I'm, I'm not going to make you a fancy room on behalf of you being annoyed at the fact that I use my Discord and the features that it has. Also, I love the fact that they waited for 215 pings to complain about the pings. The fuck's wrong with you? What statue is the tablet? Uh, it's one that's only in the experimental branch right now. We've got Are You Serious cleaning the blood off themselves right now, and then I will unlock this door, and you can go chain Atu up, this goblin snatcher. Because they just had to beat somebody else. Uh, they punished somebody with a beating, and now is content. I have a fish dissector who's missing. It's mildly concerning. I don't see anybody fighting. Also, um, Napalm, let's check. You are still alive. You're currently conducting meetings. Uh, you're satisfied after repeating, re receiving water. I don't know why you received water. Um, an artifact was seen being stolen. We need to deal with that. Uh, but you um, do feel bored after being able to wander for too long. Who saw item being stolen? Shout outs to all of these dwarves reporting crimes. <laughs> Literally. Let me check this. But uh, yeah, the, the tablet um, artifact is what the cube artifacts are becoming. Theft. Okay, so 
Rovod. Did it. We have one Rovod who currently doesn't have a job. Ah, there you are. Where you, oh, you're trying to give it to this goblin. Zolok the, the, the goblin beast hunter. Well, I'm just going to convict you. Make everybody's life easy. Or interrogate you, rather. Because I don't really want you running off with my artifact. Wow, you've got a lot of fancy rings. Uh, quite rampant these days. Yep, they even saw it being passed, so we, we have legitimate reason, because I'm pretty sure the cop just witnessed it. It's interested near a splendid restraint. Satisfied after chaining up a creature, and we get to chain up another one in a moment. I'm just going to convict him. And then we'll interrogate and convict Rovod after this. This should be an open shut case. Yep. Pretty much. Uh-oh. Why am I fighting with a camel? Why is there a camel? <laughs> Apparently there's a camel with my fort and my dogs are killing it. I don't have camels in my fort, so I don't know where this camel came from. It might actually be because it's untamed wilds. It could actually just be a wild camel attacking us, which is very funny if that's the case. Whatever. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> but apparently we're fighting with a camel. Of course not. The camel can swim. Yeah, let's see what we learned. Wow. We actually didn't successfully interrogate him. All right, well, I'm locking the goddamn door. And we're going to interrogate you again. Turns out we do have several wit witnesses. Oh, we're trying to chain him up because I've already convicted him of the other crime, but I want to interrogate him first. We can chain him up. He's refusing to comply. God damn. This goblin's got some pretty intense resolve. Yeah, and then that's the other goblin that we interrogated. Is this guy a good liar? Must be. Well, he's a legendary appraiser, so probably. No, he's a dabbling liar. He's a legendary intimidator, comedian, flatterer, pacifier, and judge of intent. Man. I mean, I think this goblin is a lawyer, actually. also going to interrogate slash arrest this dwarf who's currently in hospital. Oh, never mind. Not the dwarf who's in hospital. Let's get a meat dendrizer. I mean, he's going to go into prison for a very, 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 very long time because I don't let them out of my cages. Also, is this in the timeline where I remembered to... Yes. Okay, so let's... I'm still not sure why that dwarf disappeared, by the way. I had a dwarf disappear, and I have no idea where they went. 
which is mildly concerning. Better Call Saul was a great show, I gotta say. Genuinely a great show. I really, really, really enjoyed that show. Chokes his way out? Yeah, I, I mean, who knows? Oh, right, yeah, I've, I keep forgetting I have this goblin in my fort. I was like, why is this goblin down here? Oh, right, yeah, you... Chat made me let some goblins into the fort. Duh. I liked Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad was one of my favorite shows from that era. It did get slow, but I don't know. I think the slowness of that show fit the vibe. I think that show was very good. Deviled on, thanks for the five packet gift subs. I greatly appreciate you. Yesterday was one of the slowest days of the month financially, and today is beating it, so appreciate you. Well, actually, no, technically that was Sunday. Sunday was terrible, <laughs> but eh, it's fine. It was also a bonus stream, so. Ironically, just a little bit of behind the scenes bitching for a second. There are days, because a lot of the revenue I make actually comes from resubs, like people who are actively subscribed and staying subscribed. So a lot of the revenue I make actually comes from resubs. Um, on Sunday, I made less money than I made on Monday, and I didn't stream on Monday. <laughs> oh, it's it's fine. Like, it's, it's, it's all good. I just think it's funny. <laughs> it all evens out in the end, too, so it's not really a big deal, but... I think the, the, the thing that a lot of people miss with Breaking Bad is main character is actually the bad guy and not somebody you should be hoping to win. Walter White is the bad guy. <laughs> that's the thing with Breaking Bad. And yeah, if, if that's not the kind of show that you, you enjoy, that's totally fair. Okay, so I need something. Probably tanned hides. Oh, bones, actually. Well, we gotta butcher an animal. We gotta butcher something. Let's just butcher a yak, probably. Or maybe just this alpaca. Let's butcher the alpaca. I don't know why there's an alpaca on my map as well. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen all of Breaking Bad twice. I actually rewatched it when the pandemic happened and then watched all of Better Call Saul. Because I rewatched Breaking Bad before I watched Better Call Saul. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I really liked Better Call Saul. I, I really like Breaking Bad. I think Breaking Bad is fucking phenomenal. I know it was in a cage. I don't know why I had one in a cage, because I never bought one. So, I'm, I'm aware of where it was. We may also find it dead. Wait a minute. Anything else specific you need? I wish they made Dexter good. I liked the ending of Dexter. I know that that's like not a popular opinion, but I like the ending of Dexter. I do actually quite like the ending of Dexter. I'll keep an eye on you vaguely. Something, something threw off the Emperor's groove in regards to the llama in a cage. Why does, it, why does it annoy you? You can completely compensate for the lack of friends and make them very happy, regardless of if they have friends or not. And I am somebody who uh, is lonely and wishes he had more friends, but is also terrible at making friends. So I consider, you consider those characters annoying them, annoying, I consider them relatable. So, you know, different strokes, I suppose. What makes the characters feel real and relatable to me is annoying to you. 
It's probably why I'm annoying to some people in real life, too. At least the dwarf's happy while I'm priving mining. But also, if you want to avoid that, play in bigger factions that have large populations. Because then they won't... Huh. Well, that's cool. I... Guess I understand why this is happening. <laughs> um, I should... Hmm. Hold this lever, I guess. I was wondering where that dwarf went. Hey, the dwarf... Did, did you get out? Shit, you did. Bring out your dead. Hmm. Well, that's awkward. Oh, well, this will drain pretty quick and we can get this body out of here. <laughs> Oops. Jeez, for everyone! There you go. Raging cave is now run off. Let's see what you're grabbing. Oh yeah, no, there's lots of ways they could have made Dexter better, but I don't know. I like Dexter for what it was. Mystery is solved. Uh, I mean, we still don't know if somebody pushed the dwarf or if they were just trying to push that wheelbarrow to go get a boulder. I think they were just trying to push that wheelbarrow to go get a boulder, but maybe they weren't. Yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed Dexter. I, I liked that show. The intro to Dexter and, like, the first two seasons of Dexter is, like, one some of the best television of all time. And then after that, it just, you know, it becomes a money-making schlock. And I enjoyed it for the money-making schlock that it was. I kind of just wish that Dexter just got arrested, but I don't know. I like Dexter. I can still hear the music. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a good piece of TV. Had the money re mummy returned yet? I've not seen the mummy since. Oh, duh. I'm smart. <laughs> Actually, I need to check how much um, ore I found, if any. Hey, there's some. There's some more. There's some more. There be some some more. There's some more. There's more. It's gonna take a while to mine out, but hey. Let's get a floodgate up in here. Some fighting happening. Yeah, we're, we're getting attacked by camels. <laughs> There's something really funny about that. Did this guy pick up a goblin bone to make an artifact? Um, I can guarantee you that isn't a goblin's bone. It was because that's not a goblin's name. So... It was probably either a named animal, which is possible, 
or it was a uh, name. Also, because every single goblin that's died on the map has died in fire. So this is probably either a cave uh, swallow person, which is unlikely. It's more likely it's probably a cave swallow's mount. Or one of my named dogs, which is even more likely. I'd say it's probably one of the one of the war dogs that was assigned that died, or a chicken or something. Once he finishes the craft, yeah. I'd be very surprised if it's goblin bone, because I would be very concerned about where did that bone come from. But yeah, we will see once he finishes it. That or it could just be a forgotten beast. Or a um, cave a cave toad. Check deceased? Nah, no, I'm good. We'll leave it to be a surprise. We'll find out once he finishes the artifact. Because it'll say what it is. I mean, to toads are the right size. I think it's a cave toad. Also, there's no way to search the deceased currently, not without using DF hack, which I don't feel like turning back on. They spit in our general direction. This is true. Dwarf can probably smooth that faster than I can build this. But it's too big to be a goblin regardless. We're carrying the Gabbro Floodgate. I guess I'm going to find out if it, putting gems on a uh, Gabbro Floodgate ruined the, the lava safeness of it. Oh, fell moods are pretty rad. It's just a shame that they're so hard to complete without intentionally just abusing your dwarves, which sucks. At least I don't like doing it. Some people don't care. <laughs> All right, so now that we've built that, Need to connect you. I was wrong, in fact. It is faster to build this. I just need to get this linked. With necromancers? Just wait. I mean, I, I had a um, a necromancer fight take about an hour and a half once because the frame rate goes so low. Here's the thing. That's not FPS death. Pe people state that that's FPS death. It's not FPS death. The reason it's not FPS death is it's recoverable. The game is just going to take a really long time to process all of that math. I don't agree with Zwerry, but... It's just if you set if you set up a necromancer fortress and intentionally intentionally try to fight with necromancers, it's going to wreck your computer. It's kind of like if you make an infinitely repeating wand in Noida, it's going to crawl the game down to nothing, right? So it's just a matter of being very patient. Or what you could do is 
have a squad of dwarves that are intelligent undead and not necromancers. That's probably the smarter way to do it, and usually what I do when I'm trying to make a, uh, in like a, a, a necromancer fort is just use intelligent undead because they're they don't resurrect the un, they don't resurrect the dead, um, or don't have too many necromancers in your squads. I think most people give up <laughs> on forts when their frame rate drops to zero and call it FPS death. The game will almost always recover with some exceptions. And some exceptions are a thing that won't go away. It's like fire on the surface can absolutely cause some pretty extreme fucking lag. It, it's not FPS death because fire will burn out eventually. You just need it to start raining, <laughs> quite literally. So it might take minutes, it might take hours. Um, if a dwarf is has a blue name and they can be assigned tasks, they're an intel intelligent undead. If they are not able to be assigned tasks, they are not an intelligent undead. There are two types of undead, smart and dumb ones. The smart ones um, j are join your faction and show up in this screen. If they're in the pets and livestock screen and either, or the other screen, ra rather, yeah, if they're in the other screen and said it's friendly, they're, they're not. Or they are but didn't join you, which is possible. Did that get linked already? No, it didn't. But ye FPS death used to be an inevitability in early days in Door Fortress. That hasn't been the case in a long time. Okay, what do you need? More bones, maybe? Raw green... Oh, actually, you definitely need raw green glass because... I used all of my raw green glass, I think. Yes, I did. He would just, I've literally, yeah, I, I, the last time I had a, um, a necromancer fort with a lot of undead around, I had um, a, an, an eagle, literally, or not an eagle, but a, a dude that would literally just like snipe birds out of the sky, which is pretty cool. Let's see if that's what you needed. Yes, that must have been what you needed because you've already got it. That was quick. Waiting for this to get pulled after it's been linked to a trigger. Did it die from fall damage, Zwari? But yeah, if if you if you are fighting with necromancers and zombies, you have to accept certain elements of lag. It's just going to happen. But fights might take a very, very, very long time. The kind of wonderful thing about Dwarf Fortress is for as wild and absurd of a video game as it is and how crazy a lot of the systems are it's actually remarkably stable and i i know that like there will always be people people who are just like bah, they're, they're bullshit game runs bad whatever whatever the fuck but like but for what it is it is remarkably stable and doesn't crash as often as it probably should <laughs> based on the kind of things that like players make the game do Has made 12 human zombies so far. On my YouTube channel, I have a highlight of a chunk of one of my streams called The Great Undying, which might give you some ideas on how to make zombies, if that's something you you are interested in. Although, just understand, the casualties and failures will be far higher than the successes. But if you would like to make um, zombies in your fortress, that, that'll give you a layout. Simply put, they only resurrect zombies when they're when they feel threatened. You know, talking to Putnam, I believe that the spaghetti code stuff is more of a myth. 
because Putnam's stating that the code is actually pretty organized. I, I'm inclined to believe her because she's seen it. And all the people calling it spaghetti code are Tarn just being self-deprecating. And um, people who've never seen the code. So I do actually wonder. I think that that might be a Tarnism exagger exaggeration. And Tarn exaggerates a lot. And Tarn is one of his own worst critics, so... The specific room you make? Ah, uh, I mean, there's several different layouts you could use that are pretty effective, but yeah. See, so yeah, I, I, I've, I've been hesitating to like continue to state the spaghetti code thing, especially like with how quickly Putnam can just like fix a thing with a piece of code she's never seen. So either Putnam is actually just a witch, uh, and Tarn is a wizard, or um, it's not as crazy as it sounds. Sure, yeah. It kind of read that way, but I'm, 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 I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here that you're not stating that there's one layout that works because there's definitely many different ways you can build it, but... Okay, so let's just forbid all of these boulders down here. Except for maybe that gem and see if I can get the gem out of here. Whatever. We'll forget. We'll forbid the gem too. Okay. So is that um, goblin still on their way out? Yes, you are. Ah, uh, sure. They can still be a wizard and a witch. What does that make Zach the scholar? He is a. He does have a master's in history, doesn't he? <laughs> Like he was a history and like archaeology guy, wasn't he? I'm pretty sure that's true. <laughs> He's the academic, I don't know. Is a warlock an academic wizard? I mean, I guess they're both technically academics, but... Warlocks are the jocks. I'll be honest, I don't pay too much attention to, like, different variations of lore for this type of thing, so. But I'm sure plenty of you know that. So what are the odds Dwarf stands on... Chat, what are the odds the Dwarf stands on the left here and gets stuck? What do you think? Fifty-fifty. Mildly curious. Um, I'm going to go get my sandwich, I think. I, okay, I haven't had a crash happen during that. Jeez Is it repeatable? Everyone. You GDP blind? Hold on, I'm, I'm sending uh, Putnam a crash log on the last one. Apparently Putnam uh, hasn't been updating the... According to the, this DM I just got, Putnam hasn't been updating the, 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 the beta branch for the last two days and instead made the crash logs better. <laughs> Which, honestly, I think that's more useful in a, in a way. Time, time, 148, so this was what, 1256 was the crash. That's very funny. Where are the crash logs? Go to the Dwarf Fortress install and it's the first folder. It's literally titled Crash Logs. It used to be hidden a little bit more in a different folder, but... Here, I'll, I'll show you where it is. Give me a sec. It's in this folder right here. So this is my install. Crash Logs. The, these are all my crash logs. which shows how consistent they are during experimental branches, I guess. 
Hey, you stood on the right side. Smart dwarf. This might, I'm now just realizing, now that I think about it, this might actually overflow, so I should probably block this off. <laughs> yeah, it will. It absolutely will. Uh-oh. Um, somebody want to build this, maybe? Anytime this year? Maybe that, too? Oh, that's not good. A vile dork of darkness has arrived and immediately decided to vamoose. And there's a necromancer visiting. Great. But I'm more concerned about getting this construction done. Oh. Thank you. I have no idea, David Peters. I I have a surface level of knowledge of uh, advanced world gen. The videos that you see me making are me mostly learning in real time. No, I was not streaming my screen on purpose, I guess, to answer that question. <laughs> pretty good. Sorry. It's pretty good. There they are. A dog spot them. I love how they just like turn around and book it when they see my dwarves. Because here comes the soldiers. Hey, you got a whip. Look at that. Is that a whip? Oh, no. It's a scourge. Same thing. Same skill. Come on, Ashton. Lap, collides with the goblin, uh, lashes the goblin thief in the lower arm with an iron scourge, tearing the fat through the giant cave spider silk cloak. Well, they are trapped. There is no way out. Dwarves treating me fairly. Ah, chat's been nice. That's what really matters to me. Been a fun, fun conversations today. Seems like Eshton is back here on their own. Taking matters into their own scourge. Oh, someone wanted two kills today, I think. And there you go. You get them. Lashing the goblin thief in the head with an iron scourge, tearing the muscle, chipping the skull, and bruising the brain through the growing, the groundhog leather hood. And says, Death, this is truly horrifying. Well done, dwarves. Back to whatever the heck you were doing with you. <laughs> they all dropped their food on the ground. Some things never change. <laughs> Speaking of military, I need to check something. Well, we're st we do... Okay, we do actually have enough quivers now. And we do also have enough crossbows now, too, which is good. I mean, thanks for watching as much as you do, um, Finian. I know. Like, it, it there, there is one thing that, like, makes me kind of eternally hopeful, like, I guess, about the future of this game, and that is the fact that, you know, I may have to fight tooth and nail to convince my streamer friends to stream this game, but at the very least... The audience hasn't really gotten smaller since the big dip happened, you know? And for me, the, the big dip in my mind is kind of like when uh, the size of the of, of my channel went from like, you know, five, 600 viewers down to like 200 to 150. Like at least we've stayed steady around there. That's the thing that gives me true hope that we'll continue beyond that point. Oh, we're gonna get a Titan fight. Uh, so the newest challenger is <clears throat> 
A great eyeless wren. It has large mandibles and a bloated body. Beware its deadly spit. And over here is, I think, literally a cat. I think literally a cat. This is literally a cat. Yeah, it's a giant feathered cat. Chat, who wins? Forgotten Beast Burb or for Forgotten Beast Kitty? <laughs> My bet is, um... I was going to say Kitty, but it appears that the, uh, this, the, the big cat is bleeding heavily. Has actually killed another Forgotten Beast previously. Versus no kills on the bird. Bird and beast are dueling. Lots of blood. They're both heavy bleeding now. And before they both die, um, one of them has lost their guts. Okay, it does seem like the cat's having... Yeah, the cat, cat lost his guts. They're dangling out. I've never seen something survive losing guts. Uh, aside from zombies, of course. But they're kind of already dead at that point. Severe blood loss. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The Forgotten Beast uh, pushes the Forgotten Beast in the right rear leg, bruising the fat. I guess the, the bird just bled out because the Forgotten Beast bit the Forgotten Beast in the lower leg, tearing the skin and tending the bone. Yeah, no, literally, they the, this one burnt out, just bled out. It's a draw. Well, now that, that's a fight to tell stories about. I kind of want to dig into here and butcher them. Bring out your dead. Hmm. Chat room, I'm going to go get my lunch. Because I am hungry. And then I'm going to dig, break into this cavern layer again and butcher them. Bandwitch. I can make totems out of their heads. How's that sound? I think I'm gonna use burrows for this. We're, we're gonna be safe. Anyway, I will I will be back in a moment. Don't go anywhere too fast. Um, you guys can stare at this. Uh, is anybody socializing? Street boo, can I do that when I get back? Just let me know what kind of dwarf you want when I return. Back in a moment. Over here, he has a sword. Cheese for everyone. No, 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 no. Bandwitch, you fucking donkey. Everything that's good about it, and just jam it full of shit, garbage, shit, sugar, and put it in a shit bottle that sounds like shit when you put it on your shit. It's shit. Stop eating ketchup. See how he bites off the shell to get at the nut.
Wait, what about clothes ever every clothes everywhere? Give them cabinets and a place to put their clothing and a uh, refuse pile to store their per clothing permanently. Also, hello, I'm back. I have acquired sandwich. I have to say, chat room, if you are bothered by the existence of pineapple on pizza, two things. One, you're no longer allowed in Canada. Two, learn to allow other people to like things. This is like a very, very, this should be like a, a lesson that people learn, right? If you are genuinely bothered by people who like pineapple on pizza, then you are bothered by me. It's literally the only pizza I order. <laughs> You know, it's funny you say that, and, and Thoric. Do you remember when the internet pe brought people together? <coughs> now it just pushes people apart? <coughs> yeah. Do you remember when... Um, I've said this for years, don't worry, zombie. Do you remember when social media allowed people to keep in contact with their friends more? <coughs> Fucking hell, what the hell? I think I need to dust in here or something. When did it do that? When it was new? Gesundheit. Not all of us are broken nihilists like you, UGDPY. I had so many. I never had an air filter, actually. Fun fact. I just didn't leave my apartment. See, I'm a nihilist about the future, but I've had points in the current that have been fine. Sure, I would consider MSN, Messenger, early social media, yeah. Just like I would consider forums early social media. I'm a Canadian. I have no hope for the future because I live next door to Americans. And there's parts of Canada and also parts of the States where you can see Russia. Hmm? I don't appreciate it, enemy. It's kind of annoying.
All right. So I need to name a dwarf. Um, also, Ahuna Vira and Diveldon. Diveldon, thanks for gifting a sub. Vira, thank you very much for the seventh month. I'm in an ad break at this exact moment. Sorry, I had to blow my nose. <laughs> After all the sneezing, I realized my nose was running. Um, what are they for? They are an artifact of streams long past, and don't worry about it if you don't care. It's a bragging rights thing. You earn them, and that's it. So, Street Boo, um, what kind of dwarf would you like? Let me know if you have a preference. Do I need with a pet goose? I doubt it. <laughs> I don't even have a goose in my fort. Um, somebody named Adil has a pet guinea cock. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, that's not an L. Street Boo. Street Boo, boo is praying to uh, Iger Raptor Moist <clears throat> and is obsessed with details and often will take a great extra time, uh, a deal of extra time to make sure things are done the right way. Uh, he dislikes receiving advice, preferring to keep his own counsel. He can be very single-minded, he is quick to anger, and he tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. He doesn't focus on material goods, and he has a calm demeanor. He tends to share his own experiences and thoughts with others, and he tries to keep his things orderly. He tends to only form tenuous emotional bonds with others, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day. He likes working outdoors and only grumbles mildly at crap weather and doesn't really care about anything anymore. He dreams of creating a, crafting a masterwork someday, personally is repelled by the idea of honesty, and lies without compunction, greatly respects a shrewd and guileful and and does not care about fairness. He likes silver and tiger iron. Uh, his hair is short and straight, and he has an extremely long beard, and he has a pet guinea cock. Do you have a bedroom? Yes, you do. You do, in fact, have modest quarters. I'm going to move your pet birdie into your quarters. Okay, where, 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 where? I caught him. There you go. In fact, I'm going to also let your pet birdie walk out here. Okay, so let's work on those beasties, shall we? Where in the world was that fight? Okay. Um. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this burrow on. Add this to the burrow. Make sure everybody's in the burrow. And we are going to dig through this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to forbid these. Next thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to jump all the way down to the underground area over here. Because I've got a lever I've got to pull. It's this. Because I've got to make sure that the floodgate is closed. Just double check. Did I? Okay, I did. <laughs> Um, cause I've got to make sure that that floodgate is closed so that that doesn't start dumping lava everywhere. Um, the other thing I need to do is I need to go back down here. Yeah, okay, so this is just filling, which is exactly what I needed doing. Those both got done, sweet. Um. So now we wait. No one ever asks how is Carmen San Diego. I feel that, man.
Are you telling me that, Matt? Or are you telling somebody in YouTube chat that? Because if you're telling me that, my sand is being gathered from like 10 layers above my forges in the bottom cavern layer. Yeah, some I, I heard about that radio tower that got stolen. That was wild. I'm still, I'm like personally very perplexed by that whole thing. Okay, so I need to make two workshops. I have to make a butchery shop. Um, and a carpenter shop. I'll use Gabro. Um, Mona Javi, and with the Prime subscription, thank you very much for that brand new sub. And Ermaluk with the 14th month. Welcome back. I love it when, like, there isn't much activity for a while, and then, like, everything happens all at once. It, it happens way more often than it should. <laughs> or it happens way more often than you'd think, I guess. Someone stole a what? Uh, Google radio tower stolen Alabama. Here, I'll, I'll Google it. Uh-oh. Yeah, two days ago. Um. Oh, sorry, five days ago here. New York Times. A radio tower. Shush. Literally, like, a radio, like, a music radio station's radio tower was stolen. 190-foot-tall tower vanished. Yeah. <laughs> like, regardless of what you think of the New York Times, that is a, a real story that happened. Here, here's the article if you want it. And for people in the YouTube chat as well. The, the only issue with drop holes is be careful you're not dropping stuff onto your dwarves because that will kill them. Also, that's kind of cool. Discovering a magma pool. I'm just going to send these two squads up to here to have a peek around. All right, dwarves are setting stuff up. It's probably not 120. It's probably been disassembled and is probably in like a, a warehouse somewhere being sold for scrap. I love all the dwarves running up here and cleaning the bodies up. Or blood up, rather. Gotta make sure that mud doesn't get too contaminated, you know? Ooh. Damn, that's actually pretty cool. It's also really good to know that this is here. Huh. This is an easier place to pull lava out of. Might as well explore this cavern since we're here. Ooh, raw adamantine. Praise the miners. Where exactly are they talking about there? Okay. That's further away than I would want it to be. Like the dwarves can smell it. The adamantine. All right, so first one is being butchered. And then here I'm going to go and say, are you doing anything with the skull? Yes, they are. So I'm going to forbid and unforbid that. We're going to make a totem. And then you are going to butcher an animal. 
We're going to butcher this. Whichever one they get to first. I think actually I should leave these forbidden because I would just like to do the body, not the toe. <laughs> It's actually a pretty neat cavern lair. It's just a shame that it's completely flooded. I Actually, here's something I would like to show you guys. This type of cavern lair is my favorite one to look at in ASCII, because look at this shit. Shit's so cool looking. It's like all red. It's very, very, very like brooding looking. It's one of my favorite like aesthetic shift shifts in the game. So cool looking. Just waiting for these dwarves to show up. There they come. You watched a come. I mean, it just means it's a very wet cavern layer. Because these are the only one these are the only trees that can grow uh with like extreme amounts of mud or whatever. Cause they do have like specific like requirements that make them appear. Okay, so um Well, all that stuff got cleared out way quicker than I thought it would. Okay, so I don't... Okay, you're, you're carrying the bones. Did... Hmm. Hold on. I think those skulls got yoinked. Let's keep skulls. And keep skulls. Except for, well, I was going to say except for dwarf skulls, but now we'll, we'll keep the skulls. Try and make a totem here. Just hope that they end up with the right material. Is this the wrong cavern there? I actually, like, didn't really think about it too much. Yeah, this is the lower cavern. This is the one below me, okay. I have the wrong one hotkeyed, which is why I couldn't find it earlier when I was looking for it. There we go. Just gonna cancel that because it's clearly the wrong spot. Okay, so that's what they were trying to butcher. Probably butcher the last toe. Yeah, there we go. And we'll just get these removed. How's that strange mood doing? Because I do have a strange mood going on. Uh-oh. You need metal bars. Do I not have bars? Rough gems, raw green glass, yarn cloth. Oh, I got tons of yarn cloth. You've got glass already. I haven't grabbed yarn cloth. Um, hmm. Let's shear. 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 Some migrants have arrived. Spin thread. Uh, 
Uh, hold down control and zoom. It's not a DF hack thing, it's a vanilla me mechanic. Did it say logs too? I'm pretty sure you had logs though. Not? Oh, I, okay. I was looking at the quiver. Am I out of wood? I'm certainly not out of wood, so logs isn't the issue. It's probably not. Is it leather, maybe? It might be leather. Uh, hmm. I have a lot of questions. Did, did I really... Chat room, I think. I have no idea I don't play at 4K. Blunder Moth. But um, let me tell you something for a fact, you should never play Dwarf Fortress at 4K. Because Dwarf Fortress doesn't zoom in and zoom out. Um, Dwarf Fortress changes the resolution of the game. You probably just shouldn't play this game at 4K. It also doesn't have 4K assets, so. Um, it might be the cam cam camel problem, but I doubt it because the camel wasn't named. Ha! Huh. Well then, whoops. No, they definitely didn't phase through the wall. They definitely probably walked down here and I definitely probably walled them off in there because they were leaving right around the time I was walling this area off. Um, so, I mean, that's awkward. Well, anyway, that solves the artifact problem. <laughs> But yeah, um, I, I do know that playing at 4K can cause some weird problems in Dwarf Fort, at least with the game running. Less so now that uh, the game understands what that resolution is, thanks to SDL2, but no, th these are the camel problems. Yeah, these are literally just like random wild camels. Can change the scaling in the settings? All right. Well, I'm glad that that stuff's been sorted then. Or it wasn't as much of an issue as it initially seemed to be. But yeah, if you can't zoom in and zoom out, I don't know. That's bizarre to me. Not an issue I've ever experienced, I gotta say. You went to 1080p and you're now inside your dwarf. Yeah, you, you've, there's there's got to be something weird with your with your scaling. Uh oh. Forgotten beast Zalak Zek Zekalo has come. A newt composed of salt. It squirms and fidgets. That is a nothing burger if I ever saw one. Um. I will also be quite surprised if it makes it to my fort. Well, it just killed a thing. Where it goes. Let's follow it. A squirming and fidgeting newt? Massively disagree. <laughs> Speaking of, where, where did our newt go? Yeah, no, these, these camels, I can confirm, are all just wild animals. I can't see it. Is it dead already? Yep. 
Uh, the cave swallow uh, woman spearman stabs the forgotten beast in the lower body with her uh, tower cap spear and the severed part sails off in an arc. Yeah. Um, scary, hey? <laughs> I couldn't find it because it died. <laughs> it died so quickly I, I lost it. Um, yeah, not super threatening, I, I gotta tell you. Not so threatening. Oh, okay. I was like, why is this not filled up yet? Probably because I still have the power off. Probably because this, the water is still out here. Probably because there's st <laughs> there was a dead dwarf down there that I had to get out. Um, let's just put a bunch of glass in there. I mean, even rock crystal is not that strong. Also, that dwarf's begun a mysterious construction. Hey, I need a ranger guild. Probably actually do that. 58 dwarves. Got some peasants that have just shown up that are accomplished in the military, which I will take. Also, I should probably seal off the caverns. That's something I should do. Okay. Hmm. Let's just lock the door. Because they shouldn't be too far out into here. Okay. Cover wounded. Who's your wounded? Man, those camels are a scourge in society, apparently. Why? Why the, why the camels my tavern? You know? Sometimes you just gotta ask. They're like all named. These are like noteworthy kills. He smokes and drinks and stuff, uh-huh. That's is also um <laughs> a notable kill for my dwarf now. Um Yeah. Not the dancer, please. Just the just the camel. Anyway, there's now a bunch of dead camels everywhere. That's... All right, if you insist. As much as that function does help, it's mildly annoying. Free meat, though, assuming they can butcher them. We may have mangled them too much, but here's hoping. You know, I need, like, to download a script or something at some point to just automatically send me an email reminder to unsubscribe from AliExpress emails every single time I buy something on AliExpress. <laughs> <laughs> because, Jesus Christ almighty, they send a lot of emails. Whenever you send them an email, it's just like, Poof! wow. Emails. Oh boy.
All right, so now that we're through with this, let's go over here. Well, actually, no, not here. Let's go back over here and go down over here. It's almost done. I'm going to go pull this lever, get the power going. Double check, is this disengaged? It is not. Need to pull this lever. Raging Cave, the fishery worker has created. Uvothlum. A dog leather low boot. And offers it to the Crimson Will of Smiths. Let's see what those bones were, chat. If anybody remembers what we are talking about earlier. This is a dog leather low boot. All craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with dog leather, square cut green glass gems, and with bands of oval cut almondines. Black cap and iron. This object menaces with spikes of giant cave toad bone. On the item is an image of a pomelo trees and marsh titan bone. Marsh titan. On the item is an image of good, Ch of good Charles, the pig iron shield in sheep's wool. It's an image of good Charles the shield, not good Charles the dwarf who made the shield. This week, uh, Google didn't help with this. Can you assign dwarves to a barrack? Or do they need bedrooms also? If you send them out to fight something, they forfeit their bedrooms. They do not need free bedrooms. You can just, like, put beds into the barracks and, um, like, label it as they sleep here by doing that. But if you want them to have bedrooms, they'll be happier. They don't need both. Oh, also, good Charles, I think you are still the outpost liaison. Yes, you are in fact the outpost liaison for the faction. I'm literally staring at this so that nobody steals my artifacts. <laughs> anybody suspiciously walks towards this door, I'm going to lock it. I put prepared meals up here. Because there's some slightly sus people in my thing. If you need help with uh, Dwarf Fortress related things, if you join my Discord... Um, Icono Crush, you can... There's a room called DF Help. So if you have questions. People are generally pretty quick to answer stuff. Also, really, there's a lot of things I really want to do in this fort to, like, make it better. Because this fort kind of sucks. But I haven't been doing it because I've been too busy trying to clean up the caverns. But we're almost done cleaning up the caverns. We're almost done with my cavern cleanup system. Yeah, I don't generally answer questions in there, but there's uh, a number of folks who are regulars in the chat who do. I also have a lot of tutorials on my YouTube channel, but, you know. Back to the meeting. Waiting on the manager to get up here. Like, I need to make a library as an example. I should probably make a second tavern. There's a lot of things I should be doing. Yeah, it's lot lava cleanup, exactly. Although we're up to 158 dwarves now instead of like, you know, eight, which was where we were when I was like, well, I need to, I need a better cleaning solution for this fort. All right. Well, in that case, since you insist on being so slow. And you only have fudge. I don't see the problem here. Are those ceramic barrels? No, those are rock pots. I don't actually have any ceramics on this map. They're made at uh, craft store shops, I think? I always forget where rock pots are made, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's craft store shops. You can also make glass pots. And metal pots. You can also make glass and metal barrels. I might actually swap over to um, green glass barrels. Or green glass pots, maybe. I can't remember which one you can make. I'm in an ad break. I'm just going to wait for this to be done so I can place it. 
But the re one of the re main things about why this fort sucks is there just isn't, uh, for lack of a better term, bedrooms for everybody. The, the problem that I have with fudge is I know how to make some pretty great fudge that's generally better than fudge that I could buy. So the result is I never, ever, 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 ever have fudge around because if I make fudge, I will just eat it all. It took you like 500 hours to realize rock pots were a thing. I don't know how long it took me to realize rock pots were a thing. <laughs> Mostly because I don't know when they were added to the game. Half a decade, maybe? Like, it wasn't until I started streaming the game that I found that out. Somebody just mentioned it. Yeah, as long as the dwarves don't have a way to get into where the, the bridge is, uh, a setup like that would be pretty safe. Lemon licorice fudge? Mm. I generally just go with dark chocolate. Sometimes I'll add nuts. Although sometimes I will make camping fudge which is dark chocolate, almonds, walnuts, raisins, um, sometimes oatmeal. Basically just dark chocolate fudge plus a bunch of healthy things for while camping so that you can, you know, eat it late at night and not feel like you're going to die. Somebody putting item on display. There you go. Yeah, it's basically like a, because it's cheaper than granola bars is why I do it that way. Kiddo, I need you to get out of here. There you go. All right. Let's go, Um, hopefully, dump some lava on some beds. But water no flow yet? Whoa. Excuse me? <laughs> oh. Did I pull the wrong lever? Why the fuck I pulled the wrong lever? God damn it, I pulled the wrong lever. <laughs> I was like, why 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 there no why 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 not why no water flow? It's because I pulled the wrong lever, obviously. Don't let anybody ever tell you or trick you into thinking that I'm good at this video game, okay? I know a few things. I'm not that good at this video game. Calorie bars, yeah, basically. It's, oh fuck, need carbs now in large quantity. Bars. Those water wheels? Those are water wheels, yes. And they are powering these pumps. Or this pump, specifically. Which is filling this up. Wow, that is filling quick. Holy shit. Let's go. Up and at him. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so now this is like full. It's good to go. It's all ready. Now that it's ready, I can do this. Now we just need to wait for somebody to pull that lever. And then I will consider these caverns cleaned, mostly. Even <laughs> after eating Taco Bell. Oh, good lord. That is a concerning mental image. Thanks for that. I guess the, the real concerning thing is why don't you eat better quality, like, Tex-Mex? <laughs> it's like you could do better than Taco Bell. Come on. You certainly could. Also, I just want to say a, a huge thank you to those of you who tune in to these streams, by the way. Um, you guys are all extraordinarily kind, and thank thank you for helping keep this channel funded and everything that you do. But if you'd like to help out the YouTube side of things, I, uh, I am also concurrently streaming on YouTube. 
And uh, currently there's about 50 people watching on YouTube and it's got about 50 likes, which means um, if we increase that number, it'll tell YouTube to tell people that more people should be watching this stream. And uh, I don't want to copy that New York Times article again, even though it's hysterical. Instead, I would like you to go to um, this this link right here and uh, share, like either share it or like leave a like on it. Maybe lurk there if you happen to have the extra internet bandwidth, because it does go a long way. Of course, I can't kill the goddamn flying ones, but it is still going to do a decent job cleaning at the very least some stuff. It's also making a whole lot of obsidian over here. You kind of need to go along here and just like block this all off once this thing drains. Please, please spare cave swallow people are like, oh boy, bored, bored. Annoyed after being caught in the smoke, reliving trauma. <laughs> Probably his friend burning to death underneath him. Give off hot vapors? Um, not unless disturbed or displaced, really. Uh, Dacus the Metalsmith has created Nagumulamosis, an iron mace, and offers it to the Crimson Will of Smiths. This is an iron mace. All craft ship is of the highest quality. It is uh, studded with iron and encircled with bands of black cap. This object menaces with spikes of gabbro and forgotten beast bone. What? Oh. Rotten meals, that's fine. Your faction's name out of my mouth. Why? What, what did I do to your faction's name? Did I butcher it? Okay, so what I need is I need... I'm assuming those pedestals have been made. Yay! And to just get these pedestals made so I can get my artifacts behind a wall. No, right, 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 right. I mean, I, I know that that's the Will Smith line, but don't always put two and two together immediately. And I need to make a ranger's guild. Do I still have that steel mace, or did it get stolen? Or is this it? Okay, yeah, that's it. I don't actually... I, for some reason, I thought this was the last one, but we'll swap it out for a quartzite door at the very least. So many cultureless elves. You know, it's funny that we were talking about, like, dwarven culture earlier. Why is this dwarf hungry? Unable to block or something? It's funny that we were talking about culture in this game earlier. Characters that don't have faction culture literally don't get clothing which is why you'll have like random naked people showing up in your tavern. It's not that there's just random naked people everywhere, although that is a funny thing to think about. Um, it's just that they quite literally don't have a culture, so they don't get clothing assigned to them when they enter the map. You thought they were just performance troops of nudists? Nope. No, it's actually a bug that's been in the game since like 2009, but nobody noticed because nobody would look at what their bards were wearing. I kid you not. 
There, there's two bugs that have been in the game for a bajillion years that nobody noticed until this version of the game came out. One of them was that. The other one was um, like the kids that have no skin, so they look like they're older than one or younger than one years old and like look weird until they become an adult, at which point they get skin. And it's because they they were born without a skin tone, basically. So because they were born without a skin tone, they just have no skin and thus no head. And why, why would you notice that? It, in the game, it would just be like one line of text that would say what their skin color was. But in this game, they're, they're well, they, they don't have, like gra there wasn't any graphics to show it. So why would you notice? They do still age, yeah. At least I think they age. Because <laughs> I've had them a couple of times and they just kind of disappear after a while because I always kind of stop thinking about them. I'm assuming it's because they do age. I don't know what causes it. Yeah, what's wrong with this dwarf? Well, um, that's Billy. He's a little slow, but he's spe he's special. We love him. He's a he's a very good kid. <laughs> love love your oddballs, chat. That's all I have to say. They do sprout heads at age one. Okay, that, that's what I thought. I'm pretty like I was gonna like I'm pretty sure like after a year they just gain skin. But yeah, that's that's a like if you actually go back into older versions of the game, it's. A very common thing in older versions of the game, too. Yeah. But no, why would anybody notice? I mean, it's it was literally, like, the only thing that would, like, show off a dwarf's skin tone in older versions was one line of text. But now suddenly that they have an asset, like, a, a, like sprites associated with them, they become very obvious. I think it's hysterical. It's one of my favorite things about this game. <laughs> It's just a, it's just a dwarven, it's a natural dwarven birth defect. That's all that it is, okay? Like, it's like, it's like having, you know, they'll grow out of it. It's okay. Urist is missing his skin. He'll grow out of it. I mean, they can drink water. But that's like saying humans drink water and not booze, so our birth defects must be relatively common. Dwarves have very different biology to humans. So what would damage a human and make uh, existing as a human harder wouldn't damage a dwarf. And also, Chatroom, thank you very much for getting us up to the uh, the bad fallout number worth of likes. Appreciate you guys. 76 like likes. I checked that corner of the caverns, hey? Yeah, it's getting burned pretty good. It did. Well, that part's good. I mean, they still cave swallow people, but what really am I going to do? Oh. I didn't really think about that. Well, that's fine. Bit of a shame, but fine. <laughs> and I now just have, like, this lava reservoir in the side of my fort. All right, well, I can close this up. So now I do kind of have an issue, which is I need to build over this, I guess, or make a new front door because um, this one's a little inaccessible now. Very aesthetically pleasing. Oh, yeah, no, I've got a lot of things I want to do with glass in this fort. It's just a matter of if I get to it. Right. I was going to make this into a barracks, wasn't I? Well, that never happened. <laughs> I guess I should do... Mm. I need a... Rangers Guild. Wait. I need a Rangers Guild. Why don't we put it right here? This would be a good spot for a Rangers Guild. What do you think, chat?
Could also put a dining hall in here. Train us some ambushing. Oh, also, I was going to cave this thing in. I'll probably finish that. We're just moving really slowly, dwarf. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my masons down into here. After that, this is done being built. And move my whole masonry production down into here. I, I still call them masons, even though they're stone cutters. I, there's one guy on YouTube that gets mad at me. It's like, blind, they changed the name. They're not masons anymore. That bothers Tarn. It's like, I, I know, sir. I'm sorry. Please, please don't hate me. <laughs> Force of habit. Play a game for 10 years, and then suddenly the name of a job changes. It's, I... I'm, I'm sorry, okay? Just problematic human playing game that's insulting current dwarf culture. It's it, the, the one problem I have with seeing the stuff below the glass, like if you, if you look at like this, you see you can see the, the dwarves moving underneath it and also like the stuff is if there's a liquid right beneath it, you see the number associated with it. And cause I always leave the, the numbers on the liquids. It bothers the crap out of me. This child is an orphan. Oh, I mean, I wonder if the child can petition for sit. Is, is the child considered a resident? Or are they, like, are they on your citizen screen or the visitor screen? Because I don't think I've ever had a monster hunter or, like, an adventurer have a child in my fort. Well, that's good. At the very least, then, like, they're not just dead. <laughs> like, they have a chance, you know? I don't know why I'm making these out of glass. That's kind of a waste. I mean, what, 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 what uh, race is the child? Is this like a, a human? Is this a goblin? Uh, an, an elf? It's being raised by wolves. I mean, yeah. It's just being raised by an alcoholic, a very large army of alcoholic dads. Guild hall, ranger guild. We've got 11 workers. Goblin, yeah, I, d I did miss it earlier. It's I, I, I've been missing things in chat a lot the last two days. I don't really know why. Dog, the nib died with what? More camels? God damn it. I must avenge my, my dog. These camels keep killing everybody. That's actually kind of rad. The soldiers all just ran into here, equipped their, like, their armor and weapons, and are now running after this camel. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they ran in there and equipped and grab their gear to then go chase this camel. Get him, guys. Oh, God, he's, this, he's got the zoomies. For an injured camel, this guy's got... How many kills do you have? Killed one of my dogs? Okay, well, not going to live much longer then. Come on, dwarves. This is your cardio workout. Let's go. All this thing needs is yakety sacks. Come on, just just get around the corner. Nah, nope. Come on. Okay, sweet. They got Can somebody clip that, please? <laughs> I might need that for YouTube shorts later. Vengeful when joining. Oh, so I was really con concerned for a second here. I clicked on this elf here, right? 
but I actually clicked on this one because they were in the same tile. And I was looking at this, seeing this undead elf, but they were having like interested ventral. I was like, why does this zombie have feelings? And I was really worried for a moment there. <laughs> These these camels are completely unrelated. These camels are coming from the surface. Trust me, very one literally one hundred percent unrelated camels. Thank you. So most of these, ta yeah, these tables are all made of iron and most of them have gems in them. These are probably like a thousand dwarf bucks per table. Same with these thrones. I don't know why. I've suddenly just started encrusting stuff with gems. It's like, I've been playing this game for a very long time and never encrusting anything with gems. Now suddenly I'm encrusting everything in with gems. It's like chat's complaining about me not using gems is finally get rubbing off on me. You know, I might actually cut this in half. Right here. And make this half down here into a barracks. And connect this barracks to the Leaf of Flights, which is this guild hall. So they're still both holding the same value, except I can tell my main squad to store all their stuff in here and then when I put the furniture in there it'll actually get used. I'm going to get them out of training here. And then these guys can store their stuff here. Okay. Uh, what do I have for bars currently? 207 bars. Uh, let's just make 100 pig iron and then 110 pig iron. Let's do 80. And then do 100 steel. Steel bars. 100. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go... Clear glass armor stand. Clear glass weapon rack. Uh, let's do 20 of each. So I have more for the future as well. And check the value of this. Well, we've cleared the value. And I, I don't even have the tables in here yet. And I've cleared the value. <laughs> I, have, I literally haven't even put the tables here. That's very... That's amusing. Okay. Those are going to be windows. These are going to be windows. Uh, no. They, they don't hunger nor thirst while making the artifact. Not until they go insane. They're feeding off of the energy of the thing that is possessing them from another world or whatever. Furniture with shell on repeat for a decade and couldn't trade with the elves because all of your storage bins and barrels were covered with shells. That's very, 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 very funny. <laughs> I, 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 that's, that's hysterical. Although, I mean, you still can trade. Just, like, make... My, my go-to thing to trade with them now is just cloth crafts. Okay, so, um... Putnam fixed the crash that I found earlier, apparently. And it's... uh th This was what she wrote, word for word. Oh, thank God, it actually works. Oh, God. Oh, no. Looks like tissue layer goofiness i.e. some specific convict in my fort was causing trouble. Some specific layer of skin on a convict caused the crash. <laughs> huh. 
Who was I trying to arrest at the time? That was a... That was one of my dwarves, wasn't it? It was like that dwarf that was like tantruming, right? It's always skin. It's always skin! Skinamax was right! I, now I'm kind of concerned that Skinamax still exists. <laughs> anyway, it, it's a porn TV channel that you had to rent movies on. Very expensive. Was it one of the goblins? No, it was one of my own dwarves. Although, it, it, I mean, it might have been one of the goblins. I haven't had the crash since, so... Oh, really? Skinamax is HBO Max? No, that's very funny. <laughs> I've never used HBO Max of at, at all and kind of have zero intention of ever using it, so... Dumb question. Are demonstrations the thing that they do in their training? Yeah, it is. Okay. The, I'm just like, I was confused for a second by a thing. I'm actually just going to remove these, this, and these so that they can get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I always assume that they should be sparring, but they don't actually spar until they're the all the same skill level or whatever. Because they demonstrate to catch up to the same level. But once they're all the same level, then they spar. What are you wielding? Copper Warhammer? What? Why? Got one silver bar. Let's try and make a silver Warhammer. I don't know if you need one or three, but... Let's make one. I just renumbered the wrong thing the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought I found a, a massive workaround on a thing, but I didn't. I did not, and I'm a little bit sad, but that's okay. Um, I'm also going to erase this portion. Uh, make this into a dining hall. Let's try this again. I'm going to make this into a dining hall. There we go. And uh, I'm going to not assign it to anybody, but I am going to assign it to the Leaf of Flights. And uh, for the Leaf of Flights, I'm actually just going to say it so that citizens and long-term residents can come in here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I really, 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 really want that tavern to be less busy, but I also want um, random dwarves to just come and hang out in here and learn combat skills. I'm going to need it if we want a chance against those goblins. Yeah, which takes a while. Better for him. I can never remember what skill it is, so I, I will just assume that you're correct. <laughs> Hey, Joker. Oh, run the YouTube side of things. Apparently to... Um, I never watched... I stopped watching Game of Thrones at season four. So I, I never actually watched the last season of Game of Thrones. I just kind of stopped caring. The sinful tundras! All right. What do exactly be the sinful tundras? Holy shit, that's a lot of elves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elves. I'm assuming. Maybe not, actually. 
Is it this goblin, maybe? The mute evil. Nope. Okay, so who the heck is the sinful tundras then? Could it be this goblin bard? Okay, um, chat room, does anybody have this world installed? Like, does anybody have this world downloaded? Because I need you to look something up stat. This goblin was once part of a kobold group called Gribititis. A nomadic kobold named group. What, an easier way to find out things? Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I could just save the game. Holy hate? I know, right? <laughs> I wasn't going to comment on that, but it is a title mm -hmm. of the hellish sect. But I want to know about Gribititis. How does a goblin join a kobold group? Also, do you have friends who are kobolds? No, you don't. Probably killed everybody and just moved in after it was named. This elf's last name is is Clamshins. Clam shins. Ew. I don't want to know anything. I didn't even know a clam had shins. I mean, your friend just killed some goblins. That's a necromancer. This is an aquamarine earring. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with yak horn, and this object menaces with spikes of honey badger bone. On the item is an image of Cybrek bodice painted, and uh, the dwarf and dwarves in phallite. Cybrek bodice painted is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the appointment of the dwarf Cybrek to the position of hammerer of the stable ships in year one. Huh. This person is the former camp cha captain of the guard and now champion of a different faction. In other news, who is the hammer of complexity exactly? That's somebody I have any... knowledge of? Another dwarven civ? It sounds like a dwarven civ, but who knows? Hmm. I just found a random, like, empty monastery that's full of books. Wow, I should just go steal books from here. Probably just like some random place on the refined, but hmm. even dead. Yeah, no kidding. Should I kill this necromancer for that earring? Is there a way to get an artifact from one of your own Civ forts? Not without adventure mode, no. There might be a DF hack thing. But if it's a populated fort, no. You might be able to... I don't think you can claim it. You could try claiming it from the really, 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 really big ma menu of artifacts, but... But I don't think so, no. I require this artifact for my collection. It almost looks like the goblins are standing around him to defend him. Where did he go? <laughs> I looked away for a I was looking at chat, and I, no, I don't see him. Invisible. 
Oh, there you are. Confirm. Did he go upstairs? Nope. And also, it's a she. Bolts and axes begin to fly. It's competent swords dwarf. He's doing the dodging. My dwarves are stabbing. He's now winded. Because I must, must withdraw. Um, an axe lord strikes the dwarf poet necromancer in the head with a steel shield, bruising the skin through the helm. Force pulls the neck, tearing apart the skin. For the Axe Dwarf strikes the Poet Necromancer in the lower body with a steel shield that the attack was def deflected by the Poet Necromancer's male shirt, and they say I must withdraw. Bits and pieces fly everywhere. Absolute pandemonium. I feel kind of like a bad person, Chad. I'm not going to lie. But there's just too much interesting history, history on that. Most of the dwarves here just experience trauma and go, bah! Well, anyways. Mercy, my jewels. Let's just go around this stuff and just toss these teeth. All right. So next thing I want to do is move my... Okay, I'm very confused. This is a glass window. Why are they putting gems here? Oh, I get it. Because they're using glass gems. I didn't know that you could make glass windows out of gems. Today I learned. <laughs> We're out of glass gems, basically. I was today years old when I realized you can make windows out of glass windows out of glass gems. Cool. My museum. So I'm going to send one of my squads out. We're going to, speaking of things that belong in museums, I'm realizing that there's a ton of abandoned monasteries here that are just full of books. So we're going to go acquire some because we um, need to build a collection, I think. Zenith? I would like to know what Zenith is. I would like these. And I would... I'm looking for another one with more than two. That'll do. And this one. Bad timing. Forgotten Beast, a huge humanoid composed of marcasite. It is uh, called Fall. Uh, it has a long swinging trunk and a bloated body. Beware its spittle. Wear it. Eh, I can ignore that one. It's fine. It's on the layer that don't matter so much. Time to make a massive library? Uh, I mean, among other things, but that is one of the things I need to do, yes. I don't want to make glass windows out of glass gems because there are the the assets don't work. So, hello world. A curious maniac. 
Thank you very much for the second month. Welcome back. Also, I see that you've um, capitalized your name now. It's different. There's a ghost? Did I never... <laughs> I'm real bad at memorializing ghosts in this fort. Real bad. Hmm. What kind of dwarf would you like, UGDPY? Chat room, can I get a round of beers for a Curious Maniac, keeping that sub alive for a second month, meaning the first one wasn't a mistake? Just waiting for this memorial to be done, and I'm going to go place it so I don't forget. <laughs> I like how you have to remind people to do that. Peasant, if available. Uh, Thob, Aban, or Saigon. Which one? Oh, well, I guess you don't need it then. You know, pro tip, Zwari. Read the last thing I wrote before you request that. Because literally all I have to read is, make this discussion has made us sad. Me. Like, that's all I have to read is what was last there. So just don't redeem it if there's, like, nobody there. UGDPY, uh, Tome Inc., uh, tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others, has little excitement and now, now and, likes a little excitement now and then, tends to consider what others think of her, and does not often feel lustful. She does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings and is slow to anger. She tends to think before acting and she has a sense of humor. She tends to hang on to grievances and she is curious and eager to learn. She occasionally overindulges and does not, doesn't focus on material goods. She tends to be a little wasteful when working on projects and she doesn't often feel envious of others. She tends to share her own experiences and thoughts with others and she currently is less private and currently is more rude and currently is more fearless and when she becomes exasperated she begins to speak very deliberately and she when she's thinking her body becomes very still and she her hands are animated when she speaks and she needs alcohol to get through the working day and dreams of crafting a masterwork someday and personally sees freedom and independence completely worthless values harmony and finds the pursuit of skill mastery off putting finds introspection to be a waste of time and doesn't see cooperation as valuable and she likes Buxite and Platinum and Peridot. The channel by redeeming it? I'm just gonna state that that's a very ineffective way of doing that. But okay, I, I appreciate the hustle. Uh, you don't have any friends. Uh, you're a member of the Cult of Ghosts, a member of the Emerald Irons, and a member of the Crimson Will of Smiths. And uh, you tend to... F and... Um, I guess that's about it. Not too much more to say. Have you killed anything? You haven't killed anything. You are 65 years old. You're not creative. You have poor analytical ability and poor social awareness, and you hate skill. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's work on this down here. Something else I would really like to that I'm kind of thinking about doing is taking those permanent prisoners that are in the cages and locking them in a room 
underneath the prison or underneath the captain of the guard's office, maybe, or underneath a room somewhere in the fort with glass above them so the dwarves can see them beneath it. What can you do with cage trolls? Throw them in the river. There's training. Um, I would, if you release them in your, um, uh, where your squad is, uh, they'll get easy training out of them. That's about it, really. That's the only actual, like, practical use that you can do with trolls. Or any kind of enemy like that, for that matter. It's bedtime. We'll see you later, Zwari. Hey, Kildre. If you want uh, your dwarves to see them, uh, you, you should go with, should you go with bars? I mean, it doesn't really matter. They're in cages. So I don't care if they see them. I want to see them. <laughs> right? Like, I don't, I don't care what the dwarves see. I care what me, streamers, see. I would rather have the materials I get from bars. What a sad place to socialize by yourself. At least the dwarves are getting clear glass go glo globlets? Goblets now. I have no idea. I don't think so. Not currently. Many of an idea has been thrown around, but doubtful. There's no, like, way to convert prisoners of war into friends. You can release them if you want, but something that enters the map is not friendly and never will be. They also don't need to eat or drink. Like, they're very different entities. Dwarves cannot get lead poisoning. But getting bit by a cave spider makes them eternally, eternally drowsy. Let's also go out to here. There's the mechanic shop. Let's move the mechanic shop into here because those also need rocks. Uh, not the metalsmith, the mechanic. Yeah, well, I mean, nothing can die of lead. There is no lead poisoning in Dwarf Fortress whatsoever. It's the same reason you can mine uranium with no ill side effects. It's just not a thing that the game tracks. There's uranium. There's uranium ore, but you can't refine uranium. I can never remember what it is until chat points out, you know, that's uranium, and I'm always like, uh. Let's do everything with this. This, this, well, I guess I can leave marble because there's no marble on this map. That and that. No ores, but all of this. No clay. Yeah, I think it's that horn blend sounds right, yeah.
I'm going to remove all of these and say this one right here is literally just going to be for Quartzite. And this one right here is going to be for everything but Quartzite. And Metal Ores, obviously. And then the other ones that I took out of the other one. And also none of these. It's also found in Lignite. Well, there you go! But yeah, it's the same reason, like, unrefined uranium doesn't cause problems. Let's get a minecart into here. And then you, up here, get minecart, load quartzite, you rock. And then this one up here can just be rock. Hello, CZQU. I don't know how to actually say your name, but what's up? You also pull from there. Now I just need wheelbarrows to show up. We can just make some wooden wheelbarrows. Yeah, we'll just do wooden. Wheelbarrows. Ten of them. Also going to put some craft store shops over here. Let's remove this. Can also get rid of this. Can also get rid of this. Finally getting all these workshops out of here. It's been bothering me for forever. But I've just had all of these workshops sitting right here. Also need to hack down some more trees, apparently. Bellinair, thank you very much for the raid. What were you up to today? What were you playing? Chatroom, can I get a big round of beers for the raiders? Speculated that dwarves should work out how to refine each year, enrich uranium. Oh yeah, no, door, people have been asking for like nuclear weapons in Dwarf Fortress as long as Dwarf Fortress has been Dwarf Fortress. Uh, mods, if I have any of you lurking, could I get a shout out for Bellinair? And uh, for, the guys, for those of you who don't know Bellinair, Bellinair is a wonderful individual and a friend of the stream. The streams a variety of video games. Has been known to play dwarfs in the past. Maybe we can get him to play dwarfs in the future. Spe uh, his finish rolls as ours a whole lot. That's fun to watch. How is the uh, 1.0 of Last Epoch? I think that's like what two thirds of the people I follow right now are streaming. Very good if you like ARPGs. Got it. So I part pass. <laughs> the other thing I'm going to do with this. Ooh, chat, I have a question. Construction materials in with these workshops? Or should construction materials go elsewhere? Because I want to make a place to put glass blocks and stone blocks. Uh, lava has no flow, and flow is what gives rivers power. So, yeah, no, you cannot get any energy. You cannot get any energy from lava, because it has no flow. Without needing a doctorate to understand? Says the guy who's playing a game that allegedly it needs a doctorate to understand, but sure, fair enough. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Glad people are making those games. Uh... There's no good way people go with CZ discovered. Mm. 
Now you're planning how to dry one of those large rivers uh, to build obsidian tower in the middle of one. I think the bottom of rivers still have no assets. <laughs> just, just, to, just a heads up. When, when you drain it, it's just gonna be a black, like missing asset void looking thing. Uh, it's on purpose. Chestnut. There's no such thing as a friendly ghost, Maxim. And also, if you want to know how ghosts work, there's like 15 different types of them, and they're all, they're all, I can never remember which one causes which, but it depends on how the dwarf dies, is what makes them into a different type of ghost. It's entirely based on how they died. And like whether or not they completed their dream and whether or not like friends of theirs had died and stuff. Like there's a lot of if then things with ghosts, but there is no such thing as a friendly ghost. Um, the least harm, harm a, a ghost can do is scare the ever living piss out of their old loved ones. Which is bad <laughs> for the living. They're waiting for Big Bang to leave the map. Who's currently filling a water skin? Well, gotta start somewhere. But I got thirsty on the way out and chugged his alcohol. All right, well. I think I'm going to get rid of this whole thing right here because it didn't end up working out. Dig this out. Oh, I missed a important spot right there. Trying to figure out where... Oh. First squad is back. I was going to say, does it not scroll the screen anymore? I guess it does. We looted wooden... We looted uh, Zenith. Zenith was looted uh, from the temple and vine posts by Orange. So what is Zenith exactly? It's a book. It's a parchment scroll. The rollers are made from calcite. Authored uh, by Aban. The work uh, has no particular subject. The writing is very serious tone, yet a uh, hint of viciousness to it. Well, that's disappointing. All right. Well, let's do clear glass bookcase. Let's make a library. because I am just like pretty rapidly acquiring books now. I also really need somewhere to put all these blocks. So I was gonna put a workshop down here and I can't remember what it was. That seems bad. Um. I have no idea how we spotted it. Oop, I see a bleeding dwarf. Question is, where is that Zul? <laughs> Send the squads up here, cause they, yeah, okay. We appear to be getting attacked. I'm not sure why the dwarves are going up here, but they are. Come on, dwarves. Uh-oh. I think it's time to turn the um, the vents back on. What do you think, chat? <laughs> also in an ad break, so let's give it a moment. I 
Oh, true, it could be Silk, actually. Exactly, see, deep sea fishing. See, chat, can I, can I get a big wall of lava just so people know what's coming? Maybe you'll maybe we'll warn them off long enough that they'll have a chance for some of them to survive. So I uploaded a video earlier today complaining about how I don't like short form content. I don't, I've never actually used TikTok as a platform. I have watched TikToks that people send to me or occasionally get posted in places, but I don't go out of my way to watch them. And I almost never watch YouTube shorts. And the, this person comments, you don't have to lie to them. You can just tell them that you're not watching shorts or TikToks for Lent. I'm not lying. <laughs> I don't watch shorts or TikToks, but that is very funny. <laughs> I wonder if that works, devilish. This person's like indirectly coyly accusing me of lying, but I I think that's really that's just a really funny excuse, regardless. All right, let's uh, we're sending the squads out. Oof. Whoa. I see. Oh, I understand where they're coming from now. Um, okay, so we're about to lose a bunch of dwarves. Uh, maybe not a bunch, but we're about to lose some dwarves. Because, um, simply put, I um, turned all of this into obsidian, so now they can just walk into my fort. That's why I had dwarves going up here. It's because this is now suddenly accessible in my fort. I should turn the burrow on. So where's that dwarf who's climbing up this? Did I see a dwarf on this side? No, I didn't. Oh, there you are. You should get out of there, dwarf. Climbing along this wall. Okay, well, looks like you were hit. Just waiting for the lava to go off. Dwarves are ripping through the cavernous, the cavern threat up here on the surface. Lava is now beginning to spill. Fortunately, that's blocking the pathing. So my dwarves probably won't all go dive in. All right, well, I guess I need to seal this off up here. Never seen so many rats. Well, I mean, the cavern creatures were mounting, were mounted on them, but uh, the lava here was uh, able to deal with most of the threat. All right, well, I guess now that that's there, I guess I should turn this all off and just lock this off, really. Actually, you know what? We're going to go up to the top here and just go clear glass. I'm starting to really enjoy this uh, cavern creature threat, though. I will say that. Like, more than I have previously. Oh, some migrants have arrived. Uh-oh. I've actually lost dwarves, what? It's mildly concerning. Gwendelf, thank you very much for the raiders. I think all my mods are lurking, so. Hope your stream was good. 
Uh oh. Baca glass was found. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think I know what killed him. Yeah, I think I know what killed him. Slight. <laughs> I have to. I've had to um, put some. Uh, to take some pretty e extreme cavern cleaning precautions recently, Gwendolf. Um It's been tough times, but uh, you know, I, the, the 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 cavern creatures um, needed to be taught a lesson. I would say. Uh, if you guys want to see other uh, more dwarf fortune, more dwarfy content, uh, go check out Quendelf. Been streaming quite a bit of door for it. Making sure the dwarves aren't actually getting back into fights here. I did lose one dwarf from each of these squads. That's weird. There's a dwarf alive that fell onto a mushroom? Um. Oh. Huh. You are correct. There is, in fact, a dwarf alive who fell onto a mushroom. Um, I guess we should go rescue him, eh? It's a rescue mission? Yep, saving private Dorfus. The lava's riving or saving not even private Dodok. This is just Dodok. Dodok is kind of a pretty good one of my dwarves. Would would like to save Dodok, in fact. <laughs> the Gilded Martyr of Thunder also has a great title, if you ask me. <laughs> I'll just prioritize those up. Get those done quick. You're my. Uh, some of the mushrooms are actually like uh, always like at specific temperatures. Not entirely certain if that's one of them, but and because of that, they essentially can't burn. Like they're the one, I, I, I think it's nether cap that is always at absolute zero or whatever. This is admittedly not the fastest way I could dig to this dwarf, but I'm just hoping they don't starve to death. It's just that nether cap that's always closed, cold. I thought that there was another one that can't actually, that a couple of them don't have burn points. Like the caps themselves don't. Like they're, they're considered constructed objects basically. Unlike trees, which aren't considered constructed objects. They could be wrong. I know some of them do burn. I dropped the song on Valentine's Day and Kit Fox actually reached out to you about it. Oh, cool. What was ridiculous about it? You agree on my take on short form content? Yeah. <laughs> a video I've tried to record like three times and every time I look at it I'm like man I just sound like I'm bitching about not wanting to make videos <laughs> I re that's like the fourth time I recorded it I'm like I just this, sh this shit sucks it's a love ballad about plump helmet man it's, hold on there you go I mean, link it in the chat. You can't just tell us that you dropped a hot single and then not share it. It's like against the rules. It's certainly against the rules of being a SoundCloud rapper.
Also, thanks for pointing out this dwarf on the mushroom. I never would have noticed him. Never. Would have never seen this dwarf. This dwarf would have just vanished into the ether and then we would have found a dead dwarf like months later and been like, huh? Well, we're trying to rescue her. Walnut is recovering wounded. Another one of my squads is back. As we run all the way across the goddamn world. They've even had to stop and sleep. That's how long of a run it is. <laughs> I mean, saving up for a new one. Well, there you go. Chat room, go click on that link. And I'll repost that in the YouTube chat as well. So we've clearly got note. Also, it's called the Labyrinthine Church. Oh, that's a good name. The history of the human, a humbling offering to the unions of dabbling, uh, the general and other topics, possibilities of the monastery, and dreams of the monastery, and uh, condo lightning whiskey, candle lightning whiskey and other topics, and uh, a wizard's guide to torch daubed. Not a bad collection. So I want to put my library down here somewhere. In this area. And by this area, I mean like above the fortress. I'm trying to figure out where. Maybe build a, maybe I need a bridge. Cause currently I have like this little ramp going down here, but like what if I built a bridge from here to here? From opulent to royal? Yeah, I was going to say that materials matter and also quality of the engravings matter. I'm going to suspend us a library up here. We're going to put those clear glass blocks to use. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go over here and place a wall piece right there. Fix that. Bed, bed, bed. Chest, chest, chest. No, don't have any. Um, and cabinet, cabinet, cabinet. And door, door, door. One of them didn't get done, but that's okay. So I... need storage somewhere. The thing that I'm trying to figure out is... I need block storage and I'm just trying to figure out where I should put my block storage that's like efficient and convenient I have an idea I have an idea I've talked about making like minecart tracks in this fort a couple times and I just haven't done it. So here's what I'm gonna do. This 
this is going to be a little bit roundabout, but I care more about it looking cool and then ending somewhere convenient than being convenient as a whole. So I'm going to make it connect to here and then go to right there. And essentially what this is going to do, it's going to give us possibly two different stockpiles, I'm thinking. I'm thinking one of them going to be for quartzite and the other one is going to be for everything else oh gosh Got another, I got two ghosts. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go down to here. Up to here. Um. There we go. Also, yeah. Uh, like, the difference between, let's just say, a door that's made of... Gabbro is like a door that's made of Gabbro is like 14, right? A door that's made of, let's say, steel is closer to 100 to 150. Like, uh, here's another good example. Uh, this this is a table made of mudstone. It's worth 18. Um, this is a iron table with gem encrusting, and it's called and it's valued at 741. So I mean, it kind of depends. <laughs> What's up, Clino? How's things? Apparently, I found a crash. I, I caused the a crash earlier, uh, or I found a bug earlier that crashed the game because somebody had the wrong type of skin. I don't know. You'd have to ask Putnam for more clarification on that one, but apparently that happened. <laughs> Napalm, the holy burial, withdraws from society and drops his mug and then books it. Is a skilled weaponsmith and a proficient weaver, so it's either gonna be clothing related or something else. Um, okay, hold on. I don't think I have a one of these for you. Okay, you you need a slab still. Let's see what you claim. Yeah, it's okay. I'm sure somebody'll grab it for you. It was just one of the rock mugs. It wasn't even one of the uh, goblets. Uh, not that I've seen. The thing is, like, a lot of the, the dwarves from the last fort are actually still in the faction. They're just all currently uh, royalty. <laughs> a lot of them have become royalty. So if you're asking if you can redeem another dwarf, yeah, you can. I, I, I'd be questioning whether or not they're even alive. Devil Dawn, thank you very much for gifting a sub to Quendel. Uh, do you know what uh, matters most when conquering settlements? Is it overall squad power? Uh, attrition, <laughs> but tactics, um, and then individual skill, because it's, it's 1v1s, basically, is the way taking over locations works, so it's like your dwarves versus them in the power of attrition plus skill. Ambusher is the initial skill, basically. It's like the first one that's needed. Clothers shop is what you've claimed, and you've zipped off, and you've gathered... Well, I can tell a bunch of stuff already. Let's follow you. Grab 
Grabbing green glass gems. Chat room likes your ballad, Wendell. I'll have to listen to it after stream. That's a forgotten beast. It's a titan. Apparently, I actually just have a couple of totems. I'm just going to get you making totems. Just on repeat, actually. I, I have no idea how many totems I'm going to end up with, but I will keep the cooler totems. Okay, so let's go here. Make a track stop. We're going to have two routes going here. And then one here. And one here. You just had a major boo-boo. You sent your dwarves to go siege a tower and they all got captured. You placed them with the recruits, but you forgot to turn off the mission. And now the recruits are going to the tower. Oh no. You can um if you hit if you hit this and go to missions, you can try and cancel it. Hold on a second. Are you trying to, were you trying to attend a meeting with somebody who's no longer on the map? All right, well, they're coming back now, so that's good. This dwarf is also trying. So many dwarves are trying to attend meetings with these soldiers. That's very funny. They're all coming back onto the map. And it's just like, we need to attend meetings. <laughs> Stole more books. There we go. Good stuff. You'll love to see it. What mic are you getting? If I can ask, Wendell. I need to stand up. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> at some point. Hey, you're making those uh, nec uh, necromancer towers very happy. Charitable donations. To the used body store. That's a disturbing sentence to say out loud. Alright, so I'm going to go here. Funk this. And this is just going I'm to... here to watch Dorf. Ah. White Pony One, thank you very much for the 23rd month. Welcome back. I'm not going to lie, I was very worried. I, now I'm wondering. I wonder if the... Uh, problem sound has been... Um, whoa, what just happened? Uh, I wonder if the problem sound has been uh, patched out of this version yet. Uh... So, Darius, thanks for the dollar. White Pony One, thank you very much for the resub for 23 months. White Pony One, thank you very much for the five pack of gift subs. Just need two more different people, and that's a hype train. But thank you. Uh... Yeah, I mean, like, there, there's a. I, I found a crash bu bug earlier today, right? So. Like, odds that we're going to, you know. Get stuff changed um, while there's crash bugs is very unlikely. You have an old XLR mic, so you used to sing a lot, but you need an interface for it. You're in the process of slowly making a home studio. Yeah, I know, I get you. I mean, I, 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 like, I started streaming in... Oh, God. 
2000 and what? Uh, the, I guess 13? Five bucks. Thanks for the five dollars, Nero Keys. I didn't have what I would describe as an off an office, like a full office until like 2020. Like so 2013 was when I started. 2020 was when I had finished my office. More or less. And now it's like I look at him like I should probably upgrade some shit. I'm like, no! <laughs> Don't need it. None of this shit's necessary. Devil Dawn, thanks for the dollar. I appreciate you greatly. So as long as minecarts aren't being powered, they just go over top of each other. They can use the same tracks. So you can put multiple carts on the same minecart. Artifact is missing from its proper place. Oh, well, that's why it's gone. <laughs> There's apparently an artifact that's been sitting in my stairwell for a bit. Well, kiss that artifact goodbye, I suppose. Only quartzite. Nothing else. Deep Sea Fission, thanks for checking out a gift sub. Hey, Bob Trum. Back from making dinner. What was for dinner? What was the important bit? Um, an artifact just got stolen, but I'm specifically planning to... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, probably ignore it unless somebody witnessed it. Okay, so this right here... Needs to have zero of these. Oh, boy. Dude. Devil Dawn, thank you very much for the five pack. Jeez. And also Anonymous, thank you very much for checking out a single gift sub. Appreciate you. It means a lot. All right, so this is going to be for everything that isn't Quartzite. Just to clarify... Everything that is in quartz. Okay, well, I've done it twice now. <laughs> and this one right here on the left will just be for quartzite. So right here... You're just loading Quartzite. Now will add a drop-off point, which is going to be this side. And you are going to glide this way when you load up. And just glide south. When... Always when... Empty of desired items. And this is going to be called Rock Blocks Q. And this one's going to be for everything else. I'm going to make a little spot down here. Go here and say Yes, all of these. None of these. Could they have, how could they have spaghetti? Um, no. <laughs> You've answered and asked your own question right there. Darius, thanks for the additional $4. You're very kind. Use your first Twitch payout to buy editing software. Now onto audio things. What editing software did you buy? I was gonna say for audio things, a lot, a lot of that stuff can be done digitally. I, if you wanna like keep things on a budget, I would recommend Voice Meter Banana. Old piece of software and uh, Audio Technica AT2020 USB mic. XLR is more expensive and more fiddly, but it sounds like you've got experience there already, so I'm sure you got this. But AT2020 and uh, Voice Meter Banana is the budget way to do things.
So this one is going to be for everything else. But for Quartzite. These are both going to load from right here. And your second stop is going to be right here. When empty. All right, well, that should work. I just need to assign a minecart to that other one, I think. And just double check that there isn't. Wait. None of these can have bins assigned to them. If any of them have bins assigned to them, it's going to ruin the whole thing. Bins don't really like minecarts all that much. Yeah, I mean, you could say wheat, flour, and tomatoes, essentially spaghetti. Yeah, except it'll come out like a roast. So... Bill Mora, gotcha. Who <laughs> new to video editing? Ah. Yeah, that is me. I'm trying to just move to free open source software because to hell with all this shit. Uh, Vabok is, oh God. <laughs> I must have torched more dwarves than I realized. <laughs> just ending up with like random ghosts everywhere. Okay, I, I do have a slab for these two, I think. Yuvash, not Vabok. Okay. So now we're just waiting on this second minecart to get here. Getting fast with it very slowly. Yeah, I mean, it's progress. I've never used Filmora, so... the minecart stuff I'm working on? Uh, I mean, it's completely redundant minecart stuff, but I'm setting it up so that the blocks that get made in these workshops go into this stockpile. Uh, all of, most of them are going into this one. Uh, specifically, quartzite ones are going to go into this one. And then they're going to be sorted into these two stockpiles up here. That's literally all it is. But uh, you're watching on YouTube, so you can just skim back in the VOD if you missed it. Give Quendelf a dwarf. Chat, what kind of dwarf do I give Quendelf? What job do I give Quendelf? Go with Weaponsmith. Bard? I might have an elf. Bard? Hold on. Let me see. Thank you very much for the hype train, though. Uh, with the 1100 bits and the 13 gift subs. I have two goblin bards. <laughs> I have a goblin. Di I have two goblin dancers, more specifically. But uh, let's see. I think it's ironic that Bone Saw is a talented speaker because Bone Saw is ready. I don't really have any musicians. It's like just speakers. Now let's go with Hast. Hmm. Or actually. Go down a little further. I like how most of these dwarves are like skilled speakers. Just kind of curious at this point. And an ad break at this exact moment, so I'm also kind of stalling. <laughs> These ones with like the bug eyes kind of look like an old meme face. Which I personally find very amusing. <laughs> 
What about this one? A bit of dancer. And a good speaker. Former, there we go. Currently praying to the god of death. I really need to move my generic anything goes temple out of the seed stockpile. <laughs> it's the one thing that was temporary that has stayed permanent. The the great queen Gorlek is what you should write a DF song about. <laughs> the Gorlek queen we had. I could send you the save file. The start history is pretty short, though. In in this, because this is the same world, and she died in battle. Where can you learn about her? Um, I think I uploaded the save. Where did I put it? Is the actual question. <laughs> um, if you want to know her life before she died. It is that. Sorry about the big link. Things in forts you do. Th quirky things you do in forts, like habits that you have for every fort. Hmm. Let me read this dwarf, then I'll think about it. I name dwarves after viewers. That's a quirky thing I do in forts. That's cheating. Uh, occasionally overindulges, uh, is rarely happy or enthusiastic, is conflicted by this as she values parties and merrymaking in the abstract. She's grateful when others help her out, and she tries to return favors, and she does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings. She likes to keep things practical without delving too deep into the abstract, and she is not particularly interested in what others think about uh, think of her. Uh, she tends to only form tenuous emotional bonds with others, and she tries to keep her things orderly. She, When she's nervous, she clicks her tongue. She needs alcohol to get through the working day and likes working outdoors and only grumbles mildly at the bad weather. Getting used to tra And she's getting used to tragedy. Dreams of creating a great work of art and personally sees war as, as a useful means to an end. Uh, has a negative view of those who exercise power over others. Values honesty and doesn't think one way or another about leisure time. She likes tin, glaze, star ruby, and giant rheus macaw leather. Wait, did that say beavers? Hold on. <laughs> She, she likes giant beaver bone. Something I've never seen in Dwarf Fortress, but always want to. Uh, giant beaver bone, the color dark indigo, and short swords, grates, and llamas for their long necks, and worms for their wriggling, and the sight of the twinkling cave, and when possible prefers to consume barley wine and two grain flour, two grain wheat flour, and absolutely hates flies. Um, she's a member of the Cult of Ghosts, which is the one of the three religions based around the God of Death, and you are a Militia Dwarf as part of the Blockaded Covenants, which means you're a crossbow dwarf. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, you know many poems, many foam, forms of poetry. You don't know a single song. You know, that's probably why I never get people dancing in, in this fort is because nobody knows any songs. <laughs> Uh, Napalm Sideburns is off gathering items. Still. It... This is a Forgotten Beast's third left toe bone. Third toe from their left foot. Time to release a badger? Oh, I beg your pardon? It tried a, a big long cart to move clay to the magma layer, but it was a mess. I'm hesitant to try again. Uh, what part of it was a mess? I mean, like here. Let's let's just watch this roll once they finish filling it. Uh oh, artifact is missing. Oh right, duh. That was one I saw earlier. That's gone for a while. It's like it's, it's might as well be done. Uh, Napalm has begun a mysterious construction. I don't know. If, if I was you, I, I would cheat if I was writing music about Dwarf Fortress. I would look up stories that are like pseudo famous or relatively famous, things like Arch Crystal or like that Elven Queen or whatever that were written ages ago and write songs based on those. <laughs> that's what I would do. I don't know if that's cheating, but I just go find. Pretty commonplace known lore in the community and roll with those. Oh, duh. Got a bunch of livestock again.
Room card Carnage? Yeah, that that yeah, Room Carnage. Yeah, yeah. I was reading Room Carnage and going, like, hmm. I mean, obviously Kogan's son is like the classic example of somebody doing that, right? Boat murdered. Something I really like about tasks like this too is they're also really good for kids because it, it gives the kids something to do consistently. You're never short of, of ideas, only time. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hey, Vaxes. How's things? I need uh, to, to mod a uh, beaver man sieve. Be confusing and ba... You need to, like, use custom world gen to make a real jaggy cliff with, like, lots of water everywhere. And then literally just play Timberborn. Like, surface only. Uh, like, no pickaxes. You can't... Or, no, maybe no digging deep. Like, you can't dig beneath the, the dirt layers and, like, only wood and dirt. <laughs> Mod the elves out of the game so you don't get, like, murdered to death. And then just roll with it. Finally got time to come by again. Yeah, I mean, we've been through multiple busy seasons over the past few months. Should get a morale boost after the successful fending off raid or siege. Why? <laughs> I have a question. If you were a child living at home, and then suddenly you received word that your country was going to war, all right, and then... Every single, uh, like, fit adult uh, in that you knew vanished for six months. And then your parents didn't come back. Would you get a morale boost? Because that is, like, the most gamey fucking thing ever. <laughs> and this is a game that, like, doesn't give you gamey things. That would be a very not Dwarf Fortress thing. Maybe for goblins, once goblins become a playable race. But for dwarves? Nah. Um... Holy the Napalm Sideburns, the Holy Burial has created Tad Tithal, a sheep wool, I'm assuming, sandal, and uh, offers it to the Crimson Will of Smiths. Like I could see that that could be a thing where like sort of like um when somebody is convicted of a crime, right? Certain dwarves will get um a happy feeling and some won't. I, I could see it being something like that, but everybody, no. Uh, this is a sheep wool sandal. All craft store is of the highest quality. It is encircled with round gabbro cabochons and rose-cut almondines, and decorated with forgotten beast bone and encircled with bands of cushioned gabbro cabochons and made from sheep's wool cloth. And this object is adorned with hanging rings of alpaca wool and menaces with spikes of sheep's wool and gabbro. On the item is an image of an oat in alpaca wool. On an item is an image of a mittens in green glass. On the item is an image of broken space bar, the escorted mirror of gates, the dwarf inn. Yeah, bro. That was one of my legendary uh, military dwarves in the last fort, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I don't know. That's just not a very dwarf fortressy thing. I I could see, like, to me, it, it it would make a bit of sense if it was like they would write songs about it or something specific like that. But I don't know. I I, I don't see that as being a particularly dwarf fortressy thing. Uh-oh. The Bud Faith of Vegetation now has many members and requires a uh, temple complex in High Priest. Got a necromancer poet sharing tales. But no, that's that's a very not Dwarf Fortressy thing is the easy way to put that, in my opinion. Yay, finally got rid of one of those. Probably see if I got any more to place. No, uh, going to war causes one thing in reality, and that's trauma. Sadness and trauma. There is no positives to come from it, win or lose. I mean, some people might be relieved, but there is no... There is no winning. Nobody wins in war. 
But uh, there's nothing stopping you, the player, from, like, organizing a, for lack of a better term, or organizing a festival where you uh, get all of your dwarves to, uh, let's say, only go to the tavern and then sing or something for a chunk of time. Stuff like that. Like, you could absolutely come up with personal ways to celebrate successful battles, but... I don't know. That would reward the player too much for war. I think that there needs to be more rewards for not going to war. <laughs> not the other way around. No, it wouldn't. It would it, it would encourage you to murder things. I have a question. Why would it encourage you to lock down and avoid fighting? It would encourage you to do the opposite because you said that they should get a mood boost for a victory. That's not a victory. Anything that's like a temporary delaying of the inevitable. I mean, right now, if you don't want to fight, what you can do, if you want to lock down, is you can like just collect artifacts and then give the goblins the parlay when they arrive with large sieges. That's something you can do. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I wouldn't be a fan of that mechanic, to be honest. Make dwarfs, not war. See, I, I don't agree. I think, like, I would just have PTSD from being under siege. No, they don't. There's no negative consequences to having an artifact stolen, aside from player annoyance. Same with giving away. Yeah, I, I could not I could not disagree more with with the that behavior based on how dwarves exist in the current game. Make dwarf not war. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I, I that like that is a very Rimworld gamey BS mechanic is the way that that reads to me. I'm not a fan of stuff like that generally. I mean, it would be weird if they added it to the game, but I I don't see that ever happening. Besides, if you actually want to give your dwarves a morale boost for sur <laughs> surviving a siege, just build mist generators in your tavern. That'll give them a morale boost when they come back. Got uh, thieves coming in. A non-artifact wooden shield. But their army was standing. You begrudgingly gave it to the... Did, well, I mean, hey, at least they left. <laughs> Must have just been, like, the highest value item in the fort for some reason. That's weird, though. <laughs> Running kind of low on booze. Oops, I was thought I was following this. I mean, any named item is considered an artifact. And then here comes the snatchers. There goes the goblins. Oopsies, that's not the button I wanted, but it works. Um. Oh, shit. Did I? F I didn't fail an artifact. Why is. I guess Orange just got kind of depressed and is now stumbling around obliviously. That's a little awkward. Just pull this lever. Yeah, I know. There you go. Clano's kind of got a point, too. It actually is this even going to collapse? 
I forgot to carve the top off the bit off the top. No, 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 never mind. Don't pull that lever. Something else I gotta do first. We'll do that later. Get those dwarves back down here. It's gonna take so long to get all these rock these blocks out. But hey. At least they're getting out. You opened a uh, tight sealed ounce of weed and kaboom, you keep finding more everywhere. How many people work in your office? Because, <laughs> geez. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because that, that makes a lot more sense than you actually working in an office. I was like, are you allowed to smoke weed at the office? Because, like, I thought, you work, I thought you worked from home. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense. I need more ash. I am making ash. I guess I'm out of wood then. Am, in fact, out of wood. Caravan has arrived. I love how I, I was saying earlier that I need to break into this area again, but I just kind of haven't done it. I probably could actually fight those cavern creatures. So you know what? Let's build a little wall along here. A higher percentage than this was. Get all these blow darts in here. Let's all use clothing. Aside from a couple goblets, yeah, it is. Also, all use clothing, more or less, aside from a couple crowns and a few chains, which is fine. That one I don't really want to sell because it's got books in it. Wait. I also don't want to sell. Also don't want to sell. That one I'll keep. It's mostly cloth. That I can get rid of. Those I can get rid of. Those I can get rid of. Those I can get rid of. Um, some of them are labeled as undead, and some of them are labeled as invaders. Uh, what the difference is? Uh, they're both invaders. This is a simple version. Uh, one of them is undead. That that is that is the difference. They will both kind of do the same thing. The difference is the well, actually, there there is a bit of a difference. The undead ones won't leave. So if you wait long enough, the siege will break, and some of them will leave. But the ones that are just labels that, labeled as undead won't. They will stay there forever. They will relentlessly fight you forever. Because they don't really have any brains. <laughs> they tend to kind of consume those. I think this is where I'm going to put the library. And I 
and I still need a place to put those prisoners. <laughs> Cast iron is dying to taste steak again. Yeah. Can't remember the last time I actually wanted to eat steak. I could use some salmon, though. Could definitely go for some barbecued salmon. Like, I've had periods in my life where I've eaten decent amounts of steak, but I've never fully understood why people talk about it in such high regard as they do. It's like, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's nice. I like, I like steak every now and again, but... Not this, like, revolutionary, life-altering foodstuffs. That some people make it out to be. It's just a random leatherworks that doesn't need to be there. Got leatherworks down here now. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that's around the time that I ate a bunch of steak. Well, I mean, not like not a bunch. A bunch is like an exa a gross exaggeration. That was when I ran. That was around the time I ate some steak. It was around the time I bought some steak. Was when I suddenly could afford steak. I was like, wow, I can afford steak. I should eat steak. And then I was like, maybe I'm just bad at making steak. No, I'm I'm not bad at making steak. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Nice. Well, enjoy it, dude. Actually, I don't even know how many I have. 130. Let's do 130 quartzite blocks. At least this area is starting to clear up a little bit. Jeez. Okay, so the bud faith of vegetation is this, I think. That's oh, the gilded faith. Where's the bud faith of vegetation? Not that. Is it the one I put down here? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Let's prove that. Good Charles is still our diplomat. And I'm going to say I will keep my distance from the homeland once again. But yeah, undead invaders can be a bit of a pain if you don't have the means to fight them. If you do have the means to fight them, they're not so bad. But they can be a bit of a pain. Uh, let's do... I don't even know what I have in here right now. Let's... So I'm pretty sure I have one of these. You'll budge eventually. <laughs> More like, boss, my brain rotted and I don't remember the way home. <laughs> Would be my bet about what that uh, undead is thinking when they're just standing there trying to figure out why they're there. That'd be my bet, anyway. Yet everyone started as hammer, as like what, Warhammer dwarves? All the equip. Oh, wow. Okay, so that, that was like a very early siege then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, no, I mean, if you were, like, right... If it's a start that's, like, right next to a... If it's a start that is right next to, uh... A basically, like, a... what? What's the word? If, it, if, it's a, if it's a start that is right next to a Necromancer Tower, you really need to be, like, on the ball with getting shit started. Because <laughs> if you don't, um, you're just kind of SOL almost immediately. Okay. 
I feel like I'm kind of shocked that I'm out of gems, but... Oh, well, no, I'm not. Uh-oh. The human representative Snang Tatsunmaksu has come, a, a humanoid creature prone to great ambition. Hmm. <laughs> really now? Uh, usually if I'm starting right next to a uh, necromancer tower, I start with seven picks. <laughs> or if it's like a, an awful, like, mon like a ha haunted start or like... Something where there's going to be zombies close to the start. So, um, one, yes, humans are bad news, but this is actually a were creature. Which is really funny, because he still has clothes on. Where are you from? Decorated with eagle bone, eh? How many things have you killed? Ah! Hmm. <laughs> I like how he's attacked places, a place called Confused Tower. Well... Wait, what weapons do you have? You have an iron spear and a copper shield. You got a goose bone crown. Hmm. It must have bit him. Well, if you do decide to enter my fort, I will stab you to death. Because you are a were creature. Weakness seduced. Oh boy. You're the enemy of a lot of things. You are a member of the tired doom. <laughs> I'm tired of doom. Where creatures have clothes, but not performers. <laughs> That's not true. Performers only don't have clothes if they have no culture. <laughs> no, this guy's lying about his identity because he's got weapons, but says he's a poet. How many songs do you know? Watch him. He knows no songs. He knows no poems. Like, he's lying about the fact that he's a poet. He's a dabbling liar. He's not very good at it, clearly. I mean, look at his weapon. <laughs> Also, 101 years old, which is weirdly old for a human. My dwarves are chasing him. It appears that my dwarves missed him. Legendary bookbinder? Oh, he's a, he's a were creature. Trust me. He might not look like a were creature, but he is. Uh, so one of my dwarves managed to kick him in the head. But that's about all. Got real good dodging skills. And also pretty good cardio. Okay, there we go. Finally got him. Axdorf strikes him, but the sh shot was blocked with the copper shield. There we go. Even Wet Pet joined in. A Wet Pet isn't even in the military. It's just punching him. It's just no one counts as wailing as music. Oh, is he like a metalhead? Is this one of those like screaming isn't metal? Or is screaming isn't music situations? I mean, another thing I could have done is I could have like interrogated him and figured out who he'd killed before, but how many rounds of murder he'd committed and but I just, I don't know want. I don't really want a random were creature locked in my fort. It seems like a bad idea. He's now a beat poet. Wow. Wow. Oh, I need to not have wheelbarrows in this. A waste of a wheelbarrow, there's no reason. Cheers, sideburns. Speaking of, did I ever put your artifact away? No, I didn't. Was it a sandal? I'm 
Okay, well then I need a second one of these. I also didn't put the boot away, because <laughs> apparently I also have a boot. That's the most Canadian sounding thing I've said all day. A. I have a question, Curious Maniac. Do you smoke a lot of weed? A boot what? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, do you have these dreams at uh, on a day where you didn't smoke weed? Uh-oh. My mayor is throwing a tantrum. Oh, he's upset about his office being crappy. Which is funny because he does have a decent study. Huh. All right, well, I guess I can increase the quality of your office. <laughs> But the mayor is tantruming. Maybe we won't get him have the same mayor for so much longer. <laughs> um, these are all crimes being pointed. Literally the entire tavern just cleared. That is hysterical. <laughs> Here, let, let's let's satisfy the mayor with his office. I I, I think we could we owe him that much. Uh oh. Did the mayor just murder somebody? Dude! Mayor just killed a fool! Huh. He also toppled not one but two of my stills. <laughs> this is very realistic to reality. I'm going to interrogate the mayor first. On all three accounts of crime. This does fit the fort goal, though. Yeah. Uh oh. I was incorrect. I'm pretty sure my mayor just killed a second one. Motherfucker, he did. He's crazy. Our mayor has gone insane. He cried on a. Pr did you just kill a priest? <laughs> no, no, you didn't. Okay. Well, man. Okay. Yeah, no, it was holy burial, burial that you just cried on. Okay, that, that that's fine. <laughs> didn't, di di didn't, didn't in fact just kill a priest, but like, I think he thought about it. Where are you heading? I don't feel anything after throwing something. You know, admittedly, I wasn't really paying attention to my mayor, but like, that is really funny. He's gonna go take a shower now. Where is the captain? Now is one of those fun days where we figure out if we can actually like convict the mayor of a crime. Okay, he's gonna go interrogate the mayor. There we go. Just causes problems. He's literally, like, breaking shit and beating the crap out of people purely because I haven't given a nice, given him a nice enough office. <laughs> Which is just... Mwah. It's just perfect. Like, actually, that is perfect. <laughs> Never seen Harrowed. Harrowed is like worse than Haggard. Those are the un non -re like not recoverable levels of distress a dwarf can be under. Oh, I know something else I need to do with the glass. I'm out of wood again, I think. I think they're still reporting his crimes. <laughs> Uh, 
The subject refused. He's like, just like, nah, you, you can't interrogate me, mate. That is hysterical. Like, he's literally just like, yeah, nah. I'm gonna interrogate him again. We're locking him in, too. Sorry about that, Errol. I'm about to get a real office. I heard it's got a well-crafted chain. Maybe I should put a chain in his office. Okay, let's see. Woo Still hasn't successfully done it. Still hasn't. My captain of the guard is, like, not bad at his job, either. He's also trying to conduct a meeting. And it's outra making him outraged. You know what? I, I give up. I can't successfully interrogate him. So instead, what I will simply do is give him justice. I mean, we know he did it. Let's see how long his... Uh, his punishment is... First, did you just make friends with... Hold on. I need to read this. Did you just make friends with the mayor? No, he didn't. Okay, he's a passing acquaintance with the mayor. Mayor. It was like remembering making a friend. I was like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Well, off to prison you go. 141 days. So... Mayor's either going to go insane. Time to set a timer then. Devilish, so you don't miss it next time. He's either going to go insane. He's, he's, he's done. He's going to go nuts. <laughs> well, we'll renovate his office while he's in there. Man, you can't make this shit up. That's too funny. That is too funny. Mayor can conduct meetings in jail. I mean, I was going to go give him an extension of his office. Um, so I don't think it's going to let me. Yeah, it's not going to let me. Well, I do need to start making these prison this prison nicer because that is like an, a plan that I've had for a while and just haven't done. I might as well start with the with the mayor. I mean, first mayoral demand after going to prison is we give him a nicer office, I suppose. But uh, yeah, he can conduct meetings in his office, I think. Here, I'll just actually give him a second office. Just so that he can at the very least still do his job. Because this is gonna be a net negative for the rest of my dwarves if he can't. He 
Mike's also been unable to be extravagant for too long, which is funny. Yeah, okay. So I, I do have to unassign him from his main office. For the time being. Which I'm sure is going to make him real happy, right? Hmm. It's like, I, I do actually want this to work. If this doesn't work, then it is going to cause us problems. The problems it's going to cause us is, um, my other girls are going to get upset. Dwarf degree murder, murder yes. Mayor has been elected prisoner. I mean, I can't boot him out of power, I don't think. Yeah, no, I can't. Like one of the few nobles I can't do things with intentionally. What does my dungeon master need? Oh, my dungeon master needs a weapon rack and an armor stand. I can do that. Thanks for giving him a table now. And his own bed. Or a bed. Maybe not his own bed, but it's a bed. Give you a window. So you can look out and contemplate your mistakes. Speaking of constructions, we're going to uh, continue connecting this with glass. Do Cabro floors in here to be the outline of the library. And Cabro walls. Don't know how I'm going to do that corner. I haven't decided yet. Maybe just uproot that and put another piece of Cabro in. Can I put his prison in? I cannot move him, no. I would have to remove... Uh, hold on. Let, let, let me let me see if I can do this. Let, let me let me try. There's a way I might be able to do it. Um, if I put this rope, because everybody's standing here, right? If I set this back to the, I set this to the mayor, and if I go to here, delete this. And I go to here and make this into a prison cell and then remove this chain once this chain is built. I might be able to do it. Let's see. It may also kill him, but we'll, let's see where it's going to happen. This is something I've never done before, so we're going to find out if this will work. Never even tried to do this before. Okay, there's his chain. Did I forget to trade? Crap. <laughs> I super forgot to trade because I was distracted by my mare. Whoops. So they're either going to beat him up and it's going to cancel his sentence.
Okay, so it says that they're going to go chain them up. Let's just double check that I don't have... Yeah, I do. I do have extra things. So it says that they're going to chain them up. So here's hoping they chain them up in his office. Oh, the um, necromancer experiment? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, geez, I didn't realize random dwarves could chain up somebody. Well, that's kind of cool. I didn't know that that worked that way. <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. I'm very sneezy today. I apologize. He's trying to conduct his meeting in his office, so that's good. Are you at least happy with your office? I'm still not happy with his office. Man, I put a nice chain in your office. And I gave you clear glass windows. And this is how you thank me? Let me just double check that I don't actually have more dwarves that need to be assigned. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, let's just do green glass coffin. You think the chain needs gem encrusting. Well, it doesn't. But it is worth 700. Speaking of... Are you serious is coming to chain the mayor? <laughs> I have a goblin chiefess. Okay, that I need to find out about. Okay, who the hell is the goblin chieftess then? Oh, is she left the map? Oh, that's that's a shame. Had a goblin chieftess in the map for a minute. Okay, so Mayor is in fact is a fact on his in is in fact on his way up here. It's being dragged. It's trying to attend a meeting. What else should I put in his office chat room? I don't really want to waste iron on bars, but I'm real tempted to put metal bars in his <laughs> in his uh, office. Real tempted. Uh, that would be mean to the... Okay, should you put a performer in a single place or should you put a person to perform in several places? If you assign a performer to another place, they cease being able to perform, I think. All right, well, that's your prison cell now. I will give you a nicer table and throne once they are available. But let's uh, let's get these other prison cells back up and rolling again. There we go. I don't want to piss off the mayor. Or not mayor, the captain of the guard. But <laughs> there's people trying to 
I have meetings with him all the way over there, and then I need to assign him back to this. He's probably also pissed that his uh, dungeon is overlapping with his office. Uh, excuse, oh, I see. He is assigned to this. So another thing that I'm going to try and do is technically let him out of his cell. Should He should be able to do that. Um, hmm. Where would I put that in regards to the statue depicting his crime? In his office? But what happens when somebody else gets elected? I have to remember to remove it then. Why? <laughs> no such thing. Darius. Unless you have like 20 streams up and half of them are unmuted, which was me at my worst. Friend for a band you like that went live on Facebook too. Ew, Facebook, gross. Should put on some hand sanitizer after using that website. Well, this guy's gonna have a rough life. <laughs> How about I make steel statue? What's your last name, Toulon? Toulon Jade Ringed. Toulon Jade Ringed. And two dwarves. The two dwarves are being flayed by Tulon Jade Ringed. Tulon Jade Ringed is screaming. Tulon Jade Ringed is laughing. Um. The dwarves look confused. They're calling Geneva? I mean, on what? A fantasy world that doesn't exist? <laughs> and it's going to be called the early death. Done! It's now an image that is known in the world, except I'm not making ten of them. No, just, just one. More than that is a waste of steel. He likes the completely sublime restraint chat room. <laughs> so we're getting a migrant wave. I was about to say, by the way, in case you guys didn't know, the, the, that is open. Do you have any... You would like to be the mayor. All right. If you insist. You might not live or be the mayor much longer, but we'll see. Uh, we're using um, the, the manual redemptions these days. I, I need a break from just reading 100 dwarves a day. Beepsy. He has an incredibly calm demeanor. Um, citation needed. I want to call bullshit. Can I do that? <laughs> Disagree. No. Does not have a calm demeanor at all, in fact. 
He has an incredibly calm demeanor and is very quick to anger. Uh, that doesn't make sense after having a, a mandate ignored in 515. He likes to present himself boldly, even if it would offend the average sense of modesty. And he is generally unhindered by the thoughts of others concerning his actions, clearly. And he doesn't generally think before acting, obviously. He lacks confidence in his abilities, obviously. And he feels discouraged. And he often feels discouraged. He's quite polite and he generally finds himself to be quite hopeful about the future. He's just like a self absorbed narcissist. He is quite ambitious and he's slow to trust others. He tries to keep things orderly. And he doesn't handle stress well. I noticed. He likes to take. He like. He doesn't uh, handle. He likes a little excitement now and again. And he doesn't. He acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. He tends to not reveal personal information and needs alcohol to get through the working day. And he doesn't really care about anything anymore. He dreams of crafting a masterwork someday, and this was realized. And personally, is an absolute believer in the rule of law. So oh, you should be fine with going to prison. Believes that uh, that perseverance is one of the greatest qualities that somebody can have. Finds moderation and self control very important, and values harmonious existence. I don't believe any of this. Doesn't care if others take the time to master skills and is throwing another freaking tantrum um <laughs> he likes horn silver and tin um yeah well at least he's able to have his meetings in here somebody brought him water and he fucking threw it on the ground what a guy that's hysterical in before we just end up with an insane like permanently in prison mayor that i'd be kind of okay with this Well, he's certainly a different personality when he's, you know, in murder and mode. Mayor, but he can't ever go to his bedroom again. <laughs> it's going to literally take years to get all these blocks out of here. Well, he's getting his steel statue. Still not happy with his office. I can't remove you from mayor. Um, the dwarves have to unelect you, unless I kill you, which I don't really want to do. You're just asking questions. Um, I think, I mean, more, I would I would say, does, does he have blonde, short blonde hair that looks fake and a spray on tan is maybe a more accurate question. <laughs> and also early onset dementia. Hoping the mayor doesn't throw another tantrum right now. He feels ferocity reliving being attacked. Who was attacked, though? A peasant telling a story over here? <sighs> hey, did it start? Hey, but hey, it, it just means it took a while. It doesn't mean that it rejected it. Also realizing that I got distracted a whole bunch and super duper didn't finish making a, um, a temple that I agreed to make. I feel kind of bad. Also I'm in an ad break. I don't think I've ever seen that many rejections succeed. It normally stops around 500 for me. I don't know about early onset. All right. God, who knows? A determined consistency for stupidity. Admit witching. Is it, ad, ad, is it Adam twitching or admit witching? I'm pretty sure it's Adam twitching. Adam twitching, thank you very much for the Prime subscription. Appreciate you. It means a lot. Thank you very much for joining this channel and this content that I make here. Chat room, can I get a round of beers with a brand new Prime sub? Thanks, dude.
Also, I, w I don't think we were talking about Biden. I'm pretty sure my chat was referencing Trump, not Biden. Because the, there was a very specific bit about looking like an orange. And Biden doesn't look like he's had a tan in the last 35 years. How can I tell? That was a guess. I think I just heard a car accident. I just heard honk, scream. They're still honking. Someone's just like lying on their horn. That's something. Still honking. Except now they're like hitting it repeatedly. Cool. Half tempted to go stick my nose outside. See, see what's going on. But also half tempted to not because I kind of don't care. Let's not fail this temple complex. Did somebody honk for you? Uh, no. No, I, I, I did not. Honk if bone saw is ready, I suppose, would be the thing to say there then. <laughs> I need to upgrade my kitchens. And the reason I need to upgrade my kitchens is because we're not able to make booze fast enough and my mayor toppled two of them and I kind of wanted them anyway. So now we get a new holy earth and the new holy earth is going to be Street Bow, Street Boo. And Lil Jaeger is now the first wing of the Bud Faith of Vegetation. I've satisfied another temple. I think my mayor just threw another tantrum. He's trying to sleep. Where is your quarters? No longer your quarters. <laughs> He's just sleeping on the ground. Poor guy. <laughs> I almost feel bad for him, aside for the part where I don't, which is most of it. Okay, so I'm going to expand my kitchens. Kitchens are going to be expanded into up to here. I need more charcoal, I think. I think I can unnerf the cavern creatures now. I did nerf them slightly a couple days ago. Yeah, the sound commands are a tier two thing. All right, uh, I'm gonna slightly, I'm gonna un, I'm gonna put the uh, the dif difficulty back to default because uh, currently I have it set to to um, custom. I can do that pretty easily. Let's just double check that that does in fact reset them. I set them from five, from 10 to 50 to 1030, so I couldn't get as many cavern creatures showing up, but we're back up to maximum again. I mean, I took uh, Vax's name pretty literally when I first saw them in chat and almost time and almost just kind of banned them because I thought they were a troll, so. This critical role is a better direction for you to go with that. Sus usernames have that effect on me sometimes. There is a horsey. Yeah, no, I agree. Or if you could, like, completely eliminate all of them like you can with the goblins, or if you just kill them all, they just stop showing up. 
I'm not super bothered by them. I just wish that there was a bit more to them, if that makes any sense. Oh, I absolutely took your username, literally. But then again, the day that you tuned in, I'd been bombed twice by um, people just throwing slurs into my chat while linking a cryptocurrency site. So, you know, I kind of thought you were part of them because they had very similar conspiratorial names. And also names that were just straight up, you know, racist <laughs> or extraordinarily anti-Semitic, stuff like that. You know, Holocaust stuff. And they seemed like pleasant individuals. <laughs> so this is going to be my library, I think. Seems like you were lucky. Eh, I mean, you were, you were not an asshole, so... He also didn't seem like a bot, and I generally assume that those people are just bots. No, they don't. They're just sort of there. Well, they do, but they don't. They do, but they don't follow the same rules as normal civilizations in this game. Normal civilizations in this game, like, have population limits and stuff, and, like, items and things, whereas these creatures don't. So they sort of do, but they sort of don't. But also, you, you got to remember that it's kind of it's kind of on me that I get those people every now and again. It's, it's because I I don't ban links in my chat, and I also don't use auto mod. Most people probably would just completely, like, not even see them because they most people have Automod turned on. I think Automod is a little goofball, and I'm not a big fan. I'd rather moderate my chat. Like, if somebody says something out of line, I'd rather call them out for it and make an example versus, you know, just me seeing it, removing it, and then moving on. I feel like things like Automod and banned phrases actually allow crappy people to exist in your chat because... You know, something, if you just have a bunch of banned phrases and somebody says something shitty, you don't know who said the shitty thing. I'd rather know who said the shitty thing, you know? Wall off every Z level and force them into the same level as the traps? Does that not work? Uh, if they know where the traps are, they can become trap avoid. Did I not queue up bookcases? I thought I did. Oh, they just haven't even started. <laughs> Makes sense. I think I should expand my my glass output. What I should do. Also, I think I can stop firing lava out of here. Well, this is getting a little silly. Um, so something that enemy seizures will do, if you ever, if you ever notice enemy seizures, uh -oh. a devilish potato just somehow caved a tree in on themselves and didn't die in the process. That is impressive. Shaken after a cave-in. I was knocked out by a cave-in. This leaves me shaken. I mean, I would be too, mate. Jeez. Uh, congrats. The mayor is tantruming again. Nice timing. Man, I could just keep convicting the mayor of crimes. <laughs> just continue. How, how long is your sentence now, mate? 100, he just extended, he just extended his sentence by another beating and another like 30 days. Innocuous fate phrases can be funny. Oh, what with like um, by by using uh, my brain is shutting down apparently. 
by using Automod to do that? I, I suppose. I suppose that could be funny. I guess it depends on your sense of humor at that point. So I don't have much more space in this reservoir, but that's okay. I'm just gonna make some more glass forges. We're just going to do that. I just realized that I need sand. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really, I, I also don't feel like dealing with auto mod myself if I'm being honest. That's mostly all it actually is. And also, I am, like, very fortunate in that I'm not somebody who really gets targeted by annoying trolls. And I also don't... Gen like, it's pretty infrequent. Like, it happens maybe twice a year. And I don't generally, in like, what's the word? I have to actually ban people. I can usually just kind of... If, if I have a problem with somebody, just tell them. And usually they figure it out pretty quick. Because that's one of the benefits of having an older audience. You know, like, if, if you have 20,000 children watching, yeah, you're going to have some shit wagons walking around just saying dumb shit for the sake of it to, like, get a rise out of people. But fortunately, I, I don't really have that type of audience. So it's kind of one of the benefits of playing Dwarf Fortress, I guess. Is you end up with a pretty, you know, within reason, generally mature audience. Some exceptions, obviously, but... I, I still love to tell the story, though, of the one time this channel got flooded by 12-year-olds. Because there was a um, a Fortnite streamer who won some world's thing named Blind, by the way. Blind BTW. And um, he actually, apparently, initially on Fortnite had not quite that. I think his username on Fortnite was literally just Blind. Or, like, it wasn't Blind, by the way, but his name on Twitch was Blind, by the way. Blind BTW. And uh, he announced that he was giving away free v free free V bucks was the first thing that he announced. The second thing that he announced was that he was giving them away on his Discord. And I was streaming. And then suddenly one of my regulars pops in and goes, "Hey, blind, you know that you have like forty people in voice on your Discord." I was like, "What?" <laughs> because I have the like Discord like unique join code. Which is blind. B-L-I-N-D. Uh, I don't use any mods for Dwarf Fortress, generally, Cardinal. But when I do, I use total overhaul mods, so I use things like... Or I will occasionally play mods like the Star Wars mod or the Rise of the Mushroom Kingdom mod. Um, you're not sure? It's the currency that you can purchase to buy skins in Fortnite. Anyway, uh, my, my regular team's in goes, Hey, so you know that there's a bunch of children? So one of my mods pops in there, and he pops into chat, and he's just laughing. He goes, Dude, blind, get on voice. So I pop on a voice with him, I'm like, what's up? And he goes... So, they think you're this person, and they were all just confused about what room had the free V-Bucks, and they were all just playing Fortnite, so I gave them a link to the correct Discord server, and they all left. <laughs> like, they were completely amicable. Like, nobody was obnoxious. It was very funny. Everybody was like, so, like, we're, like if I join this Discord server I, and link my Epic account with, with Discord, I get 100 free v free, I get, like, X number of free V-Bucks. Like, why am I not getting the V-Bucks? What's going on? Anyway, anybody want to group up? <laughs> Really fucking funny. Because this guy had like 50,000 concurrent viewers on Twitch or something. I'm going to go turn off the uh, lights in my closet for my closet dirt. Two seconds.
I now am the proud father of about 150, uh, like, lettuce seedlings, apparently. They all sprouted today. Planted them all on Saturday. Um, okay, so let's do this. They just have no filter. Kids are not generally intentionally toxic. Sure. I will tentatively agree with you on that one. I need pearl ash. Gonna queue up two of these on each. Sorry, I probably just need to make ash. Let's find out. Yep. Actually, do I even need to do those? Make Ash. Gotta make Ash catch him. Yeah, I don't need those jobs. Ah, shit. I just got rid of something I didn't want to get rid of, probably. That's fine. Yeah, because I have a job up there already for these. Just queued 800 up. Let's not do that. Let's do... Make Ash... Out of whatever wood. Parts have completed, checked monthly. And let's just do 50. Also, um, Mayor threw yet another tantrum. Apparently he... He uh, improved pacification? Oh yeah, no. I mean, if children are assholes, it's almost always the parents' fault to a degree. But some kids are just difficult. <laughs> Not that I'm a parent, but I wouldn't know. I would have to ask a parent. Okay, so let's go... Make another kiln. Make you out of clear glass. Oh, his office is, is... Here's the thing, Deep Sea Fishing. I know his office is overlapping because his office has a prison cell in it. I didn't have to do that, but that's what people wanted. So it won't be overlapping if I remove the prison cell, but if I remove the prison cell, then he'll be removed from his office. I could remove the center of the office from the prison cell, but I kind of don't want to do that. But yeah. See? He was, um... What's the word? Satisfied beforehand anyway, but... Needs another cabinet, which I can give him. But they shouldn't remove him from prison now. That should be fine. Should be fine. Still waiting on Pearl Ash. How much charcoal do I have? I got 10 potash, so there is that. What 
What are the conditions on the... 50. Oh, if it's greater than 10. We'll say if it's greater than 9. Let's actually do it this way. If the um, amount of potash is uh, less than 10, we'll start making more. When that bit of the song plays, maybe Dabu was playing Stardew. Okay, well, that should get those going. Let's also just throw a wood furnace up here. Just get more of this stuff going. right there but eh. I'm, a, I'm kind of surprised that moods are as good right now as they are because like simply put the number of dwarves that don't have bedrooms right now is absurd combined with the amount of like crap I've put these dwarves through I'm kind of amazed how positive they're being like shout outs to these dwarves for being like not perfect but like absurdly resilient in comparison to what I'm used to, and in comparison to what I am currently putting them through versus what, like, I've seen dwarves break for before. Let's also, um, butcher shops back here. So I guess shout-outs to these dwarves for being extraordinarily resilient little dudes. Yeah, clearly, Maxon. Clearly. Like, I'm kind of amazed. I didn't think this fort would have lasted this long, but <laughs> here we are. So, speaking of things lasting, I need to check my burrows. because I probably need a lot more burrow. I do. I really, really do. Oh, I, I should I should give them a view to see those axles from up here. I should do that. It'd be really cool to just have like a view of the axle over glass right there. All right. That is a good chunk of space right there. So now that all of that is assigned, I'm gonna turn this on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to here and I'm gonna add this in as well. And then I'm gonna be like, yo soldiers, double check. Most of you got stuff. Yeah, most of you got stuff, okay. Soldiers, I need you guys to all go stand right here. Once we got a good pile of soldiers, we're gonna go fight some cavern creatures is what we're gonna do. Who's ready to uh, go to war against the sparrows? Really setting an example? I mean, <laughs> the statue of the mayor is setting an example. I hope that you're correct. Where does my water drain to? Off the map. Um, it goes through here down here and then off the map on this side because if you just uh, dig all the way to the edge of the map and then smooth the walls and then carve um, gaps in the walls, little fortifications, these things, they used to just be called fortifications, so that's why I call them fortifications. But if you put, if, if you smooth all the way to the edge of the wall and then carve little holes in the wall, the water will actually flow off the map. Very useful.
I mean, I currently need to figure out how to get rid of this lava right here, so I need to dig a little thing across here and flow it out down there. Silver Falcon has fallen into depression. What? Why? What did I do to a Silver Falcon? Just gonna make some iron chests real quick. Let's, uh, let us go to battle in the caverns a little bit. Not gonna lie, it can be pretty damn fun to defend the caverns. Like, I, I feel like I've gone through, like, multiple stages of f opinions of the caverns, and right now I'm pretty positive on them. Could you tell us what is in the, in the patch that had uh, economy currency system? I'm assuming what you've read is not accurate, and it did exist. It did, in fact, exist. Just curious what it was like. Imagine all of your dwarves lining up at what? At okay, the closest office that we have left is the mayor's office. Imagine, in order for your dwarves to get food or get a new sock, everybody had to line up in front of the mayor's office and ask the mayor for food, and then give the mayor money. Because what would happen is. Very quickly, one dwarf would uh, get slightly richer than everybody else and increase prices. And then everybody else would have to purchase all of their things from that one dwarf. And nobody would be able to afford anything because that dwarf controlled the entire market. And the end result would just be nobody could, like, nobody had housing because nobody could afford rent. Nobody had any items because nobody could afford them. And if that didn't end up happening, the issue that would happen or crop up pretty quickly is just the amount of dwarves pathing to find other dwarves to try and buy things. So you have dwarf A pathing to dwarf C, pathing to dwarf Y, and dwarf Y is pathing to dwarf A, and dwarf X is pathing to both B and C to get new socks and shoes. Um, if it worked correctly, it, would just, it was just obnoxious because everybody's always pass pathing everywhere to try to give everybody else money for everything. It, like, didn't work, basically. They've already killed one. Wow, that was quick. All right, here we go. There's a big old crowd of them down here. We're going to tell the dwarves to go and meet up with these crazy goddamn cavern creatures. Uh, Clockworks the Axe Lord, who has 21 kills, mostly against cavern creatures, actually entirely against cavern creatures, is at the front of the line. You can see the full breadth of the threat that we are up against. Rats, sparrows, or cave swallows, etc. And uh, we've got dwarves fighting over here on the right as well, apparently. Uh, we got a huge stack of them right here. Because there was one hovering right above the door. Clockworks is immediately in a martial trance. Hacking at a cave swallow and spearman in the left foot. With a steel battle axe and severed part sails off in the dark. Now, I wasn't going to talk about it, but I guess I can because we're in an ad break, so I can't really do anything. You heard about the monopoly where one dwarf basically controlled the currency, but you didn't know about the meeting about part. It's the pathing part. Because, like, money was a physical item, right? There is actually a game that's trying to do that system, sort of, that exists right now, and that's Odd Realm. I really hope that game's doing okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, also, gen like um, Matt Cat in chat is mentioning, also generational wealth and debt. Basically, it would be really cool if that system comes back, but it would never be able to be implemented the way it was. And I kind of hope that that system comes back, but not in fortress mode. Or not for dwarves, at the very least. I would really like that system to come back for um, uh, humans. If humans ever become playable. I think that would be a really interesting, unique piece of gameplay for humans to have. Is this still filling? Oh my word. <laughs> Okay, um, so there's just, like, so much lava in the caverns that, like, I actually don't think I can get rid of it. That's... <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. I might need to go above this and, like, channel this into here or something. Or maybe over to here. It's like, I'll bet you there's a whole bunch of ca... Yeah, there is. <laughs> a bunch of cavern creatures right here and a bunch of cavern creatures right here that I actually can't get to right now. That is funny. All right, well. 
Let us follow the battles of Clockworks, who's in a martial trance against these creatures. Once he's already hacked a spearman in the left foot, and the severed part sails off in an arc, the foot goes flying. He's now uh, hacking at a cave swallowman spearman in the lower leg with a steel battle axe, and the severed part sails off in an arc. Uh, the cave swallow spearman strikes at the axe lord, but the shot is blocked. We are waiting on, def on backup, and they are all standing literally right there. I'm not sure why they are waiting so long. Dwarves, we, we need you guys down here, please. Clockworks is still in a martial trance, moving forward. Dodges a blow dart. Uh, two blow darts, even. As well as a cave crocodile, cave toad, and a caveman spearman. And the axe lord hacks at the cave swallow blow gunner in the right foot with a steel battle axe, and another part sails off in an arc, just decapitating left and right bits, bits and pieces of viscera flying and it appears Clockworks has taken a hit. Um, and he actually dropped... Yeah, okay. So the Cave Swallow Spearman strikes at the Axe Lord, but it was blocked with a shield. We do have reinforcements coming in. The Cave Crocodile bites the Axe Lord in uh, the right hand, tearing apart the muscle. So that's why he dropped his axe. An artery has been opened by the attack, and many nerves have been severed. Force twists the right wrist. Must have not had a... Love on. His ability to grasp is somewhat impaired. He is still dodging in between them. He's probably punching them now. He's striking at the Cave Swallow Spearman with his steel sheared shield, shattering the bone. We are waiting on reinforcements. He may see, he probably will. He stopped bleeding. He probably will survive this. Uh, the force twists to the ankle, tearing apart the muscle. Uh, and then multiple more misses them. He's dodging through them. The rest of the... Squads come flying in. Reinforcements are coming, and Clockworks' odds of survival are looking up. I mean, he doesn't take another bad hit. And he's dodging everything. He's, the Axe Lord kicks the giant Ulm in the lower body with a left foot, bruising the muscle and bruising the stomach, and screams, I have mastered fighting, and that was not satisfying. Well, be grateful for something. Have you actually? For, wow, he's a legendary fighter. Holy crap. I really hope that um, that, that wound can heal. His first finger on his hand is, is uh, first finger on his right hand is broken and smashed open. His uh, right hand is cut open. His right hand is bruised. His upper arm is dented. His upper uh, arm is bruised. His left ear is mangled beyond recognition and he's missing some teeth and covered in scars. But hey, come on, dwarf. You got this. Overexerted. Uh-oh. But is now behind the safety of friendly dwarves just got an injury from somewhere cave swallow blow gunner attacked him but he rolled away and and he got stabbed in the upper leg with a tower cap spear but it was deflected by his steel greaves i uh, stabbed him in the right hand oh god again man that's like insult to injury moving through crashing through the remaining cat creatures of the caverns he's gonna go rest and you know what? I don't blame him. It's a fought, fight well fought, dwarf. Gonna have to go back and get your axe soon, though. We are now going to redirect the attacks of our dwarves. I was gonna say up to here, but it appears that Big Bang is already on it. Because this is an area that we can't get to super easily. Oh, wow, we are act act actively fighting one with one right now. Kind of expecting to see more in a second. Got a dwarf just firing bolts. Big Bang, specifically, is firing bolts at this... Um, at, at this... Uh, what, what do you call it? Okay, Swallow Man, Blow Gunner. It's firing bolts. They're just kind of having like a, a sniper duel, if you will. Back and forth. Bolts being fired. He actually made him drop his uh, blowgun and is now um, dodging a whole bunch of shots and just firing bolts at him. Uh, in fact, his middle spine has been torn. Well, I guess that's that blowgun are dead. Well done, Big Bang. Remember how earlier I timed you up for saying something stupid? Gabriel, would you like me to ban you? All right, where are we getting these now? All right, that's just a singular giant rat. 
That must be bait. I mean, it probably is, but I don't care. I, I'm I'm serious. So, dumb question. Are you, are you pausing and unpausing? Is there an option of mod to turn advance by turn by turn? Uh, I it should be bound to period by default, but hit period. Anyway. Let's go over to here. There's already a dwarf over here, so. I'll, oh, there's one. Up here, too. I'm kind of waiting on Gabriel to respond, but if they don't want to respond, then I'll just bam. Because they don't want to be around here, clearly, if they... Uh, I'm just saying things like that. Well, then I have a question. Why are you saying things like that? What, 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 what is the benefit that you are hoping to get out of saying shit like that? If you're being sarcastic, then be sarcastic. If you're not being sarcastic, then don't say stupid shit. It's a pretty simple novel concept, I think. exactly yeah well rest in peace to this siege operator actually not doing a terrible job fighting Bring hasn't died game. yet i mean okay not gonna live too much longer but it's not everybody in oh i see not everybody's in the burrow duh genius moment by me you're new to twitch oh okay well how about this Renew your brain, the, the lease on your brain for 600 seconds and think about the conversations that you're trying to start and realize that if you're being serious, fucking fuck off. And if you're being a jokester, you're not funny. Contemplate what you've said. We have this group of giant rat mounted dudes and we've got orange here. Trying to run in, we've got Marcus the Axe Dwarf, many a competent Axe Dwarf, as well as backup coming from behind. At least they're competent. We've got dwarves that have acquired more ammunition moving forward. Currently following Moses. You'd be surprised. I, I spend too much time on the internet. Got Saigon dodging around, firing bolts. But they, they do not really need to. Literally, the only thing we need is a way to reuse bolts better and more efficiently, and that's the only thing they need to add to Mark's doors. This uh, Mark Dwarf here is just firing bolts and kiting backwards. They bloody well should. This is one hell of a fight of attrition, let me tell you. Gonna end up walling everything up pretty soon. Whew. That was... Um, Fight the fight. Everybody's coming out with kills from this. Entanglement of humility, Nib. I mean, like, it's not even that what he's saying is particularly bad, Saw 47. What it actually is, is I just don't want to have that conversation. And if somebody starts blurting out things like they should add NFTs to Dwarf Fortress. I ask if they're being serious. <laughs> and if they don't, if they give me absolutely zero indication that it was a joke, then I will just time you out. And if you do it a second time, yeah, I don't, I don't need you in my chat. Like it's, I, I don't have the brains. I don't have the extra brain cells to spare on your stupidity. Move the dwarves up. 
do have our Lasher now, who is a skilled Lasher, which is always nice to see. Doing quite well, just ripping enemies to shreds. Although he's now hungry and stunned. Oh, boy. Where's the backup? Dwarves, where's the backup? We need the backup. Oh, here comes somebody. Burr the Axworth is slowly uh, moving towards my Lasher, who probably, okay, not, is no longer having a hard time because now he's in a Martial Trance. Martial Trance basically just neutralizes exhaustion because Dwarves' like, biggest threat to their lives in a, in a fight like this is exhaustion. Because if they get exhausted, they can't dodge, and if they can't dodge, they just die regardless. And we'll be powered through that. Wondering if all the dudes from down here are moving towards me because my frame rate is tanking right now. And on the hammer dwarf was found dead. I actually lost a dwarf in the water. Oh boy. Another wall of them. Oh boy. Where's this? Okay. Um, let's redirect my soldiers down into the middle. Nickers, what kind of dwarf would you like? Or you're giving a dwarf to Neurokeys. Gotcha. Uh, who, what kind of dwarf am I giving to Neurokeys? My dwarves continue fighting. That seems bad. Man. Okay. I'm seeing lots of these blow darts flying out. Any soldier? All right. Um, I won't give you the one who might be about to die. I'll give you the... First one who I see who isn't tired. Saw47, thank you very much for the Prime subscription check. Can I get a random beard for so the brand new Prime sub? Nero Keys is now an Axe Dwarf. Nero Keys is running towards the battle and uh, never fails to seek out the most stressful or even dangerous situations after seeing a goblin's dead body in 514. Can be very single-minded and is not particularly interested in what others think of her. Uh, she, it, she takes offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful, and she is quick to form negative views about things, doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges, and doesn't ha does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity. Is conflicted by this as she values artwork in its creation. Oh, are you going to the wrong spot? You are, in fact, going to the wrong spot. Uh, she do, she uh, does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity, and she's conflicted by this as she values artwork in his creation. She has a tendency to go it alone, though, considering the advice of others, and needs alcohol to get through the working day, and does not mind being outdoors at least for a time. She does not often feel lustful. She dreams of creating a masterwork someday, and personally believes that the acquisition and use of power over others is the ideal goal in life, and worthy of the highest respect. Uh, would have the world operate in complete harmony without the least bit of strife or bit disorder. Finds moderation and self-control to be very important, and does not see the point of working hard. She has some friends, including Walnut and Unib. Uh, she's a member of the Doctrine of Ashes, and a member of the Metalsmiths and Weaponsmiths guilds, respectively. She's a... Uh, Member of the Manners of Loving and Axe Dwarf Squad. And right now I've got, uh, I'm about to lose another dwarf. Zan is fending off the cavern creature line, holding them back, and unfortunately fell to the creatures. It's quite the onslaught of them, gotta say. My dwarves are pretty scattered. Because unfortunately I told them to run all the way up to here. Because I kind of assumed that there would be stuff up there. And there is a giant rat up there, but... Oop. Saw a dwarf running by. Got Cog, the militia captain. Who is the captain of the Manners of Loving. Is holding off the first row. Chasing after a giant rat, who's also being chased by Clockworks, who's still around after losing a hand. Holy shit! Did you go to the? Did you go back to the hospital, get treated, and then come back? Duty did. This guy was in the hospital two days ago. Received a pigtail dressing, like literally got to the hospital, got evaluated, got it cleaned, got stitches, got a dressing. And then got up, got his axe, and went back to fight. What a champ. 
Hot damn. What a goddamn champ. What an absolute badass. I like this dwarf a lot. Clockworks is chasing the uh, mounted cave swallow man towards uh, its inevitable demise as blood is spewing out of the great giant rat that it was once riding on. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about that cent this central like siege area, though. does look like we have um, uh, one of my militia captains as well as... Um, I did lose my lasher, that's unfortunate. As well as Orange, who's extremely stressed. They are holding them off. Uh, Cog got overexerted and actually dropped both their rum and their um, and their spear. The bleeding, haggard Orange is fighting in a martial trance with no weapon, in fact, is unarmed. Um, and is in fact, is literally wrestling um, and breaking the elbows of these poor bird people. I'll bet you that's pr relatively easy to do. Tanker can ca cause me. Thank you very much for that brand new Prime subscription. Remember, those Prime subscriptions do go a long way. And uh, it means a lot when people throw those at me. So thank you very much. You don't have to throw them at me, but you choose to. Zahn has fallen. And that actually means that I've lost a captain. Meaning I'm going to actually move Clockworks to the... Actually, I don't, I don't really want Clockworks to lose a weapon. Now that I think about it. Um, let me see. Do I have any... I don't really want to throw a dwarf in here who's currently fighting because they might try and change their gear out. I'll just throw one of my Mark's dwarves in. I just lost another dwarf, Zan. And Orange. Try and station my squads all over here. A lot of dwarves are running off to go refill their drinks. You gotta hold the door. Uh, Cog here is fighting alongside of Alath. As they move around from place to place, patrolling. Firing bolts, although you're going to go collect equipment. Meaning that dwarf probably has likely run out of stuff. We have some of our better soldiers coming back. Um, we have uh, the Entanglement of Humility, who we were following earlier, who has a lot of kills now. Uh, we also have Nero Keys, who's coming back. Nero Keys is sitting at uh, a solid 6 and 2. That Nish, as well as Unib, the Axe Lord, coming back. Matt Cat over on YouTube. Thanks for becoming a YouTube member, by the way. Since you've done that, feel free to add block without feeling bad about it. Assuming you feel bad about it. I do have an injured tourist who's a militia captain. I'm going to add this dwarf to a burrow. And then I'm going to tell the squads to move up. We're going to clear out these caverns. Never mind, I don't need to send you out. It appears that you can stand, Jurist, even though you are seriously injured. You're my militia captain of which squad? Okay, granite. Dots of granite. I'm gonna move clockworks to the commander of this squad. This dwarf, you can you can head home, Jurist Love Page. Go home. You're seriously injured. You literally can't stand. Go home. Dwarves are chasing a giant rat. Oh, this is sketchy. The lava everywhere is super sketchy. Got Neuro Keys running through the lava, fighting a giant rat to death. Yeah, and we're not going to be able to move through this. Which, fortunately for us, likely means that it's safe. Oh, there you go. Well, if you have YouTube Premium, that's even better. Appreciate you, dude. Let's move them all back. I think where else can I check? We've cleared this side. I think the area that I need to work on right now is up here. Send the military back up to here.
And I think we'll let these two squads head out. Uh, Patreon, for me, actually takes only 2% because I have the OG... Actually, maybe it's 1%. But anyway, I, I have the OG, like, old-school, original Patreon benefits package, which is the one that they had when they launched the platform, uh, which caused much of a controversy when they changed it. And I uh, gave creators, I think, it, pretty sure they take 15% if you make a Patreon now. At the end of the day, uh, if you if you decide to like give me money, just choose the platform that's the most convenient for you. That's all that really matters to me. Twitch and YouTube though are pretty much the same though because I get 70% on both Twitch and YouTube. I say pick the platform that you use the most. It's the way I would advise it if you use patreon a lot like if you are a member of a lot of different patron patreon users i guess i don't know what the pa patron uh, uh, creators i don't know uh but if if you um watch a lot of people use patreon use patreon if you are on twitch primarily use twitch if you're on youtube primarily use youtube like that's the way i would advise it uh let's do Only tankers are right. All right, cheers. Thanks, man. Uh, let's do rock coffins. Since we've cleared out those nightmare burbs a little bit. Let's use Gavro. I'm actually kind of curious about if we've managed to get all of those blocks out of here just yet. <laughs> nope. Well, I suppose we're going to be at this for a while. A long while. A real long while. Actually, is this area even in the bro? Yeah, it is. Okay. Right. Well, the good news is I've fought them off from the looks of things. Ah, right, jeez. How many ghosts do I have? Slurbam? The rest all seem to be over here. Maybe I should get another lava spray spot over there. I stream on both. I mean, there's nothing stopping me from streaming on YouTube because Twitch changed their, changed their rules back in October for Twitch partners. I think it's safer to say I will always stream on Twitch, but unless the rules change, I don't see why I would stop streaming on both. Because YouTube could change the rules, Twitch could change the rules, it could that could go either way. So but currently there's no reason why I would stop streaming on one. What'd you miss? Uh we fended off the caverns. Pretty convincingly, I would say. So I'm actually going to turn off well, mm, okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to expand the burrow for a second here. I'm going to add a new burrow. And this burrow is going to go all the way up to the top. All the way down to the bottom. And this burrow is just going to be called everything. This burrow is going to be called Fort. So in this burrow, when everybody's in this burrow, it's everything in Fort. When everybody's in the other one, it's everything. And the everything burrow is not going to include this corner. When I go to the everything burrow, I'm going to edit it. I'm going to grab all of this. Basically and remove it. Basically, let's just do this whole corner, this whole half. So I'm just going to do this the easy way, move everybody from here, add everybody to this.
and allow them up this way. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to hack down a bunch of trees. And what I think I'm going to do, actually, is I'm just going to wall off this entire side. But yeah, uh, in, in, in a world where I'm allowed to just stream on all platforms, I, I, there's no reason for me to not stream on YouTube. Okay, so I need to get a slab going. Actually, no, that's not what I need to do. I need to engrave a slab. Lore, bam. Yep, nah. that's what I need to do. Get rid of this. Oh yeah, trees are trees. Elves don't discriminate. Although that does confuse a lot of people. Why is that weird? They're called trees. <laughs> Elves say we don't want you going after our trees. To me, it makes perfect sense. I, I don't know. I know it, it's like some it's something that people get like oddly confused about and buy, and I I will never fully get it. I guess because to me they're they're just trees because they're called trees. So why would we call them anything else? If they weren't trees, we wouldn't call them trees. We'd call them like something else because they're mushrooms. You know, th this is where I always... Th I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day right now because I have this conversation every three to five days. <laughs> okay, so trees use mushrooms to communicate, and that's why you end up with living stumps. This is like real-world stuff, not video game stuff. Trees use mushrooms to communicate. So, in my headcanon... This is my headcanon. Um, the reason the elves get mad when you chop down the mushrooms is because you're cutting off their tree's ability to communicate. You have platypi? I had a giant platypus once. I almost died laughing. Unfortunately, it was represented by a Jap giant capital P because we're, this was the old version of the game. It was still very funny, though. There was giant P's all over my map, and everybody was like, chat, streamer peed on his map. I was like, come on, you guys. Goddamn infants. Um... <laughs> So these are gem-encrusted clear glass bookcases. Also, we're in an ad break now, so I will pause. It's okay. Elves get frustrated when they got to explain this to the... You know, you're, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> what about petrified wood? That wood's long dead. Petrified wood is actually a non-issue. Petrified wood is, like, stone. It's like fossilized wood. I actually really like the way petrified wood looks. Like, unironically, I have considered by... Like, this game has come way too uncomfortably close to making me into a... Uh, th this game is way too close to making me into a crystals person. Like, a crystals guy. And, uh... The number of times I've almost bought myself a 
the, the number of times I've almost bought petrified wood because it looks really cool is concerning. Hundreds of pounds of it in Arizona. Do they sell it or is it just like something that they collect? I wonder how the mayor's doing. Horrible. Checks out. At least you're still able to have your meetings. To collect? Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So they're, 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 they're crystals people. They're like my aunt. My aunt is a crystals person and she very much collects that sort of stuff. I'm going to remove your other jobs, Antronarch, because I need you after you put that drink away. Go hack some trees down for me. I also need to, I still need to figure out how to get rid of all of this lava here. Bit of a problem. Let's just. Let's dig this. Yeah, I don't know. There's a couple of crystal stores around here, and every time I look at it, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. It's probably not going to happen because it's like a lot of money for some, just, you know, something I put on a shelf, but. You love the trees sometimes explode? I, I, I see BTs are hysterical. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> they're not particularly helpful, but they're funny. I gotta say, I'm very proud of our dwarves after that last fight. We didn't lose many dwarves, and it went way better than I thought it would. They fix my chakras. I don't think anything can fix my chakras. For what it's worth. <laughs> I think that's impossible, actually. Okay, so is this... Yeah, this stuff is, in fact, in the burrow. Um... Uh, no, they don't explode into fire. Although, I, I could probably figure out why your fort caught on fire, <laughs> for whatever it's worth. Dumb random question. Did you by chance, um... All right, all right, wait, hold on. Did the surface catch on fire or did it catch on fire underground? Because there's never no reason for it to catch on fire. There's always a reason. It just might not be immediately obvious, but... Like the one time I set a fort on fire by catching an artifact that got thrown into a volcano in a previous fort... And uh, obviously it was considered to be on fire the last time it was on the map. So when it appeared on the map again after a while, it, um, well, caught on fire. All right, actually what I'm going to do is dig through this and dig around to this side. Lightning strikes don't happen in Dwarf Fortress, fortunately. Because what I could actually do is just not worry about these. Build up here. Actually, you know what? Instead of building up, let's just use flooring here. So that'll look a little better. And then I can build floors all the way up. 
Does having multiple beds in a bedroom do anything? Uh, it lets the dwarf who owns that bedroom choose which bed they sleep in when they go to sleep. That's it. Unless it's a dormitory, in which case then it's a dormitory and not a bedroom. Humans, there, there is no smoking in Dwarf Fortress. Like I was going to say humans don't smoke, and I'm like, wait, that's just straight up not right. But um, there is no smoking in Dwarf Fortress whatsoever, so I mean, that, that would be mighty impressive if somebody invented a technology just so that they could set your shit on fire. So let's go right here, connect to the top of this. Actually, you know what? I need to just go across the top of this as well and just actually seal this side off. Hmm. What are we putting in this stockpile? Are we just doing this still? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think, I'm actually curious as to what they're hauling. Okay, so they are all walking in and out of the fort. I thought that's what people learned from um, Metal Gear Solid. Deep sea fish. <laughs> also, am I going crazy, or did like the, 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 the didn't that studio like recently completely just like unexist itself? And I have a leather worker who's been possessed, apparently. Oh, there you are. So I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to remove like 90% of the jobs from this fort. I'm going to click and drag on this and just forbid everything in this one spot. Because suddenly, nobody can do any of these wooden metal, these smithing jobs, and these two minecarts are blocked, meaning boom. Suddenly, nothing can be done here, which means I now have way more free dwarves running around. And because we're just trying to get rid of bodies largely, it's going to speed this process up a lot. And by that, I mean a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. Artists get fired. Weird how that works. The people all went crazy, almost in a disc. I mean, you, every time I look into the... Because I, I, I don't know if it's fair to cause call a business erupting, like, like, or self-destructing, I guess, drama. But whenever I do look into the drama of that thing, it's always just like, wow, that, that is genuinely insane. Anyways. Like, it is something. Like it's it is it, it's I I don't like calling things drama, especially when it's a actually serious situation, and I would describe that as a pretty serious situation. It's gonna all be a bunch of crazy rich people. Um, well, I mean, it's a bunch of crazy rich people in charge. Uh, so Buddy just tantrumed and killed Esm. Also, Beef is accusing Buddy of breaking a building. I think he actually... Don't ask me how this dwarf did this. I think this dwarf toppled my farm field. So... 
you know. I don't know how you topple a farming field, but... They also killed Ezum. Well done. No, I know that they're toppleable, but how... How do you topple... Like, I'm talking about, like, in real life for a second here. So, imagine I'm not talking about the video game Dwarf Fortress. How in the goddamn planet of existence that we live on do you topple a farm field? I realize that's an absurd sentence to say out loud, but I just did. I guess, like, a shovel and consistency? I... I Actually, hold on. I need to unforbid all of these for a second. Because I, I need to place all of these coffins. You tip the cow in the field. Man, if only I knew it was that easy. Let's also just get these two and forbid you and forbid you. And I also have a memorial that I need to place. Farmer's Almanac didn't predict that guy coming. <laughs> Man, read it. I, I, there, I, a couple of times I've fallen down several rabbit holes. A, a rabbit holes? Rabbit holes. Halls, holes, same thing. Um, involving Farmer's Almanac, and it's always the most insane shit. Let's let these soldiers out of here. combination of constructing buildings and just getting bodies out of here. One thing they used to uh, in wartime to destroy rail railroads, it looks like a giant hook and it's called a schwaffenflug. <laughs> that, uh, that is one of the most German words I've seen <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> wow. And that is indeed one of the most German things I've seen written in recent memory. Thank you for that. <laughs> I feel like this is a little factoid that that YouTube channel that just talks about funny German words would cover. The Germans used it while retreating. Oh, yeah, true, I guess. I mean, blowing up train routes is like, or and destroying roads is a very common retreat tactic, so it makes sense does in fact make a lot of sense actually all right so i've got this dwarf running around making an artifact for me smash two words together hey as if we don't do that in english on the smithy like i think every major language does that to a degree just about every language does that This is such a mess. Such a goddamn mess. Such an absolute fucking mess, man. Something was found dead or memorialized. Memorialized, sweet. Let's go here. I 
some more tombs. And that's not a hell of a lot of tombs. I've had way more. <laughs> it's not a small number, but I've had significantly larger numbers of tombs. I'm also just trying to get rid of this crap over here. I mean, Walnut, we were busy a little bit. Um, <laughs> we, we did some cleaning, and uh, we won. Don't panic. We did loot. We, there was some casualties, but we did win. So... The lava is, or was, supposed to be there. Not so much anymore. I'm requesting it leave now. Blood and lava. Yes. And water. And stone and rock. A lot of sand, too. Sand is much important. Don't forget the sand. I'm gonna try and clean this area out a little bit. Uh, Odom the leather worker has created Shugen Vesh, a donkey leather buckler, and claims it as a personal treasure. All right, hold on. Let me finish queuing some stuff up, and then I'll come take a look there, dwarf. Um, where is that? It's down here. This is a Donk Donk Leather Buck Buck. It is, uh, all craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is uh, encrusted with square brilliant cut almond dines and oval quartzite cabochons. Encircled with bands of cushion gabbro cabochons and tower cap. This object is adorned with hanging rings of quartzite and menaces with spikes of Donk Donk Leather. Uh, on the item is an image of ev the everlasting seasons, uh, the steel left gauntlet in Forgotten Beast Bone Zores. <laughs> It's all fun and games until I accidentally make a running joke. All right. Um, well, put this buckler right here. It's also the only buckler in the fortress, apparently. Buckler donkey donk. Yes. <laughs> the honky donk buckler donkey donk. Wait a second. <clears throat> What's the pit at the top of the coffin? Oh, it's literally just like a, a, a way for me to distribute coffins that looks kind of neat. It's just the hallway. That's all it is. Winter Z. <sighs> Tune in. This is... <laughs> Naturally, rub <laughs> around. This is why people watch my streams. Can you tell that I've been streaming for nine, nine, nine and a half hours and my brain is slightly starting to fall out of my out of my ear? By the way, yes, that is our mayor, and yes, he's imprisoned in his own office. <laughs> he's committed to the job, okay? He also asked for way too many vacation hours. So we had to, like, appropriately respond to that time off request. Just gonna see if I can dump all of this rotten shit right here. Get it out of here. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this corner of the cavern aside from just like seal it off and leave it here, maybe. Apparently, you can, and I learned this only yesterday. <laughs> Darius. Apparently, you can build all the way right up to the edge of a cavern. I had no idea. I just assumed that they were the same as the, like, the surface and that you couldn't do that. But uh, apparently that's not true. So, you know.
here's the thing, you know? I do still frequently, uh oh. Learn shit about this game, that seems bad. That seems bad. Dwarves, Soxul, Maffle. Well, okay, so far the miners are doing all right. Punching and hacking away with their picks. Uh, the miner strikes the cave swallow blow gunner in the upper left arm with his iron pick and the severed part sails off in an arc. Holy fuck wagons. Okay, um, dwarves, you guys better run. Okay, well, that's our first casualty. We've lost Maffal. Got Avu's up here, as well as um, Oram is fighting. Is, is anybody here named? Because I'll follow them. Not that I'm seeing Spark, mostly just miners. I am sending the soldiers up. Just seeing dwarves still constructing stuff. Okay, so what I should do actually is I should go up to here. I'm just gonna manually requeue up all this stuff because I think clicking and dragging and queuing it back up is gonna be way faster. And I'm realizing there's some stuff in here that isn't actually the stuff that's up there, but I'm just gonna click this button for a while. How you doing, chat? I'm clicking a button. I don't know where those stairs are supposed to be, so I will leave those. It's gonna take a minute. Like, kind of a, not even joking. My finger's starting to hurt. <laughs> this is the most Dwarf Fortress thing I've had. To, oh, jeez. I clicked the wrong button. I was going to say, this is the most Dwarf Fortress thing I've had to do all day. <laughs> it's just, well, I guess I get to get rid of 250 construction jobs. Maybe more. Probably more, actually. The thing is, literally, all I need to do is click and drag in a few places to rebuild them, so... But otherwise, literally every single dwarf in my entire fort is going to run directly head first, face first into that um, cavern creature siege that's just starting to walk into the fort right now um, or onto the map right now. So, you know, I'd rather they don't do that. Okay, hold on. I have to um, take this seriously. <clears throat> I haven't had to do this since I had to do the how many times can you click in 30 seconds on addictinggames.com. And I'm out of practice. All right, we're done. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> turn around, dwarves, for the... L if you value your lives, please turn around, dwarves. Oh, this is good. This is bad. We got surgeons running in and getting shredded. We got miners get bleeding out on the ground. We've got our boyer bleeding out on the ground. Metalsmiths, brewers, various leather workers. Most of the dwarves, thankfully, are turning around. Uh, I see one of our militia captains heading forward. Cybrek here, very brave dwarf. Moving through the miasma. Turns around and decides to walk away. I mean, I would too, honestly. I'm also going to go up to here and um, erase all this. <whistles> Traffic designations won't do shit. I've already turned on a burrow and deleted all the jobs, so like, there's nothing else I can really do. Tra if, if you think traffic designations would do something, uh, you... You just need to remember that traffic designations doesn't stop them from pathing through an area. It just makes them tr attempt to path around that. But if they don't have the option, they'll still path through it. Oh, there's a thing I still need to get rid of. I knew this would happen. I just didn't... Uh, I was hoping it wouldn't happen so soon. Okay, the next thing I want to do is this. Does that make you turn around? Yes, it does. Never mind. You're deciding to fight. Well, I respect the bravery, dwarf.
What was what sound bite? All right, well, soldiers are arriving. Unib is here. Unib survived the last one and did a lot of work. Did get that hand injury, I think. Oh, nope, never mind. That's the other dwarf who got the hand injury. Regardless, the, the Axe Lords are, are, have arrived. And you know the game thinks it's serious because it's playing the song of us losing. There is a, sold, there is a miner in the middle of this. He's heavily bleeding and enraged at all enemies. It's probably some kind of trolling of players. The developer did, deliberately did not add the cancel all and resume all buttons. Are you talking about like add them because they were in the previous game or you think that they're in the previous game, Yvonne? I think you need to remember on the in the YouTube chat over there that that button was never in the game. Um, it was a DF hack button that was added into older versions of the game and it didn't get ported over because none of the DF hack features did uh, because the game never had that functionality in the vanilla set. So the developer isn't trolling the players. You are projecting your frustrations onto the game by insulting developers of a video game that I'm currently playing. So that's all that's happening here. And that's all that you're doing. So cool on you. Nice to know you. All right. Let's let the dwarves work their way through this. Fortunately, we are able to take them out. Not too much of an issue. I could just flood lava up here, but I kind of... Hmm. Maybe I just flood this with lava. No, you're just stuck. Okay, that's fine. Let's get all the dwarves back inside. And I think I'm just going to flood that area with lava. Yeah, you're just walking slowly. Uh, they will, in fact, do it again. Yes. Likely. I mean, I, I've killed espionage, repeat offenders of espionage before. We'll just use this to clean out a bunch. Actually broke one teddy bear. I beg your fucking pardon, child? What do you want about you then? I see you in my chat or like in the YouTube comments relatively commonly, but like, what do you want about? And also, an update hasn't broken DF hack in like almost a year. And also even the experimental branches are updating concurrently. So if you're calling me a teddy bear and saying that you broke me, I think what you need to realize is that I don't have time for your sass, if that's what you think it is. And if you think you're funny, you're not. I'm pointing out where you're being factually incorrect and insulting the people who make this video game. Who are people that I respect, believe it or not. And if you don't, that's okay. So if you're here to be a doofus in my U in the YouTube chat, like you generally are in my YouTube comments, well then keep doing what you're doing. I love you with like a, a round of beers, chat room. You see, in, in this in this part of the internet, we work on a basis of mutual respect. If you're not capable of respecting me or the people who make the things that I like, why are you even here?
That's why it turns out that way. You clearly don't if you're upset with DF hack getting broken because I cannot remember the last time DF hack was broken by an update. So you're stating false information and intentionally insulting people. <laughs> I was about to say that dwarf picked an odd place to sleep, but now they're heading home to sleep. That's good. What are you doing? Save the lumber from the fire. Nah, it's fine. It's fine. There's more where that came from. No real need, honestly. Would I rather run across a country with no shoes or bike across a country with flat tires? Either of them would kill me. Uh, but probably run across the country with no shoes. Uh, no, because uh, burning trees is not chopping down trees. And you don't get wood from it. So there's no benefit to the player anyway. But if it's like, a, can I just burn down trees out of spite? I, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I guess I'm trying to figure out, Yvan, in YouTube chat. Are you intentionally just trying to insult me? Or are you not great at speaking English? That is my question to you. But yeah, in a, in a hypothetical question, I would, uh, why not both? Well, I mean, let's see what their response is. Uh, in, in the hypothetical question world, I would probably run across a co the country with flat tires. Also, what country? You say the country. What country? We're talking Canada? That's pretty big. That's a long distance. Are we talking Ireland? Are we talking, I don't know, Liechtenstein? Like, what are, what countries? Because <laughs> I would do either of those in Liechtenstein. Depends on how much you're paying me, though. <laughs> Vatican? Yeah, the Vatican. Like, I, yeah, again, I would, I would ride across the Vatican multiple times with flat tires. All right, well. Lever's been pulled, so that should stop flowing now. Knew it. Uh oh. Why are you here? Also, why are you here and injured? What in the world? Because you got removed from the military because you got too injured in the last fight. Are they not able to get there? How did you get there? Caving in trees does not give logs. Uh, because you, you seem to be trying to find ways around things, which I, I get. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Um, there is no way to get around uh, the elven like tree quotas currently. There was one for a bit, which got uh, removed from the game recently, which is you used to be able to use ballistas to shoot down trees, and they wouldn't know. But that got removed relatively recently. Right, well, I've got an axe dwarf here now. He somehow, for some reason, doesn't have an axe, but at least they're here. Like I said, you're cutting down their internet down here. Kind of defeats the point of them if, if you can get around it, in my opinion. 
Whew, that was a lot of dwarven loss. We're gonna have so many <laughs> bodies that we're gonna have to deal with. It's gonna be tough. If you never played adventure mode, but uh, example, if you have some type of animal that you could that could be a mountain your old fort, could you as an adventure be able to go there and buy the animal? You could just go there and take it. You wouldn't need to buy it. Just go on it, get on it, and leave. Especially if you're part of the same faction. Unless you're a member of a faction that's at war with your old faction. Yeah, you, you could literally just go there. Oopsies. I keep losing the dwarves because it's such a large area. They're scaling. Dude's right there. Firing bolts at us. Or darts, rather, not quite bolts. I'm actually amazed that I can make it all the way down here. I didn't real I kind of figured this whole zone would be inaccessible to us, but for a sea of lava, it, it now is accessible to us. Unib the Axe Lord. I like it when just like body parts fall down from the sky because they're like up in the air, like on this giant rat. And then the giant rat falls and goes splat. Always going to be satisfying. It's going to be rough on the frames for a moment. Holy shit. Look at them all. All right, well. Met our match. We got Unib. Got Eral. Moses. Godin. Followed by, well, that dwarf's gone to go get more ammunition. Also, uh, Stinthad, the Hammer Dwarf up front, who is bleeding and overexerted, and exhausted even, but in a martial trance, so that's still somehow holding his own, and there he goes. Accurate, yes. With the Wilhelm. This might actually overwhelm us. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we lost that Axe Lord Unib. Hmm. So many friends. So many friends indeed. Walnut, thank you very much for the second month. Welcome back. This is absurd, actually. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. This dwarf is my champion currently. Let's see how long you last fighting through these things. Now overexerted, and there you go. <sighs> Arush is in a martial trance. Losing my champions. You know what? I think I'm gonna set them to train. Get the dwarves backing up, and we're just gonna start dumping lava over here. Because I'm losing too many dwarves right now. Back up. Back up, back up, back up. We are going to lock this off. I'm not sure what you're seeing. It looks like they're um, 
Cavern creatures, basically. So they are cave swallow people mounted on giant bats and giant rats. Uh-oh, we got one more dwarf. Nope. Zoxul. Wanted vengeance, I suppose. Yeah, basically beastmen. But in this case, they are bird people. Looks like an, a job for an army of giant cats. You know, you're not wrong. We just need a bunch of giant war jaguars, actually. Birdmen with territorial disputes. Tur totally. I mean, we are arguably invading their caves, but... I just have to wait for this to end. Uh, if they take a hard fall off of it, certainly. Is it a guaranteed thing? No. I mean, they're not tied to their mountain anyway. They are two 100% separate entities. But, like, certainly they can get crushed by their mount or the mount could roll on them or um, they could get thrown off. They could take fall damage. Any of that sort of stuff can happen, absolutely. All right. And Big Bang is also... Deciding to take one for the team and didn't get to escape. Rest in peace, Big Bang. But also, fortunately for us, we have a lot of fire. And they can't stop it, no matter what they do. I should have just done this instead of sending them in. I've lost way too many soldiers. I didn't even get attacked by the goblins. Uh, Big Bang, uh, you just died. That's... Man, I want to not give that to you because, like, I feel like you should give your dwarf a chance to, you know, breathe a little bit. Actually give them time to mourn. But if you insist, you did get the redemption. What would you like? I also like to let other people get a chance every now and again, but... Yeah, this is called extermination right here. The vile force of darkness has arrived. Man, that's just insult to injury. <laughs> but hey, I was going to say they just kind of came and left, but no, they did. Okay. The hell? But one did leave. Save the game? No. I'm not going to do that. The game just saved. I'm not going to save a second time. Saw the opportunity for comedic timing? Sure. What kind of dwarf would you like? Yeah, I also lost Clockworks, which is a damn shame. Vile Force of dozens, not even. Send gobs and have them meet. Secret person, if you were playing, you can do exactly that. I'm good. I don't need to dig a random tunnel to the surface. There isn't even that many of them, so we're okay. Although they are going to kill my dog. Bit rude. <laughs> there goes one of them. Terrified while in conflict. Well, all right. Need to get my new squad's training, because they're all very green. Huh! <laughs> Clockworks Axe Lord has been missing for a week. God damn it. It begins. Is Walnut alive? Walnut is in fact alive. I don't even need to check. I can tell you because I know that Walnut is in fact alive. Baby. He'll take a non-military dwarf. How about a carpenter? 
Big Bang A2. We're going to be hearing that sound for a while. Uh, Big Bang A2 is constantly ablaze with feelings of lust, does not find most jokes humorous, and do easily falls into love and develops positive feelings. He doesn't mind wearing something special now and then, often feels discouraged, and doesn't try to get things done perfectly. Uh, he can sometimes act without deliberation, and he doesn't handle stress well. He does not, uh, he does not, he tends to not be swayed by emotional appeals, and he does not, and he is trusting, and he occasionally thinks, occasionally overindulges. I can't read this evening. Uh, he chews his cheek when he's bored. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't really care about anything anymore. Uh, he dreams of creating a great work of art and personally believes that those who sacrifice for others should be deeply respected. Values honesty and sees perseverance in the face of adversity while headed in foolish and does not respect the law and values and disregards tradition. Does not value tradition. Uh, he is hauling a cave swallow corpse and doesn't feel anything after seeing many things die. Uh, is good friends with Walnut who's currently in the tavern serving beer. I'm waiting for all this lava to go away so that we can go up here and get all this stuff back. And by that, I mean get back to work up here. Wow. Some of the dwarves' corpses didn't even burn. That's impressive. God, I've lost an absurd number of dwarves in the last 20 minutes. Bomrek, congratulations, you have a new job. Throw dwarves in who would not suck at this job. Specifically ones that I recognize from reading from earlier. I'm just going to get them all training. As much as possible, ideally. Before Ian, congratulations, you are now in the military. Also check our gear. And stop the party. No, oh, someone's gotta keep ser serving the booze. Even for those in mourning. Mm -mm. All right, well, something I should just start doing. Unforbid these two. And just go Cybrek. IST. Clockworks. Big bang. And then I'll just type them in as they pop up. <laughs> Actually found that dwarf dead de and dehydrated. That's interesting. The ghost show up in adventure mode. Yes? Question mark? As far as I know, they do. I would um, fact check that on the wiki. The elf holy rock. It's um, an elf who also is the holy religious figure of a dwarven religion. That's interesting. I wonder how often that happens.
All right. Equipment. You're haggard. I think I should remove a silver falcon from the military. Just all together. Should go retire, dwarf. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that are pretty close to that equivalent. Secret person when it comes to adventure mode. Like getting attacked by a zombie of your own adventurer kind of deal. <laughs> Talk about a nemesis system. Or, you know, finding your own corpse and then raising the ghost, the, the a zombie of your own adventurer. <laughs> You know, those those sorts of things. All right, I'm going to uh, pull out all the stops from this. Kids, I'm gonna put you guys on burial, I'm sorry. Man, we just... Okay, so we were like at what? 160-something dwarves before that? God damn. Are we really fighting with goddamn camels again? <laughs> if that was, And if all of that wasn't enough, we're getting attacked by camels. <laughs> if all of that wasn't enough, now we're getting assaulted by camels. That's kind of funny. Bring out your dead. I don't have many more to bring out. They're all out. It was like 40 or so. I mean, it was it was enough that we, lo we lost at least 10%. Because that's, I think, what triggers that song. I think we were at 168. Something like that, yeah. Definitely something like that. Just realized I got the wrong burrow on. No, I, no, actually, no, I don't have the wrong. I have the right. I had the right burrow on. Now I have the wrong burrow on. Okay, so what can I do here? Wizard Ike, thank you much for the raid. Hope your stream was good. Well, it's got to get a shout-out for Wizard Ike, please. If possible. Oh, uh, they might be. They weren't here too long ago. Ebene R, I think. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but... Uh-oh. It begins again. Or continues, maybe? That's pretty far away, fortunately. Why can't I click on you? Not even sure what it's going after. Fortunately, I was going to say, fortunately, I should have some dwarves here train. Nope. I don't. Uh, how many bars do I have currently? Iron bar, let's just... Iron bolts. Let's 
Just make 50 iron bolts. It's like, just make a bunch of them. Oh boy. Yep, they're moving in and attacking us, I think. I might have to um, get the big guns. Uh-oh, I got a wrestler fighting with them. A, n a mostly naked wrestler at that. Not sure why. There's a mostly naked wrestler right here, but there is. Is this still the Four with Dragons? No. No, it has not been in uh, over a week. Well, I mean, I, I could actually go get dragons. I might, I probably should, but. No, currently it's just the, a fort with way too many bird people, beast men that keep attacking me. Although in order to go get dragons, I would need better squads for a bit. It would be a way to remove the birds. I mean, I, I, I read a combat log earlier of um, a dwarf breaking the bird's wing. So, yeah. <laughs> it is, in fact. they're getting this done at like a decent enough clip all right dwarves do me a huge favor and don't fall into the water please this is a lot of recruits too actually not that many recruits How long do I usually play the same fort? Um, anywhere from, I don't know, fucking, it varies wildly. Uh, sometimes dozens of hours, sometimes hundreds of hours. I've done thousands of hours. Um, I think because I do have a big old block of my dudes, I think we can fight this. We're gonna try it. If I lose even more dwarves, we may be in trouble again. I'm in an ad break, so I will wait for a minute 30. I think this current one I've spent about 50 hours now. Um, the one that really takes the cake for that, Darius, is ice is not lava safe. Ice boulders will melt if they're close to lava. If you construct a wallet of ice, it's lava safe. Dwarven engineer. Lamau. Hmm. Yeah, like this dwarf is a novice. Like you've got no kills, you've got no kills. That's Gertha. Gertha has some kills. You're just some random stone cutter. Competent, adept, efficient, competent. I mean, maybe we have a chance. I don't know. Proficient, skilled, adequate. Okay, maybe we have a chance. Fortunately, the bird people are actually making my life easier by being mounted on creatures. There goes another dwarf. There goes another dwarf. Yeah, I think we might be in trouble. All right. Um,
on dwarves. Neurokeys is fighting through. Neurokeys is one of my few proficient dwarves. He survived the last fight, so hang in there, Neurokeys. Please hang in there. Same with you, Gertha. Please hang in there. Okay, well, they're, they're, they are breaking up. The, the line has broken. For the cavern creatures. Oh, God, somebody just fell into the water. Who is that? Imush, get out of the water. Imush. Imush. Gertha? I think I need to teach these dwarves how to swim. Oh, may, may, maybe you won't drown on that side. You on the other side here, though, you're in trouble. Uh, you're also stunned now. There isn't too many more, it's just these last few that are falling. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and uh, tourist falls in there, but at the very least, I think they can climb out of that hole. Oh my god. So many more! Moving forwards. It never ends. It's just all out goddamn bloodbath nonstop forever until we get these walls blocked. areas blocked off. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to this burrow right here. Right here. Not the everything one, just the fort one right here. And I am going to wall this area off right here. I'm also going to dig this area out right here. Now, let's just go up this. Can they get around here? Probably. I had to bet. Yes, they absolutely can. I'm going to put a wall here. And a wall here. All right. Let's see if we can get this done. I also need to go up here. Put a block right there. Well, this is pretty rough. Migrants have arrived. Excellent. Just what I need. More meat shields. Hey, Blind, you saw your video about putting liquids into minecarts and you wanted to do that in the Magma Sea and then bring, a, bring it up to the fort. The problem is, how do I get the power from the rail launchers down there? Any ideas? Don't want to make a pump tower. Vertical axles. Vertical axles would be how you would do that. Elfie din din time. Alrighty, Elfie. You have a good din din. I need to clean this fort up really bad, Jet. Like, really, really bad. Like, really, 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 really bad. <laughs> like, extraordinarily bad. I think what I'm going to do is this. Roll through all of the construction stuff. And just forbid everything. Except for, uh, let's keep forging those iron bolts. I do need those. Most of them. I will stop doing one of them. And keep making those windows, I suppose. 
Keep making the meals, keep farming. Stop making all these blocks. We'll keep making the coffins. Okay. All of a sudden, there's way less work happening. Like, way less work. The other thing I would actually like to do is iron table. Or, no, not, eh. Yeah, sure. Iron throne. 10 and 10. I need those for my library that I'm working on. Well, it's either, yay, new meat shields, or yay, new volunteers. <laughs> it's always one of the two, at least for me. Let's just get this bottom layer done at the very least. Also, the lava is still spilling in, so there's that too. This lava is going to push all the way up to this wall right here. But the reason I'm digging down into here is so that I can get these bodies out of here. The reason I'm doing that. On the bright side. When traders show up the next time, I'm going to have a lot of blow darts and blow guns to sell them. Um, I'm going to go right here and place a block right there. Go here, place a block right here, and turn off both of the burrows. Now I'm just going to get rid of this one. It's too confusing to have these two overlapping like this. Turn you off. Now that a dwarven child was found dead in it. Oh God, really? <laughs> this thing just killed a child. It's a giant cave toad. Rotast feels horrified after seeing their, this child die and the dwarves just start beating the crap out of the cave toad. I wonder how it got in here, or, if, or where it came from, rather. I've got uh, military dwarves firing bolts already, chasing the creature out onto the limbs of the tree and cutting it up. Hopefully none of the dwarves fall in. Oh, we got more assailants. Sending them forward. It continues. Not out of it yet, apparently. I'm not entirely sure where that camera is right now. <laughs> ah. Up here. Okay, naturally. Well, oh my god. There's another flood of them. Brrr. There's also three dwarves on top of this very pointy tree. Just very funny looking. All right, well, let's turn this back on. Turn around, dwarves. Get back, back up if you can. Dwarves moving up, doing their damnedest to cut through everything. 
It's just been a constant war of attrition. Truly constant. Okay, there isn't actually that many back here. Unless there's more I can't see. Which is absolutely possible. But, like, let's just charge forward. Get him, you brave bastards. Fortunately, they're not armored and their weapons suck. So, as long as my dwarves don't die of exhaustion, which is the most common thing that kills them in situations like this, we generally have a pretty good chance to win. Where did that dwarf even go? This dwarf just vanished. There was a dwarf here a second ago. I have no idea where he went. Let's try and back the dwarves up. Okay, um, let's let's just move the burrow up. I'll just do it this way. This is much easier for me to keep track of. New ghost to bees. <coughs> that. Shout out to the dwarf that's at the very top of this climbing. Uh, so what I think. There's another one over here, oh boy. Okay, fine. I will run them up to this side. If they couldn't fly, this would be a thousand times easier for you guys to watch. <laughs> but because they can fly, it is ridiculously difficult for you guys to watch. I'm so sorry. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here. And I will all uh okay, you know what? Let's let's go right down here. And make this up to there. Let's go right here. Go right there. Um, actually. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll do both of these sides. as many of these unsuspended as I can. I will keep my military as close by as possible. Attis and Mabzith. We will win this fight. I'm pretty convinced we will win this fight. Certainly not going to be easy, but we will do our damnedest. The reason I'm digging these tree, these um, things up here is digging these up will allow us to um, build walls all the way to the ceiling of this. So I'm hoping that these two corner areas will just become non-issues, basically, is what I'm hoping for. Fort Happiness? I mean, it, it was actually worse before, but <laughs> yeah, it is pretty bad. <laughs> I agree with that. It is pretty freaking bad. But uh, we, we're doing what we gotta do, and we will do our damnedest to recover it. I think this chat likes watching me struggle when I play this game anyway, so yeah, getting it. It's maybe not in the format you're used to. It's pretty bad. Pretty bad, pretty dire. What might end up happening is we'll just keep this side filled with lava. Because, I mean, most of them are right here. And as long as I can just 
fill this area in and get this side all sealed off. At least that's one I no longer need to worry about, you know? We are certainly getting there. I mean, this area right here doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just getting rid of jobs I don't need. This area still needs to be blocked off. But, um, let's just add all of this all the way up. Everybody's in the burrow. Or if, do not end up on the wrong side of this, please. That is a lot of miasma. <laughs> what are you, literally crawling over mountains of bodies is what we're having to do right now. And the meanwhile, the mayor is pissed that like... Well, actually, I wonder if the mayor's move is, mood is improving because of... How many times he's getting yelled at. <laughs> He's like, the mayor's just going through PTSD because he murdered two people because his office wasn't good enough. Literally, like, the, the mayor's just like, my life is horrible and you have ruined it. And meanwhile, the rest of the fort is like, dude, you think you got it wrong? We can't even get bodies buried. <laughs> this is very funny. And you actually think about it. Like, this this whole fortress is just, like, hor horrifically struggling. And then the mayor's just like, Put my office. <laughs> There's something weirdly funny about that. There we go. First layer's done. Now it's just a matter of time. And also somehow, none of my artifacts have been stolen during this. I've got a person with... Huh. I had somebody from a cold case just show up. Who I can now arrest. That's fun. Proper leadership problems. Right? Oh no, it's like a very good allegory for like corporate work culture. Like all of, all of the dwarves are just like trying their best to not die. Meanwhile, the guy in charge is just complaining his office isn't nice enough. Like, guys, have I told you about how bad my office is? <laughs> it's oddly hysterical. Gotta block off this side, too. Also up here. Actually, you know what? Let's just leave the trees here. That one's at the, the edge anyway. We can help us block. What do you mean I don't get to see myself a 15 million dollar bonus? Exactly. What do you mean I'm not working hard enough? What do you mean I don't get all of the exclusive stock options paid out when I get fired? Anyway, I have no idea what we could possibly be referencing. Well, I do have to say, this fort has been exciting. How you doing out there, chat? I'm sorry, I haven't been reading your like comments in like the last hour for what should be pretty obvious reasons, but I think we might actually be getting things under control to a degree.
I think that this right here is just going to just get a bridge there and I will just close it rather than building individual walls because that's going to take too long. Uh, Nurakis wants you to post beers chat room. Some people need bottles thrown at them. This is true. I second this. Or, you know, maybe just like... Maybe, maybe they just need to step in dog poop. And not realize it until after they get home and walk on the carpet with their shoes on because they're the kind of person that doesn't take their shoes off when they get home. Here's hoping we come out of the other end of this stronger. I'm assuming this area is accessible. Yes, it is. It's literally looking for areas where the creatures could come in. I'm sorry, what? I say, why are you not why are you no felling tree? Well, it's because you're sleeping, clearly. Devilish potato, I'm also gonna get you on to primarily just felling trees because I need you to fell trees currently. Oi. And the reward for completing this for these dwarves is they will get to open up the library properly. It is getting there. I mean, look at the damn thing. Somewhere in the fortress is uh, my gem cutters and setters that are still like studding my furniture with uh, with gems. So at least that's good. Hmm. One of your dwarves just got revenge, uh, striking down the werebeast which had attacked 40 years earlier in Legends. Oh, that's wonderful. One of my favorite things is when you have, like, a giant show up and they're just like, we're, like, the giant is here to kill you or whatever. But then you realize that the reason that they want to kill you so badly is because you killed their child 30 years prior. <laughs> in the same fortress. While playing. I had that happen. I felt really bad. Uh, dragons are cage trappable even if they're made of wood. I mean, the cage traps, not the dragons, but. But, uh, yeah, catch that dragon in a cage trap. It's like, okay, does anybody here watch the YouTube channel, the Wondrous YouTube channel, The Girl with the Dogs? Because if you do, it's like when she puts the cat in the happy hoodie, and then the cat just gives up. Breathes fire, catches themselves on fire. Dragons are, um, what's the word? Fire safe or invulnerable to fire? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. They don't get affected by fire.
The equivalent of armored squirrels killed your son. I must get revenge. I mean... <laughs> Okay, so that's getting done, which is good. Constructing building. Don't need to dump a boulder. Well, on the bright side, we are getting stuff put away at the very least. Like, things could be worse right now. We, we have fended them off for the most part. One and a half years. Here's to many more. Hell yeah, Deep Space. Thank you very much for sticking around for su such a long period of time now. I mean, like, you found the stream not too, too long before Premium came out and... and it's been, we've been hanging out ever since. So thank you much, man. Thank you for supporting the channel. And thanks for like, you know, watching the streams. So thank you. Appreciate you, dude. Well, at least somebody's placing something in tombs. God bless. Are the humans outside? I mean, if, if stuff's accessible, it's gonna it's gonna turn into balls of fire, dude. Dragons are fun. I I, I like it when dragons show up in my forts. Curious who's going in the tomb, actually. A wooden dragon sounds like a bad joke. Somebody named Nils left lower arm. So I think currently we have a weird truce where the cave bird folks can kind of just have that one corner of the cave. They can just have it. Like, if, if they want it that bad, you know what? I think we could just let them have it. Like, I, I don't think it's going to kill us <laughs> if they have that corner of the cave. I'm going to turn this off now. Let the dwarves path a little more. Are a little too evil for dragons to exist? In most world gen settings, dragons just don't exist past, like, world gen because they go extinct pretty quick. They just die sometimes to, like, some of the strangest, saddest things. <laughs> my captain of the guard just beat up my mayor again. I don't even know what my mayor did. I, I guess... Various counts of disorderly conduct, probably. Telenartho, thank you much for the raid. I hope your stream was good, whatever you were up to on this fine afternoon. We uh, are fighting a war of attrition against flying beast people. Actually, did Nero Keys survive? Holy shit, you did. Oh my god. How many kills did you get? You got 28 kills out of that. Four of them being notable. Most of them crocodile. All of them crocodiles. All of your notable kills are crocodiles. <laughs> My god. Uh, Ranger Wick Rick would like a dwarf. What kind of dwarf would you like to be, Ranger Rick? Last bits of this fixed. That's done all the way up to the top. Let's get this one up. Uh -oh. Okay, so there's a singular giant bat. Here's hoping it's singular.
Yeah, it is just singular giant bat. And this dwarf is just ignoring it. Uh, dude, can you... Kill it? Maybe? There you go. Yeah, hunting elephants are hysterical. It's really funny seeing, like, a hunting elephant hunting like an armadillo. <laughs> Which, I speak with experience. I've seen exactly that. It is very funny. Any bearded. Okay. Um... Find happy bearded. How about Dishmab the wood burner? Yeah, any war trainable animal is hunting trainable. Uh, he is greatly pleased by his own looks and accomplishments, and he likes to brawl. He is brave in the face of imminent danger and trusting, often cheerful, finds helping others emotionally rewarding, find in, has little interest in joking around, and is rarely moved by art and natural beauty. He occasionally overindulges and can handle stress, and tends to ask, us, ask others for help with difficult decisions, and points his finger and shakes it when he's angry. He dreams of creating a great work of art and personally views family, values family greatly, thinks that it is, that the quest for knowledge is a delusional fantasy and thinks that there is something deeply wrong with people that persevere through adversity and sees working hard as a foolish waste of time and sees war as a useful means of an end and dreams of creating a great work of art, likes lead, squirrel, red panda bone, and the color plum, eight-sided prisms, maces, dogs for their loyalty, and the words of the stranger of pricing and the sight of the twinkling cave and impossible prefers to consume longfin mako shark and rye beer and hates flies. Kind of want to put you in the military, dude. Are you fighting with something right now? Are are we Oh, we we are we are killing this goblin. I'm not entirely sure what this goblin did, but apparently we are killing this goblin. Um <laughs> Okay. Must have committed a crime. I thought he was in prison at one point. Anyways. <laughs> oh, well. About that. I do want to interrogate that commander, though. so good. Kulu did a great job on that one. Yeah, I agree. Thief, possibly. Or just tantrumed. I do see a tantrum happening. That goblin's been around for a while, but I haven't seen them do anything necessarily negative. Alright, Cappy, go beat somebody up, please. By that, I mean interrogate him. Sometimes you think they... Oh, trust me. They know. They know exactly why. At least he got to watch a performance while running through the tavern. <laughs> got to walk through a tavern and like, oh, hey, sign up, I saw a performance. Okay, hold on, I will check in on you in a minute. I just want to double check that all this is getting done. Yeah, that side's done, that side's done. Let's go here. You know, just to make sure that they don't end up using materials I don't want them using. Probably don't need to go all the way to the top, but I'm being safe. I'm sorry. It's quite literally, is turning into like completely fighting the caverns <laughs> into oblivion. I wasn't really expecting this fort to go this way, but here we are. Um. Uh. 
What do I have to do? Um, because I think I've got things mostly sealed up. There's a few more spots I need to do like this. Because I've got things mostly sealed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sort of beginning of the risky side of things, which is unforbid all of the bodies. I'm also going to go into my military here, and then I'm going to go back to following the captain of the guard so I don't miss that interrogation. Oh, it's extremely easy to catch a dragon, yeah. You thought they flew? Nope. Dragons do not fly. Dragons are flightless. Holy crap. <laughs> These are all new crimes down here. Okay, so... Okay, so let's see. Um, they did some stuff in a place called the, the Crypts of Day. Uh, they plotted to... In okay, so they, they didn't try to infiltrate my last port, but they're, they've are they been infiltrating us since 512. I thought I've seen them around before. Uh, the subject corrupted an, unified, an un unidentified creature. Oh, really? Huh. So they've been trying to steal items from... Uh oh, fuck me. God damn it. I don't know when the last save was. Woof. Um, okay. Thanks, Max and Fett. <laughs> now you're just mocking me. What happened? I crashed the game. <laughs> There's a couple crashes in that menu. I wonder if that commander is the guy that crashes the game. Because if that's the case, did, actually, has a patch come out? Since I last launched the game? I don't think it has. Okay, so that's the guy with the weird skin. Well, Big Bang's alive again. So this was before I started building all of those walls successfully. Couldn't resist. No, I get it. I get it. Fuck me, we lost so much time. All right, today, right now is one of those days where my own stupid determination is going to be the thing that keeps me playing this longer. Forgot how much I hate that overlay. <laughs> Go away. Um, okay, so. Out of here, name dwarves to die unless I have to. Okay, so let's do this. Get everybody into the fort right now. Uh, so I get to do all of that construction again, basically, is what that means. Is this before or after I died? Lost dwarves in there. This is before. Silver Falcon has just gone insane. Okay, well, that's good. Okay. 
Okay, so what I need to do... I need a wall that goes... All the way up here, basically. Oh, no, not all the way up there. Wall that goes all the way up here. But before I can do any of that... Let's tell the dwarves to go stand there. Also, let's make sure that everybody's in here. You gotta head to bed? Yeah, it's getting late. It's been, what, 10 hours and 45 minutes worth of stream? So, yeah, it's, it's getting late. Well, I do know that the next time I see that commander... Oh, Big Bang's dead again. So I have to rename Big Bang. Um, can't remember which dwarf I gave to Big Bang, so I will just simply give this dwarf to Big Bang. And Ranger Rick... I gave a wood burner. Ishmab looks right. Did Nero Keys get a dwarf? Yes, okay. Nero Keys is currently in hospital. Looks like you missed quite a lot. Well, it would have been a lot more, but <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Oh, hey, it's this vile force of darkness that arrives. Forgot about this. You know what? I, I'm actually just going to do this. Can we please pull this lever? Right now. Maxdorf was found dead? What? Oh, we just found it dead. Okay. Free Freak, where are you? Way too busy of a hallway. It's the, the something is wrong with that dude's skin crash again. Ah, ah, okay. Whew. Right in the nick of time. I just don't want to fight these guys. Like, there's only like a dozen of them, but I just, I don't care. They're just thieves. Let them run around on the surface or whatever. Okay. Um, that's still draining. Soldier's going right here. Move them up. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is going to become Part of the burrow, all the way up to there. This right here is going to get a wall all the way up to here. This right here is going to get dug all the way up to here. These right here are gonna get hacked down and we're going to get a wall right here all the way. Oops, I'm also going to hack down this. Assuming that's all in the burrow, that is not. Let's put that in the burrow. Then we're going to go get, get a wall right there, too. Maybe even actually right here. So I can just start building right now. I'm going to build a wall across here. I'm going to build a wall down here. And also right here. I'm going to build a floor. Here. I go see if lava is still being poured out here. It is not. That is okay. I'll unforbid all this. Add this and this to the burrow. All the way up. With over here. This. 
think that's everything that I need to do right now. I also uh, need this area right here, which I can actually just build a wall on right, right away, which is super easy. Build this in front of it. Was this before or after I forbid every single task? This was after, so, or before. So I will go through here and do all this. Go through all here and do all this. And keep brewing drinks, that's fine. And um, let's also add... Several walls all the way along here. And put all of this into the burrow as well. And mine through this and this. Just don't need to do this upper one, just this lower one. All right. Who fucking cares if it's quick save, Curious Maniac? That doesn't help anybody in the slightest. Does it really matter if it's, uh, you know, opening up DF hack and hitting quick save or if it's typing in some stupid fucking hotkey? Telling me that right now does one thing, which is it irritates me quite greatly. So thank you for informing me of a hotkey that I don't care about and didn't want to know about. Much more focused day today than yesterday. This is true. Uh, it would surprise me if they're not. You know, one of these, at, at some point, the, the new community for this game, Clutch, is going to learn that Dwarf Fortress has had, like, incredible amounts of save compatibility over the years, and this isn't going to change it. I'm just not looking at the YouTube chat much. I'm looking at the Twitch chat pretty consistently, though, too, for Sneezy. All right. Well, let's see. What's accessible currently? Do you just make weapons for people if they don't have them? Uh, I'm just going to do 20 axes. And some steel bolts. I mean, Dwarf Fortress had 100% save compatibility from, like, 2013, I would say. Something like that. Um... You stuck? What are you trying to do? Okay, well, let's just dig through this. From about 2013, um, all the way... Okay, it's got to just be this thing at fault. That's fine. Uh, from Anyway, from about 2013, 2014-ish, until Premium launched. So, just remember that that is the precedent that they've set in the past, and... Karn has stated a couple times that he would be really, really surprised if there was any compatibility issues because they know exactly what's changed in premium uh, versus the classic version that they are working on and so thus can compensate for any major changes. So it would be weird if saves were not compatible. And that is a precedent that Tarn wants to go back to, basically. The only thing that, the only issue that you'll have uh, as far as saves go is while saves were always compatible with those versions, the thing that wasn't always consistently compatible was, um, the thing that wasn't always as consistently compatible, um, was new features in worlds. So as an example, right now I am playing on the unstable branch, right? If you 
install, like update to the unstable branch and play this version, you will get some things in world generation that you won't get if you're just playing on the stable branch. Um, because you need to generate a new world for them to work, basically. So if they change any... If, if they change uh, details of how world gen works, you might not necessarily get those features. However, as a whole, save compatibility for Dwarf Fortress is like kind of legendary. So just kind of keep that in mind that you might like... If they add, let's just say, the ability to... I don't know. Is that not in the burrow? Oh, this wall isn't. <laughs> uh, let's let's just say they they change how go how elves spawn. Maybe elves get a new special mount. Then you'll never see those mounts. Or maybe if you have a um, I don't know something they've added recently. They changed uh, how goblins um, work so they can attack you with more underground creatures in the experimental branch right now. So if you when the next update comes out, whenever it go, this patch goes into the main branch, which currently has hard crashes in it, which means I wouldn't, like, it's not, it's not going to be out tomorrow, I'll tell you that. Um, whenever the stuff moves into the main branch again, um, whenever this patch moves into the main branch, if you're still playing on an old world, you're not going to suddenly start getting attacked by cooler monsters run by the goblins, right? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> What are the best things about the unstable versions? I mean, this current version that I'm playing on right now, uh, that goblins are back up to full power and uh, vampires work again. By that, I mean vampires actually hide amongst your dwarves and are kind of, like, hard to find. <laughs> They've been super easy to find for way too long, and that's bothered me for a very long time. Those are probably the two immediate ones. Plus also just, like, search functionality in the UI. Like, I can type in wood. I can see all of my woodcutters and wood burners. Stuff like that. None of this is DF hack. This is all vanilla. So when this stuff gets into the main branch, it'll be real nice for, you know, the people who are unhappy with, um, you know, the UI and little improvements are good. Let's get these dwarves unstationed. Let's get them back onto no orders. Uh, I mean, we're a few months, we're about a month and a half out of some pretty major sales, so. The timing is pretty right for that. Uh -oh. But yeah, no, I tend to agree. Uh-oh. Boy, oh boy. Are they, is, is there really just another, oh wow, there's another army coming in. Cool. Hang in there, dwarves. Lost English. I'm gonna say they were stationed close by, so hopefully the soldiers don't have too far to go. Giant bats aren't super strong. Yep, they're all up here. I can't remember, did I have to turn? Oh yeah, also multi-level um, burrows. I'm starting to forget the things that they're adding because it's been long enough that I've been playing on it now. I can't remember what's new anymore because it's been almost a month. I hate this sound. Oh yeah, you can edit um, workshop later, labor icons. Wait, re-add the workshop labor icons? What are you talking about? I didn't remove them. Dwarf is pretending to be John Wick. Dodging backwards. He's caught fire. Thank you. 
Pull the goddamn lover, dwarves. We lost Reg, Aleph, and Cybrick. <laughs> it's just it dribbles out because uh, the other side is like fully powered up. That's just plain funny. Although I guess I could shut down this side. Thing only works when, uh, when there's a lot of lava to come out of it. Well, can these green as hell dwarves fight this? Oh my god. I don't know where you're going, dwarf. Oh, you're stumbling around obliviously. Well, have fun! <laughs> you know what? Let's just lock these doors briefly go here. Tell those dwarves to all get new shields and axes. Considering most of them have never seen an axe before, I'd say that's pretty important. Yeah, they do. Like, hold on. In which in which menu? Y you mean in this menu? I mean, Amethyst is assigned to one gem cutter shop, and it's right there. Is that what you're talking about? On the workshop itself. I, I guess I don't know what, what you're talking about, because, like... I'm I'm confused. Yeah, very confused about what 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 you're what what you're referring to then, Clairvore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I'm not doing anything. I know that you can't hear me because you're in an ad, but. Well, cheers, Clutch. If you can hear me right now. <laughs> All right. Are you through the ad break yet, Clever? Is this the menu that you're talking about? I guess I'm I'm just very confused about what, what menu you're talking about to begin with. Um, mostly that. All right. Are you crazy? Yes, that dwarf just went insane. That's fine. See how much this dwarf can do while it's insane outside. Are you actually fighting or are you just dodging? Literally just dodging. Not fighting back, just dodging. <laughs> what a dwarf. Are you at least tiring them out? Okay. Let's open the doors up and fight them. 
Wish us luck, chat. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm not sure what, what menu you're talking about to begin with, Clairvor. I, I thought I knew, and then I went looking, and I, I don't see any missing icons, so I'm very perplexed. I would need to see a screenshot of the menu that you're referring to. All right. First layer is clear. Moving up to the higher layers. Still have hatch hen chest. It was a dwarf who died before the crash, but... continuing to fight. Fighting upwards is now exhausted, injured, and going back to rest. Or trying to rest. Overexerted. Last few are fighting with the dwarves. Still a ton on the other side of the wall right there. Just hoping you can get out, dwarf. Trying to move the commanders up. Only a handful of dwarves left. Big ol' crowd of them come running up, which is good. That's what we need. The next wave of dwarves are all grouping up, moving forward, fighting back the giant cave toads and the bird people. And now I'm going to do the ballsy thing and tell them to go to the end spot. Come on, dwarves, move through. Firing bolts, as you should, two ball. Steel bolts strikes them. Fortunately, we have pretty good ammunition, so as long as they're hitting stuff, they'll do damage. I just lost Gertha, who's been, or we discovered that Gertha's been found dead. More that than anything. Let's see, so that's, can cancel that. Uh-oh, well, you're on fire. Sorry, I'm, I mush. More like I charcoal. Also chasing Ubal. Military runs up, something catches fire. That seems bad, it's a case wallow person, that's good. That's one of my dwarves. It's a 50-50. Somebody hits a bat so hard that it f and it flies across the map. As well as, you know, spewing blood everywhere. It's another cave swallow blow gunner in the lava. I don't know why you're going up here, but you are. And up, down, and around. We'll just run back up. Okay, so let's get everything unsuspended. How to use DF hack with experimental? Right click on DF hack in Steam and set DF hack to the experimental branch. All right. I do still genuinely believe that a large portion of the UI that DF hack has added is beyond cheating. It's like so beyond unfair in the in favor of the player like especially that little screen they just added that's that would be behind my camera right now it's just like number of living enemies it's like oh well, fuck off <laughs> goddamn cheat engine software it's very useful i like having it installed but man a lot of those overlays are a bit much only says beta testing that's the one you set it to dude set it to the beta branch they're not affiliated with bay 12 right so they use their own wording they call it a beta, Bay 12 calls it experimental. Let's check the status of my doctors. Do you still have doctors? That's good. Hat chest actually survived this time. They didn't the last one. Mark Starf was found dead. Says not known DF version on launch. All right. Well, allow me to assist you. You right click on DF hack, okay? You go to betas and you set it to 512 beta. Or version deep beta deep for DF 50.12 betas. Go to Dwarf Fortress. You go to betas. You set it to the experimental branch. Or just be a big kid and play without DF hack once in a while. Maybe you've set it to the wrong branch. It's possible.
There you go. I said it's the experimental branch. That's what I said multiple times. So. But there you go. Happy to help. All right. So, and sorry, sorry if I seem a little cranky. It's just, it's been a long day. And um, if I was in a really good mood today, and then the game decided to crash. So I'm in a little bit of a miffed mood until I catch up to my previous progress. Which hopefully is somewhat justified. It's not me, it's, uh, you know, the game. Just keep in mind, you'll, you're you going to get some weird crashes if you play on these branches, because um, there are weird crashes in it. <laughs> it's that simple. Crashed again? It crashed like 30 minutes ago. I haven't caught back up to where I was progress-wise yet. So no, it didn't crash again, but I'm trying to get up to where my crash was. I still haven't regained my... Con my um, I still haven't gotten back to where I was. In fact, I've done way worse, too. I've lost way more dwarves this time. So I'm kind of pissed, <laughs> for whatever that's worth. It crashed um, about an hour ago. Uh, about 30 minutes ago now. So, yes. Like I said, there are crashes in this version. And yes, I am pissed. Yes, I, I, I've had several crashes today, I guess, at this point. And I know exactly what's causing it, too, and I know exactly how I caused it. Um, and I think it's also been fixed. <laughs> Which is, like, I guess kind of icing on the cake, in a way. Because um, I sent Putnam the crash log, and she told me to, what it was. But I wasn't entirely certain which thing caused it basically like there's um when a crime has been committed there's a certain criminal in this fortress that will crash the game if i try and look at the criminals that are on the map basically is that's that's like maybe the easiest way i could explain that So I think it was actually just me getting the same crash twice. But, you know, such is the life of playing on the experimental branch, you know? It is to be expected. Yes, that is lava. Accurate assessment. Nero keys. I appreciate the, uh, the enlightenment. I would never have noticed the lava without you, so thank you. Sure. This one's actually useful. <clears throat> yeah, the skin thing. Yeah, it, it was the same crash. I was just not sure because I I'd arrested a bunch of people right around that time. Oh, hey, it's the 22nd, isn't it? No, it's the 21st. Well, close enough. It's YouTube payday. Sympathy of how frustrate of of how the frustrating the crashes. I mean, I don't know. it all works. I'm just happy people are still watching. Honestly, it's been a long stream. It and uh, you know we're kind of in like the dead of night for the Dwarf Fortress community. You can really figure out like what it what is like the dead time zones for Dwarf Fortress just by looking at like average player counts based on time of day. And right now we're like almost at the lowest. In combat. Nope. 
What the heck am I hearing? Oh, you're fighting with a giant cave swallow. Okay, well, it's dead now. <laughs> I'm hearing a phone vibrating, and it's not mine. Okay, so I live in an apartment building, right? I think... Hi, Radu. I think above me... Also, hey, Redbeard, it's good to see you. Um... My neighbor's above me. Their bedroom is, like, right right above where my office is. I think there's a phone on the floor vibrating. That or there's a vibrator on the flo floor vibrating. More likely a phone. Buddy is throwing a tantrum. God damn it, buddy. Why you gotta be like that? What are you fighting with? Apparently there's just a giant cave swallow around here somewhere. Let's see, nope, not that button. This button. God damn it. Can we just kill this bat, please? There we go. <laughs> well, the rest of your colony has nothing to do on the surface. Why don't you just dig your miner out? If they're a miner with a pickaxe, why don't you just let them dig out? Like, why worry about... Watching the tutorial again when you could just dig the miner out. Miner could just dig themselves out even. They don't even need help. It's like a problem that's like self-fixing. Stuff keeps just showing up. Oh, okay, so apparently I have a bunch of dwarves up a tree. Typical dwarf fortress problems. One of them is, is now uh, de de uh, dehydrated because they were so far up a tree, in fact. That's fantastic. I really hope I still get migrants after this. Redbeard, thank you very much for the 17th month. Welcome back. We were like 100 and almost 70 dwarves before all of this stuff started happening. By that, I mean before I got ballsy and decided to try and take the caverns on. You two lower squads, these two. Just go train. And Redbeard, thank you very much for the 17th month. And Ra Mr. Raven, hello. Yeah, it's been a long one. And a long one. But if we can get all this stuff sealed off, we can be in a much better spot. Redbeard, thank you very much for gifting a subscription. That's the first notification of money in an hour and 20 minutes. Aside from, like, you know, your prime sub from a second ago, but thank you. No way you could afford it. I don't know. It's got its benefits. It's got its detractors. It's... I don't know. I, I guess I, I think I just wish I had, like, an extra 40 square feet. Or, like, 8 square meters. Just so that I would have enough space to, you know... Breathe a little bit, I guess. I don't know how a silver falcon is still alive. This dwarf is constantly just like sinking into distress and sadness and depression. Constantly.
Uh, prime sums do, in fact, give money, yes. That's why I set aside from. I get uh, $2.50 for every prime sub. For every tier one subscription, I get about $3.48. Uh, for every uh, tier two, I get about, I get a little bit closer to seven dollars and forty five cents or something. Um, assuming these are American dollars, it varies based on the amount of or the region that the person is in. So if they're in a region that uh, has higher value currency, then I have higher, I get higher value payouts basically. But they don't change. Done. They don't change. the re The regional pricing doesn't kick in for prime subs until, ironically, my birthday, <laughs> which I think is funny <laughs> in like a morbid way. It's like, oh, well, okay. So prime subs are suddenly going to be worth less. I mean, it's it's fine largely because vast majority of my audience is in like U.S. and Canada anyway, so it doesn't actually matter that they're going to be worth slightly less to me. It's not actually going to change my income much from them. But, like, it's more just funny that they're dropping the value of a portion of my income on my birthday. <laughs> That's the funny thing to me. Yeah, no, it's all good. I also, I'm, I'm getting tired. When I get tired, I mumble a little bit. Uh, Moses the Cook is being taken by a fame mood. I do get more from um, non-prime subs, but... Oh, you got a deal to a higher class class apartment that was basically a fancy adult dorm. Oh, hmm. Okay. Yikes. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I, um... During co like, COVID kind of spoiled me a little bit. COVID was actually, like, really helpful for me for a lot of reasons because um, I was, like, financially breaking at the end of 2019 because, you know, it's hard to make a living off of, you know, a view count of, like, 60 which is where I was at at the time. Um, and uh, trying to stream for a living. And then COVID kicked in and I technically lost income because my other main source of income, which was working very part-time for my parents at the time, um, stopped being a source of money for me. So I lost like $400 a month. And so I applied for like a lost income thing that we had here, which... Um, basically equated to about, it was like 30% of my income at the time. And so, uh, for like six months, I got $500 a month off my rent. So I was literally paying, um, <laughs> like a massively, oh, wow. You drowned. I was paying massively less rent for a while there. That is really sad. Clockworks actually drowned. Just get clockworks. Big bang. Those. But as ghosts start showing up, I'm going to have to just deal with those one by one. I, the way I, I, I treat prime subs, and this is the reason I'm not bothered at all by prime subs going down in value. Um, just kind of bouncing off what Redbeard's saying to um, Tanker is prime subs are a free trial. And the reason they're a free trial and not like, like they do pay the streamer, but I consider them a free trial. And the reason I consider them that is because while they do pay the streamer, they are primarily a way for people to try out the service. So the way I've always looked at prime subscriptions is that it's the job of the streamer, if you want to focus on prime subscriptions to make people convert from prime subscriptions to normal subscriptions. Like if it doesn't it, if it doesn't cost you anything on top of what you're already doing, that is optimal for the viewer and you should keep doing that. But the end goal for a prime, somebody subscribing with Prime from the point of view of a streamer is that they should eventually convert to a full subscription. All right, so let's just turn this off. Just let them work. But they are getting like regional pricing purport, uh, purport, 
proportion it to the value of Amazon Prime for the region that they're in. So like a Prime sub from somebody from Turkey is gonna pay out like nine cents or something. But like, honestly, like I said, doesn't matter. Cause like them subscribing normally also would pay out that much because we've had regional pricing on Twitch forever. So it like doesn't even remotely bother me. <laughs> Skeletal carps. Oh, carp. Some things about this video game never get old. I will never forget the zombie neck that scared the crap out of a bunch of children, and that's about it. And then got kicked and died. Literally, one of my dwarves ran past it, kicked it, and it died. It's very funny. Oh boy, that needs to get done. This can go away. That's not super important. Zombie neck. Yeah, it was a human neck. Ran into the... was Came running into the fortress, um, and then a child kicked it. And it, uh, it died. <laughs> One of the funniest zombies I've ever had in Dwarf Fortress, just period. <laughs> So hopefully, once I get all of these walls up, what should happen... We're basically caught up to where I was now. What should happen once I get all of these walls up is that the animal creatures can still show up on the other side of the map, but ideally shouldn't be able to spawn on this side of the map at all. And I should be able to allow the dwarves to freely run all the way up to these walls. Because this whole thing is just going to get sealed off all the way up. And then I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. And that should give us some free reign. And I should be able to open up the library for the dwarves. How would it move? Uh... Wait, what? Oh, like how would it move? I, I always just imagined the neck like an inchworm. Like it would just inchworm slowly towards its prey and maybe like squelch that's about it <laughs> that's like kind of about as far as I, I i imagined it as far as how it would grab things that i'm less i'm sure of honestly <laughs> And how it would actually do damage, or be a threat for that matter, I'm less sure of. Somehow, dwarves, not all dwarves have quarters yet. That's the sad thing about this fort right now. Speaking of, is my mayor still in prison? Okay, so the mayor is no longer in prison. <laughs> I love how there's just, like, the mayor's blood in the mayor's office. There's something about that that's both kind of dark and also very, very funny. Also, coffins are prohibited. I cannot export coffins. I just thought I'd let you know that, chat. The mayor is concerned that we will run out of coffins. <laughs> um, and there's puke everywhere for some reason. Anyway! <laughs> oh, this game is hysterical. Sometimes. That doesn't bode well, mate. <laughs> for whatever it's worth, like... Two hours ago, I had 160 dwarves. We now have 115. We, we've we already run out of coffins. <laughs> this mayor is the best. He's been in prison for like 150 days. And during the period of time he was in, he's probably sitting there like, See, I told you, you shouldn't have thrown me in prison. Because like while he was in prison, we lost more than ha like almost half the population. <laughs> He's probably just, like, sitting there going, like, I told you so! There's fucking beast men in the caves or some shit. Anyway. Us and our insane mayor. Yeah, in fact, he used two of them. Yeah, no, he, he, he like, damned two of our dwarves to those two said coffins. This is very true. I kind of forgot about that, to be honest. I sort of forgot about why he was in prison in the first place. But yes, he did in fact do that. You know what? Screw it. This can be the, the, the mayor's bedroom. Mayor, you get this bedroom. 
I realize I like got I booted you out of your bedroom a while ago. There you go. You can have this bedroom. It even comes with a table and chair. And I'll even give you two chests and two cabinets. You better like it, damn it. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> you ungrateful twat. Uh <laughs> let's just smooth this shit. God damn. That'll be his re-election cat platform. What, that the whole, most of the fortress died while he was in prison and it wouldn't have if he wasn't in prison? No, if, if he wasn't in prison, he would have done it himself, I think is maybe going to be his re-election platform. <laughs> well, here's hoping he gets his injuries dealt with. <sighs> studio apartment for the mayor. Mate, if I got a free studio apartment and unlimited free beer, I would move underground. <laughs> I think I may have just admitted that I would willingly join a cult, but... I'd at least consider it, you know? You volunteer as expedition leader? I mean, yeah, exactly. Generally don't have free beer. Not your cults. <laughs> you just need to find a cooler cult, man. I'm sure there's absolutely been a cult where they give you free unlimited alcohol. That has to have happened. We're in an ad break, and all I'm doing is placing walls, so... Personally, I really hope that they get, get these the issues with this build finished soon. Because I would really, really, really like a new patch. Because in between patches, the Dwarf Fortress audience goes up and the Dwarf Fortress audience goes down. Right around now, we're at a point where it's going down quite a bit. I, I would like it to start going up again. <laughs> and because my, my view counts directly coincide and correlate with the... Um, with the player count of this game. It's like, man, it'd be real nice if we could get a couple patches around tax season, because I, I have to pay my taxes. <laughs> Not that I can't afford them. I'm good, but man, it'd be nice. Yeah, it's true. It's probably harder drugs, actually, in your own keys. Just a lot of praying and no personal property. Oh, and um, blowing the guy in charge, probably. I mean, it's true. <laughs> but it is, in fact, tax season. I'm literally just waiting on a, a, some uh, some receipts from my bank, and then I'm going to go pay my taxes. Cheers, whale man. Whale men scare me, specifically sperm whale men. Even more so a zombie giant whale. But that's that's not a whale man. That's just a zombie giant whale. I would be terrified of an agitated whale. I'll put it that way. Especially if it was a zombie. You can't explain it? I mean, patch comes out, player count go up. Sale happen, player count go up. It's been three months since last big sale, player count go down. Pretty sure I can explain it. The, re the reasoning might might shock you, but I'm pretty sure I can. All right, well, constructing building. Just follow this dwarf. This dwarf just fe the only recent member of this dwarf recent memory that this dwarf has that is giving them happiness is remembering another memory. Uh, I haven't up until this year, but I probably will have to next year. Because um, 2023 was the first year uh, since I quit my fake or my real job to work in this fake job where I made more than minimum wage. <laughs> so, or made more than a uh, below poverty, not even minimum wage. So, uh, I might do that next year. Or, I guess technically on this year's taxes. I need to talk to my tax. I need to talk to my tax advisor, I guess, is the answer to that question. <laughs> Yeah. 
What the heck are we doing? Okay, we can pause that. I don't need you collecting goddamn webs. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to do this. This is going to look kind of morbid. Body parts. Forbid all. Corpses. Forbid all. Please, dwarves, for the love of dwarfs, just build. <laughs> That's all I need. I just, I just need construct building. Oh no. Well, that's probably not helping the moods. Uh, Devilish Potato is angry at me for uh, failing to construct a temple that apparently I agreed to. I'm sure I did, but you know, my mayor's tantruming again, so I got bigger problems. <laughs> No, I, I know I know exactly the joke that you're referencing. Oh, geez, I was making an artifact? I didn't even know. A horse leather buckler. Oh, I feel like I already read that one. <laughs> nope, different buckler, in fact. Um, Moses, uh, the cook, has created a horse leather buckler and offers it to the will to the Crimson Will of Smiths. It's called Era Regreb. Uh, this is a horse leather buckler. All craft starship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with giant rat leather and encircled with bands of horse leather. This object is adorned with hanging rings of gabbro. On the item is an image of an elf and a dwarf. In Almondine, the elf is praising the dwarf. The artwork relates to the acceptance of the offer of peace from the Emerald Irons by the growth of reputations in the late winter of 269. Uh, during Malayathuma, the crazy war. On the item is an image of an icahedral icahedra in Almondine. On the item is an image of a four-sided, long, four-sided prism in Gabarro. Damn! That's some history. Hell of a piece of history, if you ask me. That is from so long ago, yeah. I guess we made peace with them at one point in time, because we're at war with them again. I didn't start it. <laughs> They just attacked me. Must have done it for the memes. I don't think memes exists in this world, but... If it was year 402069, then maybe I'd believe you. Maybe it was on the fourth month on the 20th day. And in that case, I would believe you that they did it for the memes. You've seen those engravings? Well, true. But a dwarf fortress meme wouldn't be the number 69. It would just be a pile of cheese. With no context. Or the one with the badger boar and the elven something or another, you know? All right. Get this buckler over here. A very high value window. Speaking of windows, what does my mayor think of his bedroom? Mayor likes bedroom. There we go. We've succeeded, chat room. Although the mayor did have to go to prison for like <laughs> half a year. And we'll just leave that steel chain in there as, as a reminder to our mayor that if 
if he commits crimes in my fortress again, I will have to put, tie him up again. That, it, that was an epic quest to get the mayor to like his bedroom. Mm -hmm. I would agree with this. Dwarves surrounding the dwarves surrounding... I, I felt like I was having a seizure when I was trying to read that in my head. The dwarves surrounding the dwarves surrounding the elephant. The elephant is in the fetal position. The dwarves are laughing? Poor elephant. Trying to respond to a DM while also doing all this stuff, and I've got limited brain capacity because, you know, 12 hour stream. All right. Got the base of this wall almost done. I'm not actually sure why it keeps getting forbidden. Like, genuinely, I'm not sure. But it's besides the point. We are starting to get ghosts rising, so that's slightly terrifying. That one should be done, I would hope. Come on, dwarves. What are you... Eh? It, like, uh, hmm? I'm very confused <laughs> about why these are canceling. There's no logical reason for any of these to cancel. Come on. Dwarf, it's a very simple job. My mayor is tantruming, I think. Um, okay. How many dwarves do I have? Stinthad? Okay, let's just get Stinthad memorialized. Come on, dwarves. I feel like this is a, fact, a, a flex illustrating the final product not having yet finished it. I mean, yeah, true. Like engraving an image of the finished product. Well, although I have a question. Would you finish the product and then engrave the image though? Because if you're finishing the product and then engraving the image, does anybody have any idea why these could possibly be getting canceled? It's not like there's a creature occupying it. Okay, so there is apparently a creature occupying this site. You know what? I'm not going to ask any questions and instead just do this. <laughs> yeah, kind of like having a PS5 engraved on your PS4. I wonder if there is like more bird people just off map and it's not letting me build there for that reason. There is no invisible items there. Okay. No invisible item. These it says creature, not item. I 
I don't know if I want to use DF hack commands to make more things appear on the map that have killed two thirds of my dwarves. Oh, that's certainly possible. But I'll worry about that later when that happens. Actually, I, I have a solution here. Watch this. You guys are going to think I'm a genius. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to make um, a gushers route, if you will. Hmm. This is going to look real messy. <laughs> That's okay, though. Not the worst thing I've done. Can't spawn if there's lava there. Well, I mean, they can try, but like, you know, good luck. <laughs> exactly, see, you get it, deep sea fishing. Looks like a job for you. I mean, may maybe it's just time to, you know, make a stronger beast, I suppose. Also, good lord, forgotten beast made of steel? Does it have any abilities? Because that's terrifying. I have to head out. We'll see you later, Nero Keys. Thanks for hanging out. Chat room, say goodnight to Nero Keys. So I need to get that dwarf down here memorialized. Tomorrow is going to be a hell of a recovery stream, I think. I have a question, chat. How long do you guys want me to keep this fort going? Because, like I said earlier, I, I don't plan on keeping forts going super duper duper long. It's not that I'm getting bored of this fort yet. I'm just curious about what you guys think of the current state of this fortress. Because this whole, like, cavern fight thing has been entertaining, to say the least. But, um, I don't really have any, like, end goals for this, aside from, like, arrest people, which I'm doing. Uh-oh. Good lord. Where is it? Okay, this is really far away. I'm just gonna kind of hope that... Oh, I see. This dwarf. Are you able to get back into the fort from there? And if so, what's the route you take? Oh, you're on the wrong side. <laughs> okay, um... Hmm. Well, that's an... Oh, shit. I got multiple dwarves on the wrong side. <laughs> well, that's awkward. Um, hmm. I don't want to dig through that. Like, at all. Hmm. How about... Deploy the mayor to the front lines? I don't hate the guy that much yet. So I've got three dwarves over here? How the... Well, not anymore. Wait, are you actually one of my doctors, Ibrek? I don't think so. Well, maybe this problem is sorting itself out, unfortunately.
God, okay. Are they, like, getting over somehow? I, no, because they, they would have run back to the fort if they if they weren't stuck on there. All right, well, let's do this. Let's put a door right here. Holy shit, dwarf. That's impressive. An elf sprung from, from an ambush. Well, that's good. <laughs> On top of that, um, we've also got... Uh, well, that. <laughs> it's not that I'm struggling. I'm not struggling to find interesting goals. That, that wasn't the point of the question. My question was, how are you guys feeling about the fort currently? That was the question. I'm not struggling to find goals. I'm entertained. I'm curious how you guys are feeling about the fort. That's what I was asking. This isn't uh, me struggling to find go goals problem. I'm doing okay. Oh boy. Dwarves are cursing all friends of nature because there's friends of nature that are not friends of dwarves trying to turn me into um, pin cushions. Just double checking that uh, surface. surface is still locked, so I'm just not going to worry about it. They can do whatever the hell they want up there. I... <laughs> Well, they are turning this zombie criminal toad here. Okay, hold on a second. Are you just like being Neo and stopping all of these arrows? Or, oh, I see. You're not fighting with them. You're neutral. I understand. I was <laughs> like, why are you not like dodging those? Oh, because you're not actually f feeling threatened by them. I get it. Oh boy, that's like ominous. All right, let's get these dwarves across. And let's also turn this on. Oh, I see. I'm actually missing one. I beg your fucking what now? Okay, I have no idea how these dwarves are getting back here. <laughs> like, genuinely, I have zero clue. Well, I guess that explains why jobs were getting done so slowly. I was under the impression that most of the dwarves right now were in my fortress. But I guess not. <laughs> how are they... Okay... Are they going up this way? Is that what? Oh, okay, that's that's gotta be what they're doing. Yeah, they gotta be going this way. Right, I walled this off on the other on the other timeline. Fantastic. Um, cool. Well, let's see how many of them can get in here. Ranger Rick's dead, by the way. Happens again. Come on, Dorf, mine through that. It's one. It's two. Three. One way paths exist in DF? No, not really. They sort of used to. Used to be able used to be able to do dwarf only pathways, but All right, let's lock this. Throw this into the burrow. Remove this from the burrow. Oops. But yeah, my question earlier was didn't have anything to do with how I'm feeling about this fort. I feel fine about this fort. My question was purely curious about how you guys are feeling about the fort. The problem is, is Chad is too fucking diplomatic sometimes. <laughs> like, there, there's times where it's just like, I'm trying to get like, feedback on how people are feeling about like 
the, the current content I'm making. And then Chad's just like, well, if you're not feeling it, it's like, that's not the point of the question, nor the spirit of the question, nor the answer I was hoping to get. So none of this is helpful, but you know, it is what it is. Um, Let's get rid of this blow dart. Wall this off. Well, I mean, if that was the honest feedback from the majority of the audience, then unfortunately I would have to say no. Because I would get bored. But that's also not helpful feedback, so... Thanks for being helpful, Devilish. I appreciate you. Okay. Did this stuff get unforbidden again? Or forbidden again? But I picked that with the thingy. Apparently I didn't. That is just straight up one of my dwarf skeletons. That's unpleasant. too much before going into the caverns? Oh, trust me, I've been trying to get through this caverns port, which is why I'm still live right now, actually, is because I'm trying to get through this cavern shit so that I can just go back to, you know, Swari's so been missing for a week as well, cool. So that I can just go back to, you know, building the fort bit. Well, I want to get the library done. That was my goal for tonight, but I keep getting setback after setback. So here's hoping we're done with setbacks for a minute. Although some migrants have arrived. Are those elves still on the surface? Yes, they are. I don't know how Silver Falcon is still alive, by the way. Nope, they cannot enter the fort, and there's also multiple invaders on the surface. Eh, never mind, not fighting that. Goodbye, migrants. I, I will miss you. Got war grizzlies. Could one technically build floor tiles in those hallways and seal the lower levels of the corridors? I have no idea what you're asking me. You mean like up above these? I mean, theoretically, certainly, but if stuff's attacking you through them, you can't. It's not like you have any way of fighting them. I don't know why there's an axe dwarf up there. <laughs> Is that one of mine? I guess it must have been. Well, that's a shame. It's also going to get real annoying. Okay.
Yeah, and I have no military to fight them with. Because my military's been completely obliterated by... These freaking cavern creatures. See if I can do that. We'll see you later, Mouse Peter. I'll be on tomorrow. That sound is starting to irritate me. Before Ian's dead, I have no idea how you died. You must have died in the caverns just now. All right, chat. Before I scream, we're retiring the fort. <laughs> Not retiring the fort, but retiring the fort for the day. I am retiring the stream, I guess, is what I should say. Twitch chat, it's time to say goodnight, YouTube. And we will probably not retire the fort tomorrow. But I do need a good night's sleep. And being promoted to customers? If you have ever given me money in the past... Or been around in a situation where you could possibly contribute to giving me money in the past, like in a gift of sub. Congratulations, you're a customer. YouTube chat, you guys have a good night. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on the flip side, same time. Uh, I am not frustrated. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm angry. This fort has been really annoying. Not because of the fort. The fort itself has been fine. It's just I got to crash at a really bad time in a really frustrating moment. And instead of going through like 45 minutes of something that was really frustrating, I went through 45 minutes of something that was really frustrating and then another hour and a half of the same thing and it went worse. Am I frustrated at the fort? No, fort's fine. The fort is absolutely fine. But, <laughs> you know, it was like fight off cavern creatures for... 45 minutes, get them mostly cleared, get the walls sealed, lose, lost 40 dwarves, but we still had like 130 left, and then game crashes, and then I do the same thing, except I come out the other end with 100 left, so that is like one of the worst times for an ad I've seen all day. Sounds like DF to you? If the game didn't crash, I'd be in a much better mood right now. I'm mostly just cranky because like of the crash, but it is what it is. We got through it. Mayor, this, the whole, honestly, the mayor like thing has been hysterical, and I'm really happy that that has all happened the way it has because it's been very, very amusing to me.